Well, that's a beautiful picture right there. That's just uh, awesome. No heavy clouds in sight. Clear blue skies up to the top. Not too much of a heavy wind, just a gentle passing. And you can see the feather banners standing upright. They were made to do that, but the little flags that are down at the bottom of your screen that some of our patrons are using, just barely moving. Um, well, for now, anyway. And uh, the trees in the back are very much still. If all of this holds true to form, it means that with this kind of weather, we will have another awesome day at the National Stadium. Day two of the GUT Nexa Primary School Athletic Championships. These young folks are having a ball of a time. They had that yesterday and they're looking forward to more today. My name is Jason Skeet. With me is Clyde Rondell John and Bernard Antoine. And uh, together we will take you through the paces of another fantastic day as we anticipate more sporting glory here at the National Stadium. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, Grenada. Good morning, all listeners and viewers of this program. It was a wonderful day of track and field yesterday. We expect that and much more today. Certainly we do. Clyde Rondell, John, you've... Uh, had your fair share of time on the ground and uh, seeing what happened and being a part of uh, here what we had here yesterday. Um, give us a brief synopsis. Well, I must say that I'm eagerly anticipating the competition. Uh, what we saw yesterday, I think it was just a precursor to what will happen today. A number of athletes, uh, to me, stood out, did really well in both the boys' and the girls' divisions. Um, the names uh, like Oliver and um, Leslie, even Young Sears, you know, quite a few of them stood out. And so I, I know that, you know, they will be rearing and ready to go. Yesterday we saw a few, I think we had a record in the under nine relay. Uh, we had another record broken. So it says that the, the kids, they are prepared and they are running well. Uh, Many of them came close to, to, to the, 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 the record times or, or even surpassed the times from the 2023 games. So it says that there has been some improvement in terms of the, the ability of these kids at this level. So, I mean, with all of that said, I think today we should expect the, the tension to be lifted. I know that the parishes, you know, they're, they're really raring to make sure that... Um, they come out and, and really try to dethrone St. Andrews, which will be, in my view, a really tough job based on the point system and everything. It will be really difficult to hold them, but nothing is impossible. Well, we didn't get there yet. You kind of preempted that. I wanted to get that uh, comment from Bernard. Bernard, um, what are your thoughts? Look at the size of the lead that um, St. Andrews has on St. George. It is a sizable lead, uh, really, but... Given the events that we have today, and we, we'll get a pretty good indication early this morning because we have seven finals this morning, and we are into the under nines, under 13, under 11, and under 15 today. And uh, we would not, maybe St. Andrew's strength was in the other age groups that, that were showcased yesterday. So I, I think it's open field. I, I, I think it's anything, anything goes today. We will get a pretty good indication from the morning session. And these seven finals today will tell us just where we are. I'm eagerly anticipating that under 15, 200. All right. Well, that's a, a brief synopsis as to what we might be looking at today. Um, there are some other sporting activities taking place around the region and uh, even here in Grenada. Yesterday we had cricket. Even uh, young ones were involved in some cricketing in, um, sports yesterday. I think it was a match between Mount Rose and Sass in the inter-secondary school cricket. Sass scored 186 all out at Mount Rose, 187 for six. So Mount Rose beating Sass yesterday. So there's... Um, there are some other sporting activities taking place around, but uh, the, the hallmark of the next few hours will, of course, be the primary school athletic championships. 
Um, what have we got this morning? Quick up this morning, we've got a couple of field events that uh, we're going to be looking at. There are some final events. The short put boys under 13, the girls discus through under 15, and the long jump under 9 boys. That's going to be first up on the ground this morning. And then, of course, we've got some sprinter preliminaries to come. The 80-meter dash on the 9, the girls 100-meter and boys 100-meter on the 13. That's to come as well. We've got some prelims for that. Of course, the cricket ball throw on the 11 and the girls long jump on the 13 and the boys high jump on the 15 will also be in play. Those are final events. So a day that will be loaded with finals. And even though we've got some preliminaries, those finals, of course, will be run off later on this afternoon. And so it's another packed day. And um, that's what we can expect for the first part of the day. Now, having said that, you mentioned, Bernard, that uh, you're looking forward to see what can happen in the field events as it relates to the distance in points between St. George and St. Andrew. Um, are you anticipating that there could be some good um, field events performances from St. From St. George? Traditionally, as, as, traditionally, we have had some good high jump from Carrico. I on the under fifteen Carrico boys especially, I think we should see some we should see some movements in there. Um, as it relates to the the long jump on the thirteen, on the thirteen long jump on the thirteen girls, we had in the national the national champs, we had some interesting jump in there. So we should see some movements there again on, under the under thirteen girls. In the long jump. All right, you, you, Jason. You have a you have a you have a second shot at your 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 guy yesterday. Um, says it is. Yes. You should see him today in the in the eighty meters. Well, I'm hoping to see him in the boys on the seven eighty meters. Yes. Um, well, we were looking at the points distance, the, the difference in points there um, between Saint George and Saint Andrew. Now, there's over 100 points, but you made mention about uh, the strength of St. George in the field events. Um, do you have, uh, what are you supporting that with? This is based on the, the field events. There, there are certain field events that will go to St. David. What, you would, what happened yesterday with, with St. Andrew, they pretty much dominated all around. We should see some differences today with the javelin. Uh, the javelin will go towards St. David. And so you, the distribution with the points would not be as lopsided or one-sided as it was yesterday. There should be some significant differences today. Of course, you have the Olivers and so on who would have done very well for St. For Andrew. I, we expect them to do we expect them to do the same today. But the lopsidedness, I don't think we would see this today. I think it would be more even playing field. And if, in fact, you get two or three, all you have to get is two or three events where St. Andrew is shut out, you know. And then it's a whole different story. After all, the distribution of points, especially when you get to the relays, it's a huge difference in terms of the distribution of points. All right. Well, I, I thought you were going in the direction that St. George would have some uh, dominance in the field events to calculate, to, to bring up, to, to collect some points. Um, Clyde, he mentioned a lot about St. David's. That, that's your, St. David is your stomping ground. Um, you know a lot of these athletes because you're a teacher in those parts. What are your thoughts as it relates to where can St. David get some points today? because they need a whole lot of it. They are not anywhere in the top three. Well, uh, again, the field events, we, we have quite a few athletes um, in the field. Uh, the under 13 category, we're still looking um, to see how we can get the right combination, I think. Um, we saw the under 11 in Lessie. We saw the under 9 in um, Gibbs. So we're, we're banking on these persons, the under-15s. Um, you saw um, Bartholomew, she got a bronze in the long jump, a bronze in the 400. So there are a few athletes here and there. Um, the, the thing about it is that the, 
the intensity to which the team works today is what really will, you know, define where they end. Uh, I think yesterday they, they were just getting acclimatized to the whole idea of being here. Those who are, are accustomed to this, um, in terms of Leslie and a few of the others, you, you, would, you, you saw the difference. But I think a few of them, at so, uh, one instance, one of the, 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 the girls, they stopped at um, way before the finish line, thinking that she crossed the line because of that line that went across the track. So it, it says that sh they didn't really fully understand. And so with better understanding, I think they would really come up trumps today. All right. Well, let's take a quick look at the point standings before we head on down to the track because they're going to start in just a little bit. We're just bordering on 10.30 local time. Um, give and take a minute or two. In uh, seventh position, St. Mark on 87 point. Uh, St. John is uh, right in front of them on 99 points. Carrico and Piri Martinique, they've moved up the table. They were down in the bottom for the greater part of the day yesterday. But at the close of the games yesterday and to start the day, they've moved up a little bit. So they're on 103 points ahead of St. John and St. Mark. St. David, that's um, the folks over there in St. David. They're on 183 and a half points. And they're in fourth position. But uh, here's where the separation starts now. St. George is, has moved down to third place on 221 points. And St. Patrick has uh, moved in to second place on 228 points. St. Andrew out in the lead at 376 and a half points. Now, that's... Humongous, uh, 376 to uh, 228. We're talking in excess of uh, just around 150, thereabout. 148, um, the difference between St. Patrick and St. Andrew. St. George and St. Andrew, 155. Again, yeah. it, it sounds as though it's, it's a huge gap. And... After the morning session, I, 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 I suspect we're going to have a much closer competition, not just with the, with the second and third, but one, two, three, and four. Well, again, you're, you're really talking here about St. John, St. Mark, Harikou, St. David, really keeping St. Andrews from anywhere at the top, because remember, 11 points goes towards your first place in the individual events. So it means that they really have to box out St. Andrew and maybe get them down to fifth and sixth position in order to really overtake, which, uh, um, to be fair and honest, thinking about the amount of schools that St. Andrews has to choose their athletes from and the level of competition that you will have among these schools, I, I, I don't really see it happening. All right, a quick uh, pass across your screen would have suggested that... Uh the young ladies are getting ready for one of their field events. We've got a couple of field events. The, the girls' long jump on the 13 that's uh, coming up. And, of course, here they are. It looks like they're over at the javelin, um, the javelin throw area. Normally, around that area, it would be either the javelin or the throwing of the cricket ball. So, um, well, they're not using javelin, so obviously it has to be the throwing of the cricket ball. And uh, that's going to come up in just a little bit. So we've got a packed morning, and we should be starting anytime soon. We're running just a few minutes late, but um, we should be firing off in a few minutes. Here's what we will do. We will... Um, just to use the opportunity to do some commerce because we will need to pay the bills. And uh, it's uh, powered by the Grenada Union of Teachers to unite, represent, and empower members of the teaching profession of the nation. And next, a credit union with you wherever your road leads. We will be back in a few minutes. But when you need someone to help you to your feet. I'll be that beacon to your highest peak Ooh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never leave Come on, take my hands, we got everything we need Cause you can look to me, yes, I can. whenever you're in need yes, you can. Just call on me and I'll be on my way hey, hey, hey. I'll be by your side, by your side. never to divide The light that shines on Wherever you are, 
Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. Kick things up a gear with a Nexa Credit Union Cruise Control Vehicle Loan and begin your journey with your ideal ride. Go wherever and whenever you like with the extra space to carry everything you need. Arrive refreshed and ready for the day in comfort. Hit the road together on family adventures to make unforgettable memories. Feel the wind at your back. Upgrade your lifestyle easily with a cruise control vehicle loan for new or used vehicles. Join Nexa Credit Union now and get your vehicle loan. Terms and conditions apply. Visit us today. Call 440-1354 or our website at www.nexacreditunion.com or email us at loans at nexacreditunion.com and hit the road with Nexa Credit Union. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. We're anticipating a decent crowd today. With today being the final day, day two of two, we are anticipating a decent crowd in today. You find more parents um, coming in on a day like today, the second day, because traditionally, day two has been the day with all the finals activities. Now, there has been a slight change in the format of the games in that the organizers have adopted what might be referred to as part of the intercall model in that instead of the heats uh, or the preliminaries on one day and the finals on the other, what they've done basically is uh, put finals and heats on both days. Um, we spoke about that yesterday for a brief moment, maybe to give the athletes a little bit more time to recuperate. And uh, it could also very well be to encourage more participation crowd participation yeah i think um adopting this model is the way to go you want to get the kids accustomed to uh, this format because this is what they use whenever they go out to represent um maybe at the cut games the age group games and so on so you, the, the earlier you get them into this mode you know it, it makes more sense for them to acclimatize and to really be ready to perform under these types of conditions. Bernard? Uh, absolutely correct. Uh, um, what you notice that with the young people, what you notice with this group of um, athletes here in these private school games, they are well ordered. That says a lot about the coaching. You, you, you look at how they how they stick together. You look at how they form. There's no running about, as, as we say. They, 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 there's an order, and that speaks a lot to the, to the coaching. You're having a look at the, the St. Andrew team, for example. Well, I thought, we, I thought you were going to speak to us on the format. That is why, because you don't, don't jump the gun yet. Stay there, because we're going to deal with that in just a little bit. But we were speaking more about uh, the, the format, the layout of the games, and adopting this model. Um, moving forward, um, the two days, the, yes. the, the two days to me, it, it, it's, it makes a, a lot of sense. The two days makes a lot of sense. It, 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 it speaks to recovery time. It, it, it speaks to understanding and, and, and how you, one can pace themselves. And especially the star athletes, the star, the, the, the star performers, they don't do one event. They do two, three, four, and five events. And if they are not sufficiently rested what you can in fact get is serious injuries you, you can get serious injuries and especially when you have when you have a, a not just the track event when you have an athlete doing both track and field and you're running from one place to the next it really 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 it's too hard and and the uh, and, uh, and one's body, even for the even for the older at least, so to speak. Just imagine what they would do for these for these young people. So the format that we have now, I think it makes a lot of sense. The decision makers, the people who have brought this into in, into being, I think they would have seen the the effect it would have had on the performance at the secondary school level. And th this is a this is a good format. Well, not just at the secondary school level, but um, years gone by, 
when you had the field events on one day. You had a youngster jumping on the nine, long jump. And it was time for the on the, ball, on the nine cricket ball throw. So he had to jump here, leave there, and run up to the throw to take a throw to come back down. So it was so hectic. But now you have the sprint events incorporated, the prelims and so on. So that athlete gets a chance to rest, concentrate on this event when he's finished um, by that time. Because I think this, the, a lot of the structuring of the events took these things into consideration. So it makes lighter work for them. They, ha they don't have to hustle. Um, they, they can take their time, complete the event, and then get on to the other event. Because a lot of the parishes, for example, St. Mark's, only two, two branches. Yes. And if you have star performers that, you know, dominate the St. Mark's branch, then it means that they have to be moving to and fro a lot more than, you know, the, the athlete from St. Andrews or St. George, where there are lots more schools to choose from. All right. Makes sense. Oh, just kind of breaking it down for you. You're not missing any activities on the track just yet. To the right of your screen, you would realize that there's a little gathering over there. That's... Uh, the young men gathering for the boys high jump under 15. All right, um, we're gonna, that's going to happen. Also, uh, we should be having the long jump. The, the long jump is uh, the girls' long jump under 9. All right, that's uh, the boys there preparing for the high jump under 15. No noticeable... Um, faces there but i'm quite sure names will ring a bell sherry ann is going to be heading in that direction in just a little bit she's on the ground and she will be endeavoring to bring us up to speed as soon as we get things started um, what height do they normally start at this is what age group is this? boys under 15. 15 we'll tell you shortly the boys under 15 high jump Under 15 boys, it's 1.30 meters. That's where we start. So they start at 1.30 and then they go in increments of? 5 centimeters. In increments of 5 centimeters. So they will start at 1.3 and then move to 1.35. 1.35. Up, up to a height of 1.50. We do not anticipate they would go further than 1.30. Um, Jason, but one of the things we, um, to me that's quite noticeable, I, I, I started talking about it earlier, is the discipline of these athletes. It is not easy to get young people to sit on a bench, for example, we were looking at just now, and awaiting the turn to participate. That, to me, says a lot for the handlers, for the teachers, for the parents. I, I think it says a lot. And in particular, you, there is a, f a real a difference. If you looked at the, the athletes from St. Andrew, the people that are handling St. Andrew, they know what they're doing. Oh, well. This is not to say that the other schools don't know what they're doing, but to me, St. Andrew stands out in terms of how disciplined that, that group of athletes seems to be. All right, so we're starting with the boys' high jump. They're starting with a height of 1.3 meters. And uh, basically what will happen is that they will go by the process of elimination. Uh, three rounds of jumps. And after three rounds of jumps, the top eight will move ahead. And uh, the remainders will say bye-bye until we do this again in 2025. Basically, that's the story. And um, it will hold pretty much for the majority of the field events. So we're going to take in a little bit of this. It's kind of difficult for us to um, identify them simply because they're not numbered. They should have been, but they're not numbered. And um, in the midst of all of that, however, Let's see if we can just take a look at it, just take a look at it and see basically, even those of you at home, um, what you can identify in terms of their approach, their skill, their talent, their technique, 
Um, some may need work, some may need uh, a little bit more technical work, some might just be enthusiastic and this might not be the event for them particularly. But um, it's difficult to do commentary on it because we, don't, we can't identify them. But let's just, you know, just see how they perform. Let's just give them their five minutes of fame to see how they perform. Let's, 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 let's take this in for just a little bit. Under 15 boys you're looking at on screen. Will it be St. Mark? Will it be St. John? Will it be Kariku and Peter Martini? Will it be St. David? St. George? St. Patrick? St. Andrew? Stadium. Beautiful weather condition for athletics. It is competition, but if you look at the faces of these young men, they are enjoying this. Also, we've got the javelin coming up. Yes, there's a, a javelin throw. Um, it's not on my... Yes, it is actually. The girls javelin under 15. The girls javelin under 15. We've got that coming up. When the name, when the, the sport javelin is mentioned, Grenada is always mentioned now with the sport of javelin no longer are we only famous for the 400 meters we're also famous for the javelin and uh, the girls under 15 javelin not numbered as well but um yes. globally you are correct but we have always distinguished ourselves in javelin at a cursor level for quite a long time and uh, there's something good and that's taking place with traveling right throughout, especially in Carrico and Pete Martin and St. Davis and St. Andrew. Well, I think the, the javelin event has really spread throughout the length and breadth of Grenada. Um, so you're going to see definitely um, quite a few of the athletes uh, being able to get some decent distances in. Um, moving around, seeing, you know, some of the clubs and the, the throwers and so on, you get the feel that um, these youngsters who are interested, they seem to take it a bit serious. So definitely I'm expecting to see. They may not have big throws because the, uh, a lot of it goes into technique and having the right technique takes a while to develop, you know, but definitely you're going to see that quite a few of them have the, the approach. They can understand what they need to do. It's just going now and, and maybe executing as they should. Yes, and remember yesterday we talked about that um, for the javelin throw. What has been adopted is to throw the cricket ball at the, at the younger children, get them used to throwing, get them interested in throwing and so forth. And from, from that, we, we can get a javelin throw, we can get a discus throw, we can get persons who are interested in the, in the shot put and so forth. And you are quite correct. The, 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 the successes of, of the Anderson Peters, and again, I, I must make a comment about this Anderson Peters. What this young man continued to teach is quite significant. He's one of the few international uh, athletes who come back year after year and participate in the national 
championships. That says a lot to me. That says quite a lot. Well, I wouldn't even say come back because you have to remember his coach is Paul Phillip. And Paul Phillip is based in Grenada. So he is basically with his coach um, more times than not um, trying to make sure that they perfect this art. And so um, he's here quite a lot to make sure because that's the combination. It's not just Anderson Phillip, but you have to really, you know, call the name Paul Phillip. You have to big up that name Paul Phillip. Uh, uh, for me, a local, he, ha he didn't go to the States and say, well, forget Paul Phillip, but he stuck with his coach. And you, ca you saw the success that they got. Absolutely. So you, we can see a local br breaded um, javelin thrower. It says that we have the quality. We know what to do. Let's get it done so that more of these youngsters that are throwing here today can become world class. Absolutely. All right. Well, we will uh, attempt to bring you that in just a little bit. We're getting ready for the girls on the 15 javelin. Now, that was the warm-up jump that happened a few minutes ago down at the boys on the 15 high jump so they're getting their talking to now just like the girls are these boys are getting their talking to uh, the rules the do's the don'ts keep your eyes on the clock and uh, pay attention they're getting all of that now and uh, right after that we will start at it any um what have you identified from the warm-up jumps that you've seen from from these young men you Remember, we were speaking about the fact that um, you might see a case where uh, some of them look technically sound that you can work with. Some might just be here um, just for the fun, and it might not be exactly where their potential is. At this stage, what are your thoughts on it? Well, again, looking at the, the warm-up jumps that they had, you notice that they, they, there seemed to have been a struggle getting over the bar for quite a few so that could be a result of two things for me um, maybe they, they were not exposed earlier so this may just be the first time that they're attempting this event and um, it could be that based on their, their age group you know the the coordination would be a little bit off because they are just around the, the puberty stage, the high jump, it's, it takes a lot of coordination. And if you're not um, accustomed to it, maybe at a lower level and moving up with it, it tends to be a difficult event to do. So the, the, to me, that's two possibilities. So um, the under 13s who seem to be younger and exposed maybe a little bit earlier had some decent heights. Uh, I looked at the warm-up so far, and I'm not so impressed with what I'm seeing. The... the High jump is, 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 is one of the, the really technical events. You, you have to get a number of things correct. And maybe right, maybe first, first time I was certainly not much um, practice that's gone into this. But all they need to get is one jump under them and then you will see a difference. One successful jump usually changes everything. All right, well, one successful jump changes everything. The, the two attempts, um, All different, right, well. different techniques. We, we will also have the opportunity to speak with some of the coaches because, Bernard, you were mentioning a lot about the discipline of, of these um, young athletes and uh, keeping them together, um, how they perform, the coaches, the coaching staff, and, and, and that kind of stuff. Well, sherri is on the ball, and uh, she has got the coach of the Karyaku branch with her down in the bottom there, she's on the field. sherri you've you. got yes, coach Jason. with us. Thank you. I have the, the coach from Karakou and Pretty Martinique, Jonathan Flery. I'm Jonathan Karakou and Pretty Martinique, as per usual, putting together a great show on 
in terms of field and track. Um, speak to us about the combination this year. Well, um, the combination, we, it took us, we had to do it very quickly because the time was, was right there. Training the athletes was, wasn't very easy because we didn't have much time, but we work with the students and we get to work with all the different schools in Caracol to come to put this nice group together. I know we do have a, a primary school in Pity Matnik. So how many of the athletes are from Pity Matnik? We have um, two athletes from Pity Matnik. We, we were supposed to have more, but some of the parents are not too comfortable with the trip to Grenada. Karakou and Piti Matnik is known to field children in the field events. Yes, you just have some. You do have some grit on, on the actual tracks, but field events are, over the years has been one of the strong points of Karakou and Piti Matnik. Um, I know they're, they're pretty young, but speak to us about that aspect of the team that came down. Well, field events normally, that is mostly a Karakou thing. We are strong people and they learn very quickly with the skill, as I say, we don't have much time to train. We don't do. We don't have much sporting programs in Karakou. That is why the tracks we are failing a little bit. But if you look at the relays, the relays we we come a little bit dominant because that is a little training that we get to do with all the different schools come together. That that come together like if we we had a little club. So that gives a little feeling like a club in Karakou. That's why we could have performed so good in the team events. Looking ahead to the final day. Mm -hmm. Well, um, very exciting. As when the game started, we were very nervous. We were very the children. We were looking at the performance. They were scared. The environment. First time a lot of them being here, and they were very shaky. So we had to motivate them. You know, some of us we are scattered and we don't have much support in Grenada. So then, no, we had to come together and cheer them on, cheer them on, and tell them we have, we have to do our best, have fun. And we lighten them up and they just free up and we're looking to win more medals today on the track especially. Get some gold, we didn't get no gold yet. So we want to see if we could get some gold today. Thank you very much. That was the coach for Karaku and Pity Matnik. I just say one of the coaches, Jonathan Fleury. I now head back over to our commentary team of Jason, Mr. Bernard and C.R. John. All right, well, uh, he's uh, mentioning the fact that not much time and uh, putting this team together, but they're still doing uh, pretty well, Karaku and Pity Martinique. Yeah, time, as I said yesterday, will be a factor in terms of performance. Um, I can tell you, having some of the branch sports uh, just a week before this will put pressure on you being able to coordinate the, 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 the grouping. Um, St. Patrick, they, they were fortunate. St. Patrick, they were fortunate. They had an opportunity because they, that was one of the first schools to have their branch um, event. And so they got time because as soon as you finish, you try to get the teams together and begin working. You select who you need to select and start working, you know, um, to find the best com combination to, to take part. So definitely um, some branches will be at a disadvantage because I know it, it was a short time that they got to prepare these athletes. All right, well, that sounds understandable. Incidentally, um, just as we were breaking off to Sherian, uh, we had two successful jumps. One was from Kerku and the other one was, was from St. Andrew. Oh, so yeah. we, 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 uh, at least there were two successful drums that we know. On your screen now, we've got the girls under 15 javelin throw. And what we're going to do is that uh, we're going to get some information on that because they're going through the paces of uh, elimination, of course, and then they will take the top eight. Uh, sherry Ann is meeting with the coaches in the meantime, trying to get some reactions and some comments from them. Sherry, talk to us. I have Sheldon uh, Carmichael. He is one of the coaches, or I should say the manager, of the St. Andrew uh, uh, team here for the National Primary School Games. Um, St. Andrews would have won these games 27 times before. You're looking for the 28. Um, speak us about the, about the formulation. 
of the St. Andrew team this time around? Well, we have our, it starts from the individual schools having their individual um, sports. Then we then move into the branch whereby we have heats and everybody has to bring their own individual athletes and we select the best, they will compete in the branch and then the results from the branch, that is where we select our team to come down to St. George's. So how many athletes are you um, feeling in, in this particular year's sports? Well, this year we have 96 athletes registered to participate in the various events throughout the two days of events. The training, the mix in terms of field, long distance, middle distance? Oh, well, yes, as we say, it comes from the results of the, um, from our hits. We are, what we're doing in our hits, we have hits for the track events and the field events as well. And we select the best to come down to represent the parish. So um, we know we're going to the medal presentations, but quickly, can you tell us what has the feeling been like yesterday? I know you had uh, a couple DQs and, and, you know, moving into the final day, at, I think you were over 100 and something points ahead. Yes, that is correct. We are in the lead thus far with 100 points at least. So we, as a camp, we are very happy. Um, the disqualification, it was just a little error. We are not, we understood the error and we are, we are not this happy with it. However, Today we come in to look to execute and to ensure that we get everything right so we do not have those errors so we could be successful with our 28 victory. Thank you very much. Well, viewers, you heard it. Uh, St. Andrew, they're looking for win number 28 in the National Primary School Games. We now turn over to the medal presentation ceremony.
second position, Kari Kula, comes on to me with a time of 4 minutes, 36.24 seconds. And now the first, St. Andrew, with a time of 4 minutes, 21.55 seconds. Another presentation for Bet number 19. The girls fall to run under 15. In the third position, Anna Bartholomew of St. David. The time of 1 minute 11.72 seconds. In second position, Dana Alexis of St. Patrick. With a time of 1 minute. 8.207. And in first position, Chanel Jones of St. George. She got a time of 1 minute 6.16 seconds. Final presentation for event number 20. The boys fall the feature run under 15. In third position, Sean Andrews of St. George, 1 minute, 2.81 seconds. Second position, Tristan Wellington of St. Patrick, 1 minute, 2.57 seconds. Okay. All right. So there you had the medal presentations, and we gonna keep you updated on the field events. We want to just keep an eye out for as you have a number of them happening now. Um, interesting. I had a little peek at the boys' high jump, and I, I saw a number of athletes clearing the bar. So it says that they they're into you know the, the the workload and they're ready seem ready to go now so quite a few of them I've, i i saw clear the bar and so we will want to maybe have a look um whenever possible we can get an update as to maybe the height that they're at and so on we will try to bring that to you we also have the javelin on the 15 taking place and um again i i'm just surveying the field seeing some little um, techniques and so on with the javelin so it says that you know quite a few of them actually know what is happening yes as we said earlier the, the thing about um, the high jump 
Well, like most of the technical, most of the technical events, you get one successful one, and you try to follow that pattern. So it's not surprising that he you too has gone over. have one or two. And there we see a clearance there from St. St. Patrick, a good clearance from St. Patrick there. Uh, the one or two clearances, and then you would see it continues. And that's what's actually happening now. There's a second that leaves from St. St. Patrick. It's not on your screen, but we are having a look. And he cleared also. It's on the screen now. He has also cleared. So that's a two at St. George from St. Patrick would have cleared at this height. We are not we are not sure what height this is, but once we once we get information we pass it on to you. The first time clearance from St. George. Yeah, so again the the high jumps very technical you you have to be able to have a proper approach then to get the body to vertically lift and get over the bar clearing the bar um, could be pretty difficult and one thing i notice about the high jump you have to be confident to really execute i i, I had a a little chuckle yesterday when i saw a young lady she had about three attempts but what she she did well was that she didn't touch the match she just went around you know and i saw that she was quite nervous and so she, you, you could tell that the confidence was not there okay so we seem to have sherry and somewhere down on the field yeah. Yes, Jason, I have with me now the coach for one of the coaches. I need to correct myself for St. David, uh, Javon Bartholomew. Javon, you came in on, on day two with just over 183.5 um, points. Um, just give us a, a, a brief review of the first day. Well, I think, um, I think we had a decent first day. I think the athletes went out and they did their best in the events that they, they participated in. We had a few lapses in concentration here and there, and so... Uh, we didn't fully capitalize on some of the events and some of the points that we should have had, but I think they went out there and they gave a good account of themselves. So I think we're satisfied after the first day and hoping to come today and, and put even more effort and get better results. So what were some of the actual pointers shared with your athletes? Because I know they're pretty young, up to about 14, 15, in terms of boosting their morals and so, so that today, the little stutters that you had on day one is not repeated. Right, so one of the issues that we have with them or that they might have is that they may look at the other athletes from the other schools who may be a little bit bigger. And even from the onset, when they get up to the stands, they may say, so they shouldn't be big, you know, and stuff like that. So we try to tell them, you know, just focus on your event, you know, do your own thing and remember what we would have taught you, remember what we would have practiced, and just go out there, have fun, and do your best. And uh, whom should we be looking out for today? Uh, we have athletes like Ronan Lessi, um, we have Christian Niles, who will be doing the javelin. Um, we have Tanaya Gibbs, uh, just, just to name a few. Well, there you heard it. And I, I must say that Leslie has done a remarkable job on um, day one. Um, how disciplined is he, though, to training? Very disciplined, very committed. He's one of the athletes that loves what he does. And you'd see 100% effort. What you see on the track is what he gives in, in training. And um, shout out to him because over the weekend during national champs, he would have equaled a record. So he has his name in the history books. And so he's looking to, to put his best foot forward. Uh, he did so yesterday and come in today again to make his mark and leave his name in uh, national primary school sports. Well, thank you very much. That was one of the coaches out of the St. David Parish, Javin Bartholomew. He spoke to his team. They pre they preparations what happened in day one and what they are looking forward to in day two i'm going to turn you back over to the commentary team and the next time you see my face it will be to give you an update on some of the field events we are getting ready for first event on a track today first event on track uh, that will be the 80 meters on the nine girls it's a preliminary event 80 meters and so we, we will go to trackside for lane assignments.
just recapping briefly here in lane two, the St. David's in Gibbs, Thomas and Carrico in lane three, in lane four, uh, Williams from St. John, lane five, uh, Noel from St. Andrew, lane six, from St. Patrick we have Frederick, in lane seven, Lewis of St. Mark, and in lane eight, Frank from St. George. That's your lineup for the girls on the nine, 80 meters dash. The first event in the track for today. Let's see what we, we are going to get out of these young ladies. If yesterday is any indication of um, uh, uh, what's going to happen today, we are in for a treat. Yeah, definitely we are in for a treat. Uh, keep your eyes on lane two, lane four, lane six. Got a slight faulty start here, so they they will call up from their set positions. And remember, this this is a under nine, under nine girls, eighty meters. St. David in two, Carrico in three, St. John in four, and five in St. Andrew, St. Patrick in six, St. Mark in seven, and St. George in eight. So remember, folks, this is a preliminary heat. The top eight will advance to the final. Have the top two, and then the best times following. had it St. Andrew had a really decent start and uh, beautiful start and the running style is is absolutely spot on we had a miss we had a miss um, a misfortune in Gibbs from St. David's and she fell right at the start yeah, yeah but as you look you you see the athlete from St. Andrew again not looking anywhere else but the finish line uh, the Hand movement a bit all over the place. Um, but as they grow, you will refine, you know. Yeah, but the legs, the strides, pretty good. So St. Andrew, St. Patrick, St. George, from our vantage point here. Let's see what the official results look like. And it's... it's Noel from St. Andrew, 12.61. Frederick from St. Patrick, 13.04. And Frank from St. George, 13.08. Uh, and fourth position, Lewis from St. Mark, position number five. Williams from St. John, at 13.34 seconds. Uh, Brianna Thomas from Carrico and Petey Matnik is, is in position seven. And we had that misfortune with a young lady from St. David. Heat yeah. number two. The 80 meters. Heat number two. We are going Your track side. Assignments. Lane two. Jenea Charles St. George. Lane three. Prisca McDonald St. David. Lane four. Abriel Fortune St. Patrick. Lane five. Nadira Filbert, St. Mark. Lane 6, Catalina Alexander, St. Andrew. Lane 7, Safari Joseph, St. John. Lane 8, Mackenzie Noel, Kariku, and Peter Martinique. There we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The, uh, heat number 2 of 2. Girls under 9, 80 meters. Charles. St. George, lane two. McDonald, St. David, lane three. Lane four, Fortune from St. Patrick. And lane, fi lane five is from St. Mark Filbert. Alexander is in lane six from St. Andrew. Joseph, lane seven from St. John. And then lane eight, Noel from 
carry cool. They under they are under status orders. A clean start gets it going, ladies and gentlemen. This is what you've been waiting for Saint as they come Saint down the stretch. George, Saint Look David at that. Is there. It's almost as Saint if it's Patrick, one line. Saint Mark, but, we see Saint but it's Saint Patrick, Patrick walks, just coming out. ahead. Uh, Saint John seems to have Saint the Patrick, second Saint position. George. But uh, a good closely. run by the athlete from St. Patrick, you can see that she built Seems the like speed. Like she didn't start off, she didn't have the there. best of starts, but was able to but run back and to, to capture that first position. St. Patrick very, very we'll impressive wait for the run. Results. But that was heat two of two. For event number there she goes, looking all powerful. She, she seems to be a pretty powerful nine. athlete. Uh, the, the, Arms moving you, Shereen, is not pretty slowly still plan. compared when to a, a, a true sprinter. So you can see that she's still Seven developing, but she has that power. You can see the way she's built. Um, she's built very powerfully. And so she, she is one that, you know, you will want to keep an eye on. At On the ninth stage, she, she really seems powerful. Very good run from St. Patrick there. Uh, good. State steady. She ran her race and she took it to the end. She was... Not put off by the athlete from St. George, who had a slight lead, and the athlete that was closest to her. All eyes are on the board. So that was heat number two. As, they await, as we await the official results. And we can see the boys for event number 44 already lined up. So it's 12.69 we have it. for Fortune it's from St. Patrick. Nadira Philbert of St. Mark, 12.84 seconds. In second position, Janaya Charles of St. George, 12.77 seconds. And in first position, Abriel Fortune of St. Patrick, 12.69 seconds. That's not surprising for Fortune. She, she was the division boys, dash on the nine. champion in St. Patrick. Lane two, Cajun Modest, St. George. Lane three, Afridi Francis, St. Mark. Lane four, Javonte McIntosh, Kareku, and Peter Martinique. Lane five, Zidane Lewis, St. David. Lane six, Donrick Edwards, St. Andrew. Lane seven, Jaron Moromain, St. John. Lane eight, Jelani Patterson, St. Patrick. Uh, Jeloni Patterson is one to look for in this. He was a divisional champ in St. Patrick. Pretty keenly contested race there. Uh, St. Andrews now coming to the, the, the four, but uh, it took a while. Uh, you had that bit of competition there between Kareku and St. Andrew. But again, St. Andrew, that athlete there seems to know just what to do, how to hold the form. Um, and, and he came through really nicely. Wasn't too quick to get up off the blocks, but as he got into his running, can see him just really pushing. Again, early days for them, but um, a lot to work with. St. Patrick coming in third there. So it's 11.94 seconds. This seems to be the fastest heat so far. 
11.94 for Donrick Edwards from St. Andrew winning this one. Boys, 80 meter dash on the nine. Hits number two. Lane two. Shavar Duncan, St. Patrick. Lane three. Let's go track side for Lane. Roger Thomas, St. David. Lane six. Kazik, Kizam, Stafford, Carrick, and Peter Martinet. Lane seven. Kai David, St. Mark. And lane eight, Jaden Lewis and St. John. So th there you have it, uh, lane assignments in lane two. Duncan from St. Patrick. Uh, lane two is, uh, lane two is there. We seem to have a non-starter in lane two. John is in three, Dakota in four, and they're off. And they're off. Nothing yet. St. George is surging ahead. There goes St. George. Here comes St. Andrew. St. George, St. Andrew. St. George, St. Andrew, St. David. St. Andrew seem to have gotten him on the line. A pretty decent run in there by these two youngsters competing with each other. Very competitive. <laughs> having their chat now, but um, definitely you can see that they, they understand that, you know, they, they, they had that contest and it was up to the best person to win. The determination here, it's, and this is, this is good stuff for under nine. St. Andrews and George and St. David's were right there on their heels. And they took it right to the line with St. Andrew getting the better of St. George in this one. It carried to fourth position, St. David in third position. The time for John from St. Andrew winning this one is 12.03 seconds. That's in heat number two. Heat number one, the winning time in heat number one was 11. 11 point. The faster heat. And remember, it's the top eight. The top eight go on to run the finals a little later today. Next event on the track. It's the girls 100 meters on the 13. Girls 100 meters on the 13. And what we can tell you is that the, the high jump is still ongoing, as well as the javelin for girls, and also short put. So we have sherry ready to give us some results from the javelin throw. The javelin throw girls completed, so she will give us some results. Yes, Jason, I am ready in the under 13 girls javelin. We had... Chloe Roberts out of Karakou winning that one with a distance of 18.27 meters. In second position was Kilana Modest from St. Andrew with 18.16 meters. Third went to the athlete from St. David, Rihanna Ross with 16.90 meters. And fourth position, Leah Rose Charles from St. George with 16.59 meters. So Karakou would have won that uh, event. And as we heard the coach said earlier, they're a bit strong in the field event, so we say congratulations to Karaku on that win. Just an update in the under 15 boys high jump. Well, they're down to final three, uh, three athletes, and the, the, the height that they're attempting now is 1.35 meters. We have Jaden Lewison from St. Andrew, uh, Jeremiah from St. David, and Alexander from St. George. So these are the three athletes um, currently attempting to cross the 1.35 meter in the, on the boys' 15 high jump. I'll get back to you momentarily because there is supposed to be short put to start in short order at the bottom of the field. Okay, so thank you, sherry for that update. There you have it, the, the high jump for boys under 15 is continuing. We are down to the three three finalists here so medals will come from amongst these three at least one from St. Andrew one from St. David and one from St. George that's where our medals will come from but the next event on the track will be the under 13 100 meters for girls
the final round, St. George with a clearance. The first time clearance for St. George. A height of 1.35 meters. He will be happy. He has already set the standards. He's above the bar. And so... It's a small club, uh, I'm told. Uh, the high jumpers, the, the small club, the, they look out for one another. Even in competition. So we seem to be advancing to a, a new height to suggest that all three would have made the 1.35 meters. It would have cleared the 1.35 meters. On the 13 girls, 100 meters. Up next on the track, lane two, Richards, Carico, and P.T. Mackney, Charles from St. George, lane three, four, Lee from St. John, Terrell from St. Andrew, lane six should be Frederick from St. Mark, Klein from St. David in lane seven, and Edward from St. Patrick would be in lane eight. And in heat two, you can look forward to John from St. John, Cato, St. Mark, Nelson, St. David, Faré, St. George, Kariku and Piti Matnik, you have Frances, St. Patrick, David, and Fraser, St. Andrew. And these are the big girls, it's under 13. The first time non clearance from St. Andrew here. Presumption that, is that the height is 1.40 meters. And there's a clearance. It's a clearance from St. Patrick. It's a clearance from St. St. Patrick there. And a non clearance from St. George. So thus far, the uh, one clearance we have had from St. Patrick at this new height. Second attempt. Non clearance for him, so he will have one final attempt. So St. George having his second attempt. Pretty good effort. Yeah, just brushing the bar there. Um, St. George on his way down. Um, um, again, he had the, the right approach. Uh, just coming down a little too close to the bar. Um, I think the, the fact that he didn't have enough momentum to push him away from the bar is what would have um, been responsible for him landing on the bar. So it, it, we now turn our attention to, to the track and the 100 meters on the 13 girls. The, eight, the top eight would advance 
I time to the next round. Final attempt, St. Andrew. 1.40 meters. And, and that's a beautiful clearance. Slight bubble, but that's a beautiful clearance. It, it, it's really something to behold when a, a high jumper is on song. So he goes track side. Leo Rose, Charles, St. George. Lane four, Chatonia Lee, St. John. Lane five, Haley Terrell, St. Andrew. Lane six, Emma Frederick, St. Mark. Lane seven, Keja Klein, St. David. Lane eight, Kimaya Edwards, St. Patrick. So you're about to witness the girls on the 13 100 meter prelims. Top eight will be in the finals later this evening. This should be a very competitive race here. Um, look for the running in lane, in lane five. St. Patrick, let's see what St. Patrick have to say in this one. They're off. We're looking to see who will get into the ascendancy first. It is St. Andrew. Uh, St. George is there. St. Andrew, St. George. But St. Andrew's pulling away. Uh, St. George just trailing. St. Patrick coming through for third. A uh, good run there by the athlete from St. Andrew. She came through really nicely there. Um, built the speed gradually and was able to just have that top end that could keep her going, that momentum, carrying her all the way to the finish. Not, Pre su not surprising. Pretty even Stevens. Early up, she, she got a good lead and, and she never looked back. Not, not surprising. She came into this race as the top runner in this 100 meters on the 13. So this is according to form here. It's a pretty good run. Strong athlete. So it's, it's Haley Terrell from St. Andrew. 13.79. Look out for that name. Leah Rose Charles. 14.17. She had a good run also. Heat number two. Is up next. Lane two, Maya John, St. John. Lane three, Amira Cato, St. Mark. Lane four, Keshana Nelson, St. David. Lane five, Nikela Fare, St. George. Lane six, Guana, Francis, Carrick, and Peter Martini. Lane seven, April, David, St. Patrick. Lane eight, Teresa Fraser, St. Andrew. And again, look for the running in, in lane seven and in lane eight. High jump on the 15 boys continues. So it's heat two. 
off to top eight run finals late in today. Under 13 girls or 100 meters. They're off. Let's see who would surge ahead. It seems to be St. John. St. John seems to be there. St. David is there. Here comes Kariakou. St. Andrew is coming. It seems to be Kariakou. St. Andrew. St. George. Good run there by the athlete there from Kariakou. Uh, just getting herself ahead and, and really powering home. And I think the operative word is power. She looked good. She looked very good. Let's see what the time looked like compared to the other heat. She looked very good athlete from Saint, from Karaku one PT Matnik there. Bad start for St. Andrew, but she was she came right back. She came right back. Yeah, she was there putting enough pressure. Uh, running out of real estate a few meters more and the possibility of her catching um Kariku would have been there, but it's Kariku in a time of thirteen. 13.70 seconds. So well done to Frances from Kariku. And on paper here, this is the fastest heat. So that was a superb running from Kariku here. We have a lot to look forward to in the, in the finals. That was it. Superb running. 13.70. The fastest qualifier so far. The next event on the track will be the boys' version, the 100 meters under 13 for boys. 100 meters under 13 for boys. And uh, I'm looking forward to see that St. Patrick, uh, Oliver from St. Patrick, but he's in heat two. So let's concentrate on, on heat one. In lane two from St. David, it will be Charles. In hosting is in from St. Patrick in lane three. Alexis from Caracol and Petey Matnik is in lane four. St. Paul and St. John in lane 5. Rishi from St. Mark in lane 6. Briggs from St. George in lane 7. And Alexander from St. Andrew in lane number 8. That's the boys. 100 meters on the 13. That's up next on the track. So we're going to go track side for the lane assignments. Lane two, St. David. Lane three, Zyme Host and St. Patrick. Lane four, Jemmer and Lexis, Kariku and Pitten Martini. Lane five, Devonta St. Paul, St. John. Lane six, Levi Risher, St. Mark. Lane seven, Akel Briggs, St. George. Lane 8, Alex Alexander, St. Andrew. Your lane assignment, 100 meters dash on the 13 boys. Hit number one. And this is heat number one of two heats. And similarly, like the girls, it's the top eight on time that go on to the finals later today. Yeah, this, this grouping of boys can't really tell who. Um, we know that Briggs from St. George did pretty well yesterday. Um, today being a new day, it's a different event. It's a 100 event. Um, but he had a good showing yesterday. And so I think St. George, the whole of St. George will be looking to him, you know, to really get himself, himself into the finals. Yes. Um, but St. Patrick, I think um, that youngster there in, in lane um, number three, Hostin had a pretty decent run also. Charles had a, a pretty decent run also. So um, these few athletes have shown that they, you know, they, they are, know what it is like to compete. I like Hostin confidence. 
it's, he just brings a certain level, a degree of confidence with him. Look for that young man hosting in, in lane three. And again, you cannot leave out Alexander um, from St. Andrew. He had a pretty decent showing also yesterday. So a, a pretty nifty bunch. Um, it will be interesting the times that they would run. But trust me, they, they, this group looks pretty good. One hundred meters on the thirteen boys, and they're off. Let's see who would get forward. It seems to be Briggs, uh, Briggs and Hosten. Briggs, Hosten. Um, who will it be? Briggs, Briggs, just breaking away, and uh, there you see Saint Mark coming through. I, I told you you couldn't really um, depict who would be at the ascendancy until this race is finished. Very good run by Briggs. And, and uh, he did what he had to do. Looking really good. Look at the arms. Look at the legs. Really composed running there by Briggs. You can see St. Patrick there. He's pretty all over the place. But Briggs is just so composed. St. Mark coming through really quickly. And doing very well. 15.16 for the winner. Akel Briggs. So we're going to go. That was quite competitive. Um, the first four places. Very, very competitive. And this is a big one. In lane two, John Callis, St. Andrew. Lane three, Aquel Comabach, St. John. Lane four, Alex Lendor, Carrick, and Peter Martinique. Lane five, Dishon Oliver, St. Patrick. Lane six, Karen Grant, St. Mark. Lane seven, Cameron Bonaparte, St. George. And in lane eight, Leonel Charles, St. David. Uh, look for Oliver and Comabach in this, in this one. Division of champ Oliver was in, in, from St. Patrick. So there's a, there's a lot he brings to the table in this one here. He's in lane five. Yeah, looking at him yesterday, he, he did really well. And so you saw his dominance on the track yesterday. And uh, I think he's powerfully built and that helps him. He looks good. He, he looks like a sprinter. Yeah, and definitely um, we're going to keep his, uh, our eyes on him. Uh, I think the 200 yesterday, the finals saw himself and Briggs really having, you know, that, that tussle for the ascendancy. But um, Oliver, uh, Briggs was no match for him. So, again, today we foresee that Oliver is going to be the person to beat. And don't count out Kamabach in lane three. It's hit two of two. Remember, the top eight will go through to the final. So it's it's Kalist from St. Andrew in lane number two. Kamabachi is in three. Lendor from Carrico and Pitima, I think, in four. Oliver, he's in five. In lane six, Grant from St. Mark. In lane seven from St. George's, Bonaparte. And in lane eight from St. David, it's Charles. They wrote, and as we said, there, there goes, there goes Oliver. Here goes St. Andrew also. St. Andrew pushing him, but Oliver uh, definitely doing what he has done. And I think St. David has just done what they needed to do to capture the second position. Uh, a really good run there by the athlete from St. David. Yes. But Oliver doing the business, ensuring that his qualification is spotless. Yeah, I would have thought a disappointing run there from Cumberbatch in lane three. Other than that, it was true to form.
That's a look at the form. This is a beautiful looking athlete at that age, at this age. This Sean Oliver. Take a note of that name. It's 12.79 seconds. So heat number two, 12.79. The winner in heat number one was 13.16. So you get an idea of how well Oliver was running here. Okay, so there you had it. That is heat two of the boys on the 13s. Sherian has some results for, for us, and so we're going to go to Sherian now. Okay, and the results is from the... Uh, the results is from the under 15 boys high jump. We had a win there from the athlete from with the athlete from St. Patrick Davis Jeremiah. His height was 1.43 meters. Then we had Jaden Lewison of St. Andrew with 1.40 meters in second. And Jordan Alexander from St. George in third with 1.40 meters. Interestingly, uh, Jason and the others in the commentary booth. Um, Davis Jeremiah, he wanted to jump more. He felt that he had the ability to do uh, um, the 145 height, but unfortunately he has other events to participate in and his coach has decided that he should call it a quits at 1.43 meters. But he was willing to go further, but as I assume he is an athlete who has different um, events to participate in, so they agreed to stop him at 1.43 meters. So we still say congratulations to Davis Jeremiah, and we wish him all the luck in the future in terms of his jumping career. That report from Sharia Noel there. The winning jump from Jeremiah from St. Patrick, 1.43 meters, and the at least from St. Andrew and St. George, they would have cleared 1.40, but at least from St. St. Andrew, in second place on comeback. Yeah, good jump there from Jeremiah. Well, we saw that he, he was one of the first to clear 1.40, and it tells you that he had something, you know, more that he could bring, and so he went a notch further. And as, as she reported, um, the coach stopping him from maybe going a, a further height because i am guessing that he has other events that he has to come um compete in so you don't want to expend we're going to go track side for on the seven girls 80 meters eat number one lane four veronica andel saint mark lane five every cape saint andrew lane six Zenia sylvester saint john lane seven Celicia Fortune St. David, Lane 8, Journey, Janaya Mark St. Patrick. So just to let you know, you are witnessing the Nexa GUT Primary School Games 2024. And you are on the track. It's the girls 80 meters on the seven. If yesterday's on the seven boys is any indication of what might happen now, we are in for a treat, ladies and gentlemen. But in lane number two, it's Caesar from Caracu and P.T. Matney. In lane number three, it's George from St. George. And uh, she's in lane four from St. Mark. Cape in, from St. Andrew in lane five. And six is Sylvester from St. John. In lane seven is Fortune from St. David. And Mark from St. Patrick. That's your lineup for the girls on the seven, 80 meters. Again, the atmosphere that is set here could be pretty intimidating for some of the youngsters. And uh, I think this is what is happening here. You have an athlete from St. David who 
It's not really comfortable. Seems to be looking around. The others are ready. Uh, looking at them, the track will be pretty hot at this time. And so they look quite uncomfortable. Yes, the track will be, will be, really will be hot at this time. In fact, there's one little girl who seems to be in some form of distress with her feet. Uh, and so they have been asked to vacate the track for a, sh for a short time. And uh, whilst the organizers take care of things. And so we will just go back a bit on the, what we can expect in the 100 meters under 13 boys. I think we are in for a treat with Briggs and, and Oliver. <laughs> this is going to be an interesting toss up later in the day. Well, I, I, I will look to compare the times. 12.79 to 13.16 and uh, Oliver will have to have a really bad race. I agree. If he loses this event, he has to, they, they, something has to go technically wrong for him, for him not to really come true as the winner of this event. Uh, you look at the timing and it's clear cut. He's leaps and bounds ahead of the rest of the field. And whoever his coaches, they are doing a fantastic Fantastic job. He was a divisional champion in St. In St. Patrick, um, by the way. And, and, and so here we have a, a good athlete in the making in this formative stage. And one would hope that the coaches pay serious attention to this young man because we think he has a lot in store. Uh, yeah, definitely a lot in store. And um, I mean, when you look at uh, someone like Oliver D on the 13th level, I mean, it tells you that um, track and field is in good hands. It says that um, we need to really take stock of what we have now and let's see how we can build on this and really make this, you know, something big for these youngsters. I agree. 12.79 in the preliminary. This is good running. This is good running. And we are track side. Lane 5, Kalanda Charles, St. Andrew. In lane 6, Azura Charles, St. Patrick. In lane seven, Jazari, Samuel, Kariku, and Peter Marchnik. And in lane eight, Aria Lerd, St. Mark. So we switched the heats. So you have a different, different grouping of athletes here uh, in the girls on the seven. It's Mitchell, Abraham, Marshall, Charles, and Charles, Samuel, and Lerd. Lerd, St. Mark's. Samuel, Kariku and P.T. Matney, Azura Charles from St. Patrick, uh, Kalana Charles from St. Andrew, Zaria Marshall from St. John, Kaylee Abraham from St. George, and Zaria Mitchell from St. David's. They're on the status orders. They're pretty anxious there. These youngsters, they want to get over with this running. They don't and they're up again. You can see that young Saint St. George. She's just looking so relaxed. I think she, she's saying to herself, I have this. And, and that's the attitude you really have to have, to have as an athlete. You have to have some form of pomposity. So this, this, this really augurs well for any, so any athlete in any sport. You have to believe in yourself, really especially the individual sports like like these and they're off and it seems to be St. George St. George St. Patrick's coming through but St. George Fully composed, St. Patrick coming, St. John is there, but it's St. George, composed as ever and ran a really beautiful race. Only, um, only not in a lane, but <laughs> let's, let's see what the officials think. <laughs> Again, at this level, the under seven level, you're talking five and six year old children. Uh, they may not really fully understand what it means to, to stay in lane. She's running next to her friend who she just made. 
you know, and so she wants to be close to her. That's all she knows. She wants to be close to her friend. So the lanes may not really matter for these youngsters at this stage. Maybe as they grow and they, they, they get to the under nine stage, you, you expect more. But for them, it's just the joy of competing against their friends. So it is enjoyed. St. Patrick and St. John in, in that order. St. George, St. Patrick, St. And St. David, sorry. No, it is St. John. St. George, St. Patrick, St. John. 14.40. And it's Kaylee Abraham, the winner in this one. Yeah, good run there by Abraham. And looked at her, she looked so relaxed that you, you can tell she, she had something there. So that was heat number one. Uh, and the girls won the seven. The winner there, Kaylee Abraham from St. George, with Azura Charles in second position, Zaria Marshall in third position, and Kalana Charles in fourth. Is it top eight? Make it on to the finals later today. Heat number two, up next. Like Caesar, Cariku, and Peter Martini. Lane three, Kezia, George, St. George. Lane four, Veronica Anders, St. Mark. Lane five, Evra Cave, St. Andrew. Lane six, Zenaya Sylvester, St. John. Lane seven, Celicia Fortune, St. David. And lane eight, Janaya Mark, St. Patrick. And look at the confidence in Janaya there. Uh, she's greeting the crowd. Uh, let's see what Janaya has in store. Again, I like the confidence of Janaya. And again, remember these are on the seven. By the time these young people get to secondary schools with the crowd and everything here, uh, there would be old pros in, in facing the crowd and knowing how to run in, in the meet like this. Yeah, definitely the, the budding ground for these athletes. They can only get better from here with good coaching and, you know, parenting that would encourage and motivate them. Mm -hmm. They're on the status orders. Let's look at Mark. And she seems to be full of confidence. Mark in lane eight. She's from St. Patrick. A little too eager there is the athlete from St. Andrew. So we're going to have another go at it. And they're off. On the seventh female. There goes St. Andrew. There goes Carrier Koo. St. George is there, but look at St. Patrick. Oh. Uh, who's in with confidence? St. Patrick. St. Patrick, St. Andrew, St. George in that order. As we said, the confidence of Mark in Lane 8. And she came true. She, she lived up to her building right there. It's Shania Mack, lane number eight from St. Patrick, the winner in this one. Smooth running, smooth running. She was confident from the start. She was waving and blowing kisses the whole lot. It's good to see, it's good to see. 13.78. Um, 13.78 compared to heat number one this is the faster of the two heats so Jenna and Mark based on the time will be the favorite going into the final later today so St. Patrick you have one foot ahead of the rest of the field and the girls on that 7 80 meters Dash Naya on the Mark. seven. Lane two. Kyle Thomas, St. Mark. Lane three. Decroy Charles, St. John. Lane four. 
Mikhail Sears St. Andrew, Lane 5, Alfonso Douglas St. David, Lane 6, Ozan King St. Patrick, Lane 7, Zevon Panchu, Carrico and Peter Martini, Lane 8, Adam Jones St. George. And there you have the lineup for the under seven on our our star of yesterday's meet in lane four. I am I am looking for the running from lane six and lane four. Well, I, I have something that I want to let the viewers in on, and it is that today is actually the birthday of Sears. It is Sears' birthday. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> so definitely later on, he has the opportunity to enjoy his birthday even further when he wins, or if he wins the gold medal at the 80 meter on the nine. I think he started celebrating since yesterday. So the lineup in lane number two, lane number two, it's from St. Mark, it's Thomas, Kyle Thomas. Lane number three is vacant for now. Lane number four is Mikhail Sears, he's from St. Andrew. He has a winner yesterday. To the audience, we are asking for the sake of the start of the race. In lane five, it's he's from St. David. Douglas, Alfonso Douglas. Ozim King from St. Patrick. He is a divisional champion from St. Patrick. Uh, so we expect a lot from Ozim today. Zawan Panchu, he, he had a good a show, had a good account of himself yesterday. He's from Caracu and Pete Manting and Adam Jones. He's from St. George. That's your, that's your lineup. But on the seven, 80 meters, boys. Looking at Sears, he seems to be a bit more calm today. <laughs> uh, not really moving around. We saw him doing his jumping jacks and so on yesterday. But today he seems to be a bit more focused. He's getting serious. Somebody spoil the fun and tell him to be serious. So Mikaya says he's in lane four. Uh, next to him, Douglas in lane five. Look for six. And they're off. And there he goes. It says, uh, let's see if he has any challengers. Uh, so far, it says, it says, it's St. David. Uh, here comes St. George, but it's all about St. Andrew and Mikael says, I'm crossing that line first, uh, followed by the athlete there from St. George. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, your star is continuing to shine in Mikael says from St. Andrew. He's the winner in this heat. Uh, he must be, a, must be a lovable young man. He is enjoying himself, that's for sure. Good run back from St. George and St. And St. David there. I, I think St. Patrick might be a bit disappointed that Ozim did not perform as they were expecting, being divisional champion and having done so well in St. Patrick. But Mikaias says St. Andrew 13.47. And 13.47. Heat number two is next. Heat number two, uh, Pascal from Saint Pascal from Saint Mark. In lane number two, in lane number three, Paul from Saint John. Bailey's in lane four. York in lane from Carrico and Pete Matic in five. John Saint Patrick, can we go to track side the lane for the lane assignments? Lane two, Cohen Pascal Saint Mark. Lane three. Zidane Paul St. John. Lane 4, Tyler Bain St. David. Lane 5, Kaden York, Carrico and Peter Marchney. Lane 6, Kenroy John St. Patrick. Lane 7, Damari Paul St. Andrew. Lane 8, Noah Charles St. George. So this one, there no says in this one. So this is probably an open one. Let's see who emerges on top here.
So it's Pascal in two, Paul in three, Bean in four, York in five, Kenroy John, he's in lane six, he's from St. Patrick, De Demary Paul, he's in lane seven from St. Andrew, and in lane eight, Noah Charles from St. George. So 80 meters on the seven, boys. They're off. Who would it be? Uh, in the middle of the field, it seems to be St. David. Uh, St. Andrew is just coming. St. David, St. Andrew, St. Patrick, uh, St. Andrew, St. Andrew, St. Patrick, St. David, in that order. That's a, that's a lovely run from St. Andrew there. Uh, let's see what the time looks like. So, St. Andrew, your winner in this one. That's Demary Paul. Running out of lane seven, Demary Paul. The winner of this one took a little while to get going. St. David got up early and was motoring, but St. Andrew coming through pretty quickly. Good running form, arms and legs in sync. St. Patrick coming in second, and St. David third. Uh, Pascal from St. Mark wasn't. Uh, Seventh position, Paul from St. John. Sixth, York was fifth from Carico and Pity Magnet. Noah Charles from St. George, he was fourth. And then you had Bean, John, and Paul. Third, second, and first. Winning time 13.46 seconds. The first heat was won by Sears in 13.47. So, this is the making of a good final. Yes, definitely. Sears will have to run and run well if he wants to win that gold and to, to crown his body with a, a victory in the, in the 80 meter on the seven. That would be some birthday gift for this young man. Ladies and gentlemen, medal presentation for event number 74. The girls javelin through under 13. Your bronze medalist. A distance of 16.90 meters. Representing St. David, Rihanna Ross. Your silver medalist. A distance of 18.16 meters. Representing St. Andrew. Kelina Modest and your gold medalist a distance of 18.27 meters representing Karyaku and Piti Martinique Chloe Roberts these are your medalists for event number 74 the girls javelin throw under 13 Medal presentation for event number 49, the boys high jump under 15. Your bronze medalist, a, dis a height of 1.40 meters, representing St. George, Jaden Alexander. Your silver medalist, a height of 1.40 meters, Representing St. Andrew, Jaden Lewison. And ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist in a height of 1.43 meters from St. Patrick, Davis Jeremiah. These are your medalists for event number 49, the boys high jump under 15. We say a special thank you to our President General, Brother Jude Bartholomew, for his assistance with these medal presentations. Ladies and gentlemen, please put your hands together for all of our medalists as they return to the ceremonies room.
This is the 2024 Nexa GUT National Primary School Championships 2024. We head back to the track for event number 52, the girls 200 meter dash under 11, heat number one. But when you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never live. Come on, take my hands, we've got everything we need. Cause you can look to me, yes, I can. whenever you're in need. Yes, you can. Just call on me and I'll be on my way. Hey, hey, hey. I'll be by your side, by your side. never to divide. The light that shines all over. Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. March, celebrating international... So we are about to witness the 200 meter on the 11 for girls. Um, preliminary, just reminding you all the events on track at this time will be preliminary events. And a bit later on this evening, we're going to have the finals of these events. So a lot to look forward to. I think the excitement has started. The crowd has built quite nicely. Uh, the atmosphere seems to be charging and charging pretty well. Yes, the, the, in fact, um, the, the crowd has, has increased quite significantly from what we started at earlier this morning. So one would expect by uh, 2, 3 o'clock, we should have a fairly good turnout of the supporters and students of the various parishes coming to support their parish and their, their athlete today. They, we are into the 200s, to 200s um, on the 11 and on the 15 today. Yesterday we would have seen the, the other version of that. Uh, so today it's on the 11 and on the 15. We did the on the 13, on the 13 yesterday as well as the on the 9. So it's the girls on the 13, on the 11, 200 meters, six athletes in this first heat uh, in St. David's, Carico and Peter Matic, St. George, St. John, St. Patrick, and St. Andrew. They will be rep represented in this first heat, one of two, and eight on time will advance to the finals later today. So on your screen, you're seeing the what seemed to be the completion, or uh, maybe the final round of the cricket ball throw on the 11 cricket ball throw. And uh, again, let me look. Crowd building up nicely. A mix of colors there. You can see the blues, the yellow, the red. They're all represented. The green is there. And in case you are just joining us, in, in terms of the colors, let's give you a refreshing of what the colors look like. Uh, it's green, St. Patrick. Orange, St. John. St. George's white and red. St. Mark. Blue, so it's a royal blue. Uh, it's St. Andrew, it's a deep blue. And St. David's is black and gold. And Caracu and Pity Matnik is yellow. So there you have the colors. You can identify your, your branch, your parish by the colors as the athletes compete to bring glory to their. This is where it starts, bring glory to the parish. Not just the branch, but bring glory to the parish also. Competition has been keen. Uh, St. Andrew, overnight, was way ahead in terms of points. And uh, we expect some better showing from the likes of 
the what you can describe as the smaller zones in St. Mark, St. John's, these are small zones, but we expect, uh, and to a certain extent, Carrico and Peter Matney, we expect some better showings today. So St. John, oh, there are only four schools uh, representing that branch. It's the St. John Arlington School and St. Peter's Catholic School, Van Roy Government School and Florida Government School. They, these are the schools that represent that branch in St. In St. John. You're not missing any action. You're not missing any action. In case you're just tuning in, you are tuned in to the National Primary School Sports. National Primary School Games, it is referred to, 2024, Nexet GUT. The St. Andrews branch, a uh, number of schools, a lot, one of the larger um, branches, St. Andrews. Methodist School, Parkley Government, St. Andrew Anglican Primary, St. Mary's Catholic, Sacred Heart Catholic, St. Andrew Catholic, St. Matthew's Catholic, Telescope Primary, St. Giles Anglican, Bella Government, Holy Cross Catholic, St. Michael's Catholic, and Holy Infant Anglican. They are the schools that make up the St. Andrew branch, St. David's branch, St. Martin de Porres Catholic. St. David's R.C., uh, Corinth Government, St. Joseph's R.C., St. Dominic's R.C., and St. Teresa R.C. St. Mark, as I said, one of the smaller branches, one of the smaller branches, only Bonnier, Bonnier Government and Samaritan Presbyterian. Caracou uh, uh, and P.T. Matnik branch, we had Dover Government, Hillsborough Government, our Lady of the Rosary Catholic, Harvey Vale Government, Mount Pleasant Government, and St. Thomas Aquinas Catholic. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen, the schools, the branches, by colors, that lending us this two days of track and field presentation. It's an exit GUT National Primary School Games 2024. Well, I can tell you the action is heating up on the outside. Uh, we have some really interesting events to come still. Out front, St. Andrew and the other parishes, uh, other branches, they're trying to catch St. Andrew. It will be a mama task, I can tell you, but definitely the if competition is on. <laughs> <laughs> if not impossible, but that's that's competition for you. So just taking in the a bit of the atmosphere as we await the start of the 200 meter under 11 girls. Uh, that would be the preliminary heats to see who would make it into the final this afternoon or this evening rather here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium. You. Know, after. Don't want to be too far away. I think you, you want to come in and you want to support good, keen rivalry among the parishes. Come and support these youngsters who are putting on quite a show for us here today. Absolutely. And still to come this morning, it's after the 200 meters on the 11 and on the 15, boys and girls, we will also have the 400 meters on the 13 boys and girls. And then we get to the afternoon evening session. We have all finals. So it will be the boys long jump on the nine. The girls cricket ball throw on the 11. The boys discus throw on the 15. The girls and boys 80 meters open. The girls and boys on the nine finals 80 meters. The girls and boys on the 13 100 meters the high jump, the, sorry, the long jump on the 13 for boys, the girls 80 meters, and the boys 80 meters on the 7. We would have the finals of, of the, also of all the 200s that we would have had at preliminary. So it would be the, on the 11, 
boys and girls, under 15, boys and girls, and the 400 meters, boys and girls, these are all finals. And then we get to the relays, 4 by 100 meters, under 15, boys and girls, 4 by 100 meters, under 11, boys and girls, and 4 by 400 meters, open. All right, well, a very packed afternoon it is going to be. Yep. And you can understand why. We will bring you up to speed and we will stay focused, zeroed in on these games. Here's what I can tell you. We will find ourselves in the company just now of the President General of the Grenada Union of Teachers, Mr. Jude Bartholomew. He's going to join us in just a little bit. It's a good day for athletics. Uh, the newly laid tracks, as we can see, uh, much talked about newly laid tracks at the National Stadium. Uh, it's uh, all in preparation for what's to come later on this month. The, well, not this month particularly, but what's to come later on. The Junior Carifta Games 51. Uh, that's going to be staged right here at the Kirani James Athletic Stadium in Grenada. And uh, athletes from around the region will converge. And they will battle for athletic supremacy. Uh, Grenada, of course, being front and center. sherry Ann Noel is also down on the ground. We're going to take in uh, some, a quick update from sherry Ann Noel. And then, of course, when we come back, we'll be speaking with Mr. Jude Bartholomew, the President General of the GUT. Sherry? Thank you, Jason. The update I have for you now is on the conclusion of the shot put on the 13 boys. We had... Deshaun Oliver, the athlete from St. Patrick, winning that uh, category with a distance of 8.32 meters. Second in the shot put on the 13 boys went to Ghana, Philip of St. George, with a distance of 7.95 meters. And third went to Akil Briggs. Akil is another of the athletes out of St. George, and his distance was 7.00 meters. So congratulations to uh, Deshaun Oliver from St. Patrick on winning the under 13 boys, a shot put with a distance of 8.32 meters. In the under 13 cricket ball throw, we also had a win there for Deshaun Oliver of St. Patrick. He did that with a distance of 62.18 meters. A second was Zahim Hostin, also of St. Patrick, with a distance of 59.26. And third was Ghana Phillip from St. George with a distance of 53.80. So we're seeing here that Deshaun Oliver had wins in both the under 13 boys short put and the under 13 boys cricket ball throw. Back to you, Jason. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sherry and Noel. Some uh, updates there. And of course, more medals will come in just a little bit. He's just finished his part of the medal presentation. And uh, it's a good way for uh, bring him up, up into the AC away from the blistering heat, 33 degrees outside on a Thursday, and it was a scorch out there. You got two shades darker, Bartholomew. <laughs> no shade in the sun. No shade in the sun. All right. Well, good afternoon and welcome to our studios here at uh, TNR Communication, our live broadcast studios of these games. The President General of the Grenada Union of Teachers. Mr. Jude Bartholomew, welcome. So good afternoon. It's a real pleasure to be here. All right. Um, your thoughts on what you've seen so far over day one and part of day two of these championships? Well, day one in terms of the national primary school game has been a wonderful start, uh, you know, wonder wonderful opening ceremony and everything and the smooth execution in spite of some little hiccups here and there that the day ran very, very smoothly. And I think that today persons are really looking forward to a better day with more excitement and such. And you watch how the day started already, the whole pageantry, the ambience and everything, the layout of the National Stadium and we look for a wonderful day today. All right. Um, what's your anticipation as it relates to records being broken? You, you think that we can see some of that? Well, hopefully we'll see that. I mean, it makes a big difference in the, in, in the games, the running of the games and such. But what we see that the athletes there, most of them are well trained and running, executing nicely and such. And we think that the spectators and everybody through the various medium are enjoying it quite nicely. Well, every time you come to the microphone, more than 90% of the times when you're at 
an interview table or a microphone. It has to do with um, some kind of industrial disputes and whatnot. We're not going to touch that at all today. Today, you're going to be sailing on a little smoother water, so to speak. So it just tells you that the Grenada Union of Teachers is really and truly versatile, you know, a versatile union. Not only dealing with negotiations and other aspects, but we deal with a number of different issues that the public, you know, the society needs to know and to appreciate. And one of the things is that sports and duty is really big on sports. The investment of our young people from the pre-primary, primary school level, secondary, and even tertiary, and we have been going a far way. And I think that the Grenada Union of Teach Teachers should be on record, should be applauded by the Grenadian um, society for all of us in the tremendous sacrifices and commitment that our teachers, principals, union as a whole, that we make for our nation's children in terms of nation building. For many years now, the Grenada Union of Teachers have been investing in sports, especially athletics, national primary school games, and branch sports and such, and we see no difference today. The only difference here, and we are very, very proud in our alignment and with Nexa Credit Union, formerly GUT Credit Union, with that partnership today and such, Nexa and GUT coming together for joint sponsorship of the games, and it's a wonderful, I think that the teachers are appreciating it very, very much. All right, yeah, well, you, you we wanted to segue into that, your relationship with uh, GUT and uh, Nexa, that, that relationship. It, is, it has been a very um, cordial relationship, one that has birthed a long time ago. But we're going to get to that in just a little bit. We're going to start, we're going to take in this race. We've got the 200 meters girls under 11. Let's take in the lane assignments quickly. St. Andrew. So the 200 meters, girls under 11. Any major prediction than this one, Bernard? Tell us quickly. We've got 10 it's seconds. In heat two, one has to look for Janelle Canai. Heat one. We're in heat one. We're in heat one. Heat one, yes. No, I think heat one is up for grabs. Uh, there's no, nobody jumping out between heat one there. All right. James is in one. Jones in two. Lendor in three, Barrett in four, Franklin in five, Williams in six, and Ranger in seven. All the parishes being represented in this one. Yes. All the branches, all the branches are represented here. Thing they have been just held in that set position for a little too long. There was a little shimmer coming out of lane four. It looks like uh, Barrett. But now they're off, up, out, and away. It's still too early to call. It's still pretty much even. Now that they're at the top of about 110, they come around this bend. Who comes off the curve first? Surely this has to be St. Patrick's in Latoya Williams. Yes. Williams comes off the curb. She's ahead of everybody. There's a serious challenge being mounted now from Lendo and Karaku and Pity Martinique, but Lendo is not going to catch her. Williams surely will go to the finish line on this one. She wins this heat out of lane six. That's uh, Latoya Williams of St. Patrick, just ahead of uh, Lendo of Karaku. We're going to see who picks up third, but uh, it's the first of two heats. The fastest eight on times. Will advance, Bernard. Take uh, a look at this one. Yes, it's it's Williams. Good good race. And what was pleasing in this race is Tiana Franklin from St. John, one of the smaller branches. It was she's going to come into focus shortly. And in fact, I think she would have pipped, pipped Carrico on the line, St. John. But Williams had it in the bag, all wrapped up. Yeah, there we go. St. John is actually se second, and this is good for the small branches. Oh well. Gonna see. Yes, uh, Tamia Franklin of St. John coming in second, but uh, the top, Latoya Williams from St. Patrick's, 30.44. Good time. And Tamia. And the, the bigger girls are in this, well, in terms of their pedigree. Uh, look for look for St. Andrew in Panchu. There's going to be a tussle, I believe, in Panchu and Kanai in this one here. 
so the results on our screen suggest that 30.44 and uh, that's uh, Latoya Williams of St. Patrick let's go down to the lane assignments for heat number two lane two Alia Francis St. John lane three Jaden Langine St. George lane four Viva Pancho St. Andrew lane five Sierra Kojo, Kariaku, and Peter Martini. Lane 6, Geno Kanai, St. Patrick. And uh, that's uh, Camille Scott in lane 7, representing St. Mark. So the second of heat to the girls, 200 meters under 11. So look for lane four. Everybody's up, out, clean start. Bernard yeah, called it, he said lane four, lane four, lane four. that up is a Panchu. Panchu of St. Andrew. Andrew, the they're coming around the curve now. She's not in the lead up. just yet. She's got some work to do. There's a serious challenge coming Come there from Kanai. Kanai is just ahead, but here comes Panchu. Panchu is going to stretch. She's got some longer one. legs. This might just work in her favor. Now she lunges ahead. Starts to separate herself just a little bit. She's not going too far. It's going to be closer than we think. I think Panchu is beaten on the tape. I think Kanai just got her on the line, but we're going to wait for the official one on this one and see. She thought maybe she had it wrapped up, Panchu. But can I just coming in uh, at the last couple of strides? It was close all the way through. Take a look at this. Of the I, th race. I think you're we correct. The official results. But in fact, um, this and is this is on go. form right here. It's, it's the race is Panchu and Kanai. Kanai, in fact, is the divisional champion uh, from St. Patrick. So she brings a certain level degree of pedigree to this race here. Thirty point twenty nine point seven zero, twenty nine point seven seven zero. So, uh, can I, Janelle Kanai of Saint Patrick, taking out Panchu just on the line, twenty nine point seven nine. The fastest eight will advance into the finals, and that's the second of two heat in the girls two hundred meter dash on the eleven. Let's uh, continue our conversation quickly with uh, uh, Mr. Bartholomew. We were speaking about your relationship and that symbiotic relationship that you so have with uh, Nexa Credit Union. Walk us through that. So it's a wonderful relationship between GUT and Nexa. In fact, the Grenada Union of Teachers is the parent body of um, Nexa Credit Union, formerly known as the Grenada Union of Teachers Credit Union, just previously rebranded Nexa. So I think we have um, really and truly the problem that we were experiencing is that the teachers were really executing the sports, um, national primary school games, doing all the work behind the scene and everything because it's not easy. The whole entire relationship, the work that you see for the smooth execution of the games, you would wonder to know all the background work and everything that has to take place. But what was happening that GUT previously didn't really have the brand or any part to play. So we approach um, Nexa Credit Union to bring some balance into the games and we, we Nexa agreed and so now we have joint um, sponsorship of the games with GUT and Nexa coming together. That's so fantastic. Nexa is not a stranger to GUT. Fantastic. Just hold that thought right there. We're at uh, the boys under 11, 200 meter dash. Alexander, Stanis Claus, Roberts, Lillian, Jeffrey, Martin and Cobb. Ah, uh, here we go. It's early to call. Still early to call. Let's see. It looks like coming out of lane five, six. That's Jeffrey. It might just be Jeffrey. And Jeffrey is just ahead. Yeah, challenge is being mounted there. Now that looks like Roberts. Roberts will lunge forward. Roberts is fighting for his dear life. Jeffreys is right there. One and two. Yeah, that's how they're going to come through. That's... Uh, Brantley Roberts and uh, Jeffrey, I think it is. Xavier Jeffrey of St. Patrick. Let's see. St. David, actually. St. David. Uh, David. Uh, David. So it's uh, 
The athlete from St. David, that looks like Caton. Caton Lalane. So Lalane was a pretty decent time, 29.20 for Roberts and Lalane 29.36. They both stand a good chance of going through to the final eight. Dylan Alexander of St. John just been edged out 30 flat. Nine point two zero. It's a good run. Uh, well, they're moving with speed. This is, in fact, the sprint preliminaries of the boys' uh, two hundred meter under eleven. Look for so let's go to the lane assignments quickly. Lane St. George. Lane two. Zedan Alexis, Kariku, and Peter Martini. Lane three. Mikhail Rutchard St. John. Lane four, Kai Kador St. Mark. Lane five, Reagan Checkley St. Andrew. Lane six, Akedon McIntosh St. Patrick. Lane seven, Roland James St. John. Lane eight, Rowan Lessie St. David. Well, there we have it, the lane assignments. Yeah. Uh, from Clovey to Lessie. This one, I can tell you, they've got some huge names in this one. Some big names. Wayne Clovey is there. Ronan Lessie is out in lane eight from St. David. Keep your eyes on Checkley, St. Andrew. So this one is loaded yes. with young superstars. The, the race really is six and eight. Out, up. Away, McIntosh from St. Patrick. He's running out of lane six in green. Take a look at him. He comes off the curb just ahead of everybody. Uh, Lessie is there. Lessie from St. David is right on his shoulders, not too far off. But Lessie is starting to fight. But in the meantime, it looks like McIntosh. McIntosh has the edge. That's a Kadon McIntosh from St. Patrick. Surely he's going to win. There's a good challenge coming in from Lessie. Lessie doesn't challenge him to the finish line. He thinks he just wants to get through to qualify. So that's the story coming out of this one. McIntosh, Aidan McIntosh from St. Patrick. Ahead of Ronan Lessie from St. David. One and two in heat number two of the boys 200 meter under 11. And that one went true to form. In fact, we were expecting these two to be tussling right at the end. What again is quite interesting here is none of, none of the small branches in in Saint, in Saint Mark in third position. This, this is this is a good showing from Saint Mark right here. So very one, good showing. One and two would seemingly qualify almost automatically, although it's not that really. It's the fastest eight, but uh, based on what we've seen. In the previous heat, 28.60 is enough for Ronan Lessie. So one and two for sure. Um, when the final list is posted, we can tell you if Kador will be in and also Mikhail Richards from St. John should be in as well. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Checkley made it at 29.92. He just might in this. In this, this, was, this was a really fast heat compared to heat number one. My concern in this one, of course, a surprise. I was looking at Wayne Clovey from St. George. He did 30.60. Rather disappointing. I think he's much better than that, Wayne Clovey. Yeah. So um, we're back with uh, Mr. Bartholomew, Jude Bartholomew, the President General of the Grenada Union of Teachers. Uh, GUT's contribution to sports in general. You were speaking about that. Um, obviously, this is where it all starts. It starts at the primary school level. And uh, this is where all the stars are born. So uh, GUT would uh, obviously want to say, you know what, we were part of the shaping of the young Kiranis, the Anderson Peters, the Kurt Felix, the, you know, and the list can go on and on and on. Even some of those who were not Olympic level athletes, but uh, still represented Grenada well. 
Yes, and it's very a, a proud moment for the Grenada Union of Teachers. Historically, the duty, teachers, the commitment, the unshakable commitment from our members, from the Grenada Union of Teachers, from our teachers throughout the various branches, because that's just the finals and the six and seven, but really and truly branch sports and everything. You have teachers who are really coming out from not only teaching in the classroom, but the sacrifices in training the athletes. Some of the smooth execution of the races that you see there, you couldn't just happen like that for the final product. Is the teachers, you know, going to train. Most of the time, some of the schools, not all of them have a coach or they have something. So the teachers making that invaluable sacrifices. But you're talking about in branches now and the Grenada Union of Teachers digging deep the nation must know and must appreciate that um, the joint sponsorship that we have, the Grenada Union of Teachers invests over 100,000, 150,000 every year in terms of branch and um, national games. And so the money that are coming out here from the tiny Jews some more teachers. So whereas, yes, we invest in our teachers, but we also in the commitment and the sacrifice in investing in the nation's children, holistic devel development for education, for sports, for culture, for nation building. And we are very, very proud because a lot of the times currently, you know, when the athletes reach on the national stage or the world stage, sometimes the, the, the government, the Ministry of Sports and everybody, they get the fame and the glory because it's green and we are proud. But you must remember your roots. If you don't remember your roots, then the tree will die. And oh. so many times we, we fail to appreciate that the start came from the primary school level in shaping the at athletes and such and in building them. So you're not only talking about the national games, but you're talking about the CUT games and just to announce that CUT games. But just before we get to the CUT games, we're going to hold on to that. Yes, I'm agreeing with you. No root, no fruit. We're getting ready for the girls 200 meter under 15. We had the lane assignments, but we're going to run through it quickly for you here now. Uh, Dana Mark, Karaku in two. Destiny Henry, Destiny Harry, St. Andrew in three. That's uh, one of the big names Hannah Bartholomew of St. David in four, Kendra Charles of St. Patrick in five, uh, Whitney Julian of St. Mark in six, and uh, Shadell Jones of St. George in seven. Uh, that's a pretty huge one there. A couple of big names stand out, familiar names, I would say. That's um, Harry, Julian, Charles, pretty decent names. Where are you going on this one, Bernard? This one seems to be... Even Stevens, yeah. I think we're going to have a, a, a good competitive race right to the end. You're not going to give Destiny Harry the edge? She's uh, she, done pretty well she, so far in this game? She, 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 is a standard, she is a standard one here. I think, I think we'd have a bunch in afterwards. But the heat number two is, 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 a, is a big heat. Oh, she's uh, been very familiar to our screen. Yes. Destiny Harry. Uh -huh. She's uh, known for the athlete with a long stride. Beautiful stride. And, uh, who just Beautiful strides. She's been known as the athlete with a long stride who just runs barefooted. The track is hot. You can see her just uh, skipping around gently. She's trying to keep the soles of her feet off these tracks. Uh, that's uh, something to look forward to. You look around these games and you realize that a couple of the athletes, more often than not, they're not uh, fully clad, particularly in spikes. So uh, running shoes, something to look forward to. I'm just, this is athletics, but I'm just bowling what you might refer to as a leg break because I've got the president general of the GUT sitting right next to me. So I just bowled him a leg break. We'll see what kind of cricketer he was. Certainly not is. I haven't heard his name on the cricket in. Um, scenes, but uh, we'll see what kind of cricketer he once was. Just bowl him a, a leg break. See if he plays down the wrong line. 200 meter goes on the 15. Heat one. Away they go. And immediately, Harry in lane two starts to show her dominance. Look at that run. Well, she's coming off the curve already, just ahead of everybody. And here comes Harry. Harry, there's a challenge coming from Shadow Jones of St. George. And a look on the inside of Harry. This looks like Mark of Carrico and Pity Martinique. But surely, Harry's going to find her way all the way through to the finish line. She starts to separate herself even more now from the pack. And uh, Jones for St. George just catches on the line. It was close. But I don't think Jones got there in time. It wouldn't matter really because I think both of them will go through to the finals. So, Jones and uh, Harry... 
I think Harry just made it to the line. Yeah, I, I thought she, she eased up uh, with, with about 20 meters ago. Coming down the street, she was fighting, head moving in all direction. That doesn't help with the times. Got to stay straight up, focus, right, especially base. in these longer sprints. Just making it. She dipped a little bit too early. 29.43. So Destiny Harry of St. Andrew winning heat number one in the girls 200 meter under 15, 29.43. Shadow Jones of St. George coming in second, 29.50. Pretty close one there. Dana Mark of Karaku and Hannah Bartholomew surely will have to wait along with Julian and Flanders to see if they can make it. The second heat will tell the full story. Heat two. Yeah, the athletes are already on the track. We will take the lane assignments. They're going from three to seven. Girls 200 meters dash on the 15. Your lane assignment. Lane three. Angelica Street, St. David. Lane four. Desiree Matthew, Karaku and Peter Martinique. Lane five. Leah Lidlow, St. George. Lane six. Michaela Williams, St. Andrew. Lane seven. Zena Alexis, St. Patrick. Well, this one was uh, purported to be a squatcher, according to Bernard Antoine. You got four big, name, four big names in this. So you should, you should see lane three, lane five, six, and seven. Duking it out here. Away they go, up and out. Leah Ledlow for St. George. Here comes St. David. Angelica Street. Angelica Street of St. David comes off the curve ahead of everybody. And she is daylight ahead. St. Andrew will come into the picture. That's Michaela Williams. But there's no catching. There's absolutely no catching um, Street. She owned these streets. True to form right here. So she will pick up the win. Heat number two of two. Angelica Street. She's a powerful girl. Seeing a lot of promise here, Jude, for um, the, the next level, are you? Lots of promising athletes. And you're seeing the execution. You see how nicely and smoothly that they are running. But what we see from the primary school level, I think that it has to go to a higher level. And there is some sort of gap or break between the transition from the primary school level. So everybody we need, everybody besides teachers, besides the duty, besides government, ministry of sports, to see what we can do to train the athletes. How are you guys going to go about encouraging more um, corporate more corporate sponsorship to get involved and you know um, contribute right. to so the development that, of these athletes. That's what we are watching here. In fact, when you talk about the, the spikes, you, if you realize here that some of the athletes are running barefoot in the national stadium, it's not that some of the athletes they do not have spikes, but sometimes they get them so late. A few days, let's say, for example, before the National Primary School Games, they're not accustomed to running with it. So that's something also we want to work on. And we're making an appeal here for this 50th anniversary of Grenada Independence. We're looking for and asking for corporate um, um, citizens, businesses, um, community members, um, past pupils, the diaspora to adopt a school, uh, to adopt a branch. And we need about probably about 50 um, spikes in the first instance for each school. So that's where the training begins and such, you know, could sponsor the athletes from branches, from whatever it is. So we just need to take the athletes and to take the sports at a higher level. So it starts at the primary school level and yes, the GUT do its part, but we need the entire nation, all right, business, corporates and entities to support our athletes. Well said. I couldn't have said it better myself. The boys 200 meter dash on the 15 heat one. We're going at record-breaking pace here now with these uh, preliminaries and uh, the afternoon is going to be a very busy one we're just bordering at one o'clock and these games are powered by GUT and uh, Nexa with you wherever your road leads and these young chaps are on the road to something huge up out and away they're 
Omari Ahmad Amade is St. George. Is running a good uh, inside leg, but St. Andrew on the outside. That looks like Rondell Williams. But uh, yeah, it looks like Amede. Amede from St. George. He's looking over his shoulder. The challenge now comes from Williams. Surely Williams will lunge ahead. Williams will lunge ahead. Amede will come in second. And uh, a good run from uh, Rondell Williams out in lane eight. It's never easy to run one of these sprints on the curve outside there in lane eight. But Williams was able to get to the finish line. A strong young man is he. I do believe that he, if he does in fact get an inner lane, Williams, he can be a force to be reckoned with. His form needs a little work, but uh, not very much. Rondell Williams of St. Andrew, 26.77. And again, it's, it's nice to see the smaller schools down in Caracou and St. John. Uh, pretty good time. They, they, they should, they sh Caracou should be in the finals in this one. Mm, maybe... Too fast, too soon. Let's wait and see what this heat will will bring forward. Running from lane through to seven again in this one. Let's see what the house announcer has for us. He's got the lane assignments. For lane assignments. Boys 200 meters dash on the 15, hit two. Lane two, Tristan Wellington, St. Patrick. Lane three, Nequan Roberts, Carrick went Pete Martinique. Lane four, Job Hines, St. George. Lane five, Stanley Thomas, St. David. Lane seven, Nathaniel Richardson, St. Andrew. So, Nathaniel Richardson out in lane seven. And Tristan Wellington of St. Patrick in lane two, in and between them. Naquan Roberts of Caraco and Pity Martinique, Job Hines of St. George, Stanley Thomas of St. David, and Keston Murray of St. John. Heat number two, and the boys 200 meter under 15. This might be a close, this might be a close one. Well, it looks like Hines. It, it, it's either Hines or Murray. Hines or Murray. Murray is in eight. Hines is in four. Hines or Murray. Or is the upset going to come from somewhere else? Hines or Murray. Surely Murray looks to lunge ahead now. So Murray has got the edge on him. A little bit more than an edge even. And Hines will just uh, make it to the finish line. So uh, Murray. No, Richardson, sorry. Richardson. Not Murray. Richardson. They've got the lane assignments mixed up on the monitor. So that's Nathaniel Richardson of St. Andrew. Nathaniel Richardson of St. Andrew. And uh, Hines. Nowhere in the picture. The Tristan Wellington of St. Patrick. Well, now they're changing it. All sorts of uh, in and out and up and down they're doing on the scoreboard. So... We're going to have to just wait. What is clear though is that in the under 15 boys, the winners in both heats, St. Andrew. Yeah, so Nathaniel Richardson, St. Andrew, 27.21. Now they fix it. They've given us the final one. Job Hines of St. George, 28.37. And the Tristan Wellington, St. Patrick, 28.45. It might just be enough for him and uh, Naquan Roberts. Caracou and Pity Martinique, 28-4-8. That's the massive scoreboard there. It gives us all the details. A nice picturesque view of where I would want to take my next three days rest. 
cruise ship in the background. I would love to rest there for three days, three days and then come back for the Intercore Games. Nice, decent crowd building up here, Bartholomew. Yeah, building up nicely. I mean, when you look at the National, the Athletic Stadium, the kaleidoscope of colors, I mean, you look at the, as I said, the, the choreography of the whole thing, the, the ambience, the atmosphere, and you can see that the spectators, the spectators and the crowds, they are in it, they are enjoying the games. So it's a well good package here today, yesterday and today, and the final day today. And I could tell you, you watch the crowd and you could see that the spectators, they are involved, they are in jubilation, it's excitement, is that from every branch that you have um, persons here and they're lending their support and they are doing it nicely. So you see the entire nation, even persons who are not here at the National Stadium, I mean online, when you get the feedback and you see what is happening, persons are involved. So the entire nation here is supporting the National Primary School Games and that's where it starts. Awesome. Absolutely fantastic. Now we're going to get ready for the 400, but just before we start that, because they're coming around with the starting blocks, um, talk to us about what's the, the next move for the GUT on this one. You're the President General. I'm quite sure you've got your hands filled. Yes, we have quite a lot. And as I said, it mentioned the CUT Games. That's the Caribbean Union of Teachers. is a higher level, so you have the National Primary School Games and then you have the entire region now with primary schools with the various units. So in 2026, that the Grenada Union of Teachers has accepted that responsibility of hosting the CUT Games in, in um, Grenada. And all the other units are looking forward to come to Grenada in 2026. They accept that Grenada is really and truly the sports hub. There will be the new um, athletic stadium and everything. We have not yet officially informed the Ministry of Sports, Ministry of Education, and the government of Grenada. And, and we're going to do so um, soon. But we prepared the entire nation, schools, the GUT, and all throughout the region. 2026, the CUT Games will be right here. Well, they're always monitoring our feed here, so I think now yes. for sure they are informed. Yes. And I just would like to say quickly, really, I mean, truly, it's a proud moment for GUT and Nexa, really coming together, parent and child, and it's an honor and a pleasure. And Nexa, the cooperation behind the scene, not only the sponsorship from Nexa and GUT, but everybody working together. And I just want to put on record my thanks and deepest appreciation to the persons from GUT who have been working hard behind the scene. You have the logistic committee, you have the chairman of the sports committee, the sports committee, the national executive, you have branches, presidents, everybody coming together, together with Nexa um, staff and behind the scene, working on those things day and night. It is not easy to put on a game like that, but the cooperation and GUT digging deep, all the commitment from all teachers and the Grenada Union of Teachers for the holistic development of our, of our, our young people with sports education is unquestionable in Grenada. I just want to thank you and put that on the record. Well, I want to thank you, and I want to go on record saying that uh, some the information that we've had prior to these games, the information that would have aided us in our preparation, we've had a whole lot of that. Uh, it has been consistent, and um, I give a lot of credit to a couple of the folks who are working along. You know, I said to them, you guys need to share the booklet with a whole lot of people, and I'm not going to call names, but I think they need to share the booklet with a whole lot of people. Not just one page, but the booklet. That's how we do it at the Grenada Union of Teachers. We lead, others follow. All right. Well, thank you very much, Jude Bartholomew. Also, just before you run off, we'd like to remind people that the 62nd Annual Conference, uh, formal opening ceremony of the Grenada Union of Teachers, that takes place on March 26th. The guest speaker, Brian Charles, and uh, the St. Joseph's Catholic School in St. David. And that will be will at be Pomeroy's. Venue. That will be at Pomeroy's, St. David's. Okay. So Promrose, I've had a bad experience in Promrose uh, with a friend of mine. He, every time I give him a story, he laughs at me. And I wouldn't <laughs> say it on air, but uh, it, it was a frightening experience for me. But I'm sure that this conference will be a very good experience. I'm quite sure it and will I'm be. And I'm sure that your communication network will be there. I'm quite sure we will be. And even if I'm there, I would not travel up there on a motorbike. And I think that was my, my fear at that time. It at was that on a time. motorbike. Yes. Yes. Uh, since then, I've uh, found myself in the luxury of 
enclosed safer vehicles and i'm going to live with that well thank you very much for that and we ask the entire nation to rally and to support the grenada union of teachers and nexa credit union and the athletes of grenada at the primary school level and let's take sports and culture education at a higher level for nation building on this 50th anniversary and to thank the government of grenada it's really nice to see the lane of new tracks here and the athletes and everybody's enjoying it sports could only go at a higher level and we're going forward together Thank you very much, Jude Bartholomew. And as he's going to walk away from our commentary area, we've got the 400 meters getting ready to get in on the action. We're going to have the point standings in just a little while. But uh, just before we do all of that, I just want to remind you, we've got some commerce. We've got some bills to pay. The Grenada Union of Teachers to unite, represent, and empower members of the teaching profession of the nation. And Nexa Credit Union with you wherever you're road leads. Let's pay some bills. For when you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never live. Come on, take my hands, we got everything we need. Because you can look to me yes, I can. whenever you're in need. Yes, you can. Just call on me and I'll be Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. A pair refers to another member or account holder at Nexa Credit Union who is registered on the mobile app. Members can pay their pairs by using Pay a Pair. In order to pay a pair, members must set up a pair first. To pay a pair, you have to do the following. Create your mobile ID and add a pair. Tap on Manage, tap on Add Pair. To set or update the mobile ID, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Settings under Account Settings. Then select Personal Settings. Go to Mobile ID and select Edit. For first time setup, only enter your desired mobile ID in the New Mobile ID text box. For changes to the existing mobile IDs, Enter the current mobile ID in use, then enter the new desired mobile ID in the text boxes. You can either make a one-time peer-to-peer transfer or schedule regular recurring payments. To add a pair, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments, then Manage Pays. Under Pairs, click Add. Enter a nickname of choice for the pair you wish to add. Enter the six-digit account number of the pair you wish to add, followed by dash 10, dash 0. Enter your mobile ID. Enter your pair's mobile ID. Enter a transaction reference of your choice. Click Next and review the details before submitting. To do a pair-to-pair -pair transfer, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments then make a payment or pay a pair. Click Select Pay and on the pairs, choose the pair you wish to transfer money to. Click Select Account and choose which account you wish to transfer from. Enter the amount you wish to transfer. Ensure a transaction reference is entered. You can use the Schedule Payment option by selecting the date of the transfer and arrange for recurring payments by assigning a frequency. Click Review and ensure the information is accurate before submitting. For further queries or assistance, contact us via WhatsApp at 473-405-4061 or email eServices at nexacreditunion.com. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. All right, so we are set for the 400 meters, 400 meter under 15. 
And so we're going to bring that to you, but um, we're definitely having, you know, quite a good time here at the National Stadium, the Karani James Athletic Stadium. Crowd has built up really nicely. I'm seeing quite a few persons on the outside trying to get in. Uh, so far, the stands seem to be filled. And so definitely, um, these kids, they have a nice atmosphere in which they can compete later on, especially being in the finals of, of some of the, these preliminary events that are, has already gone. So we're gonna gonna be seeing the 400 meter on the 13 girls. The girls are up first, and so heat one will give you. So we can go track side for the leads. Darcel Barry, Saint Patrick. Lane three, Kimaya Scott, St. Mark. Lane four, Makaya George, St. George. Lane five, Teresa Fraser, St. Andrew. Lane six, Shukanda Paul, St. David. Lane seven, Donika Stanley, St. John. Lane eight, Kenaya St. Paul, Kariku, and Peter Marchney. So that was your lane assignment. And uh, again, this one might be pretty early to call. Yeah, it's, it's on paper. It it's, should be a, an even run race among the competitors here. There's no standard time that we have on paper here. So let's see what let's see what comes through. So it's in Patrick in lane two, in lane three is Scott, and lane four is George from St. George. Fraser is in St. from St. Andrews in lane five. Paul, St. David in six. Danica Stanley is in lane seven in St. John. And Sky Patrick is in It's the 400 meters girls on the 13. And they're off. One lap around the track. St. Andrews seem to be making up ground. St. George is there. But Kariku, Kariku looking good on the outside. And, uh, bring your attention to the middle of the track. St. George making a run for it at this time. St. St. Andrew is going with her. St. Patrick is there, St. David, they're, they're all bunched nicely together. But St. George seemed to be ahead. Coming around with just about 150 to go. And here comes St. Andrew. It is St. Andrew. It is Fraser from St. Andrew. She has uh, stepped on the gas. And there she goes, pouring away. Fraser from St. Andrew has this one in the bag. And there it is. She's just looking to close it off. Good hard run there by Fraser. And you have Paul from St. David coming in second. A really wonderful run there from Fraser from St. Andrew. Paced herself nicely. And showed that just around the 150 meter mark, she stepped on the gas, and there was no way that anyone else could have caught her. Absolutely. Good spirited run there from Teresa Fraser from St. Andrew. She had some more in the tank. And, and, and in second place is Shaquanda Paul from St. David. I see the times for T. Risa Fraser. It's one minute, three, zero, three point three three seconds. Three point three three seconds. And Paul, 
one minute, 6.19 seconds. So the winner in heat number one is Teresa Fraser from St. Andrew Good Spirited Run. And she did it rather easily. I think she have a lot. Yeah, she did it pretty easily. Really set up that race nicely, did um, Fraser. And uh, you saw it as she came off the bend. Just about 150, she was able to just really set apart herself from the others you know and that that meant that she was out there on her own and so an excellent excellent race by freezer there seems to be a good um she had a strategy she did not let the athlete besides her who were ahead of her and seems to be doing well um, disrupt the plan that she had and this is how you run the 400 meters it's a it's, it really should be a runner with a planner Okay, it's one of those really, really tough races. It's speed and, and it's endurance. So we it's go track side. Lane five. Renick Cyrus St. George. Renika Cyrus St. George. Lane six. Sky Patrick St. Mark. Lane seven. Ikona. Francis Kariku and Pitton Martini. Lane eight, Jemaya John St. John. Uh, there you have it. Um, heat number two off two. Hosford, lane two, Modest in lane three, Sylvan in lane four, Charles in five, Terrell in six. She's representing St. Andrew. Francis, seven, representing Carrico and Peter Madney, John, that's Jamaya John, representing St. John. Well, again, the name to look out for, or the names to look out for, you can look out for Terrell of St. Andrew, John, St. John, Hosford of St. David, and you also have Charles from St. George, can't leave out Sylvan, so I think it's a really competitive um, field. It's going to go down to execution. Race management, yes. Looking at these names, these names have been names that uh, we've seen over the, 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 the day and a half so far, and so definitely you want to keep your eyes on the track. Strategy will be the bottom line. And they're off. It's the girls on the 13, 400 meter. Out front, St. John from St. John is out pretty quickly. St. Mark doing well to make up the stagger on Carrie Koo. Hosford is there in, in lane two. It's just about approaching the 200 meter mark it's john from st john's carrick is there but now here comes st andrew here comes st david what is the strategy who would bowl first it's st john out front but on the inside it is st andrew it is st david it's about who has the strength to power home now let's see what happens st john john from st john seemed to be all spent but it's in the middle of the track it's Hosford it's it is St. Andrew in Modest Modest pushing ahead here comes St. here comes John from St. John again has just what it takes so she died down but she did what she had to do to fall into the second position Hosford from St. David coming in third as I said earlier it is the race of strategy and definitely Modest did what she had to do in terms of her strategy to ensure that she came in in the first position. Yes, it's, it's, it's came down to execution at the end. And a good spirited run again from the athlete from St. Andrew. We'll be interested in the times. Thank you. 
So Killian Modest from St. Andrew, 1 minute 6.26 seconds. So 66.26. Six, pretty decent, but the hit one seemed to have been a bit faster. Yes, heat one was in fact a, quite a lot faster. It's one minute three point three three seconds. And we are down to the boys' version of this now. It's the, it's the boys' 400 meter run under 13. And the 400 meter really big event at any sport meet that you go to and um, at this age group the under 13s um, generally you, you you get a feel as to the athletes who do well at this stage they tend to go on we're going to take the lane assignments Devonta Jones St. David lane 2 Ackelbreg St. George lane 3 Omari Brown St. Andrew lane 4 Jawani Noel St. Patrick, Lynn 5, Giovanni Taverni St. Mark, Giovanni Tavernier St. Mark, Lynn 6, Aquil Kumabach St. John, and Lynn 7, John and Joseph Cariku and Pitted Martinique. What you would notice here is that a number of these athletes here would have run, thrown, Jump, participated in everything, and oh, go no back man. to what we talked about earlier. Let's go track side. They're about to start. Yeah. And they're off. 400 meter under 13 boys. Let's see who bolts first. It seemed to be Carrie Koo. Uh, in the middle of the pack, St. Patrick has made up the saga on St. Mark. It is Carrick Ward front. St. John, St. Patrick making a move. St. Andrew is there. St. Andrews is coming. But it's all St. Patrick. He's ahead at this stage. Here comes St. Andrew. It is Noel. Noel of St. Patrick. He's ahead, doing really well coming off the bend, and he's still ahead. And here comes the challenge from St. Andrew. What does Noel have? It's Noel, it's Brown. But Noel seems to be the strong of the two athletes here. Really push, pulling away from Brown, and he has a comfortable win right there. So it's St. Patrick in Noel, followed by Brown of St. Andrew. So that's seat one completed. Again, we look at him just coming there. Seemed to be easing down quite early, not really pushing himself. Not really pushing. He seems to have everything sorted out. And looking good for the final later is Noel from St. Patrick. So there you have it, the official results on your screen. Giovanni Noel, St. Patrick, time of 62.98 60, seconds. Second, Omari Brown, St. Andrew. Aquil Cumberbatch of St. John, bringing up the third position. And Giovanni Tavernier of St. Mark. We're about to see heat two. This is heat two of two. And 
Let's go track side. Let's get the lane assignments. Number 13, boys. Hit number two. Your lane assignment. Lane one, Aaron Roberts, St. David. Lane two, Dishon Oliver, St. Patrick. Lane three, Levi Richer, St. Mark. Lane four, Keishon Williams, Kariku and Peter Martinik. Lane five, Cameron Bonaparte, St. George. Lane six, John Callis, St. Andrew. Lane seven, Jaquan Knights, St. John. And so there you had it, the lane assignments for Heat 2 of the boys, 400 meter under 13. On your mark. Gonna be interesting. It's a race of strategy and speed. And they're off. Heat number two. Let's see who gets out. It seems to be St. John. St. John is gone. He is gone. But here comes St. Patrick. St. David is there. Uh, St. Andrew seemed to be uh, just trotting along. No haste. Uh, but St. John is gone. Here comes St. Andrew. St. Patrick is there. St. Mark is there. St. George is there. St. David making up quite a bit of ground just about the 200 meter mark it's still st john it is st john here comes st andrew st andrew making a move st patrick making a move look on the inside it is st david who will come off the curve in a, in a really powerful position but st patrick st patrick has taken the lead and there he goes he's sprinting away really good strong run there from the athlete from st patrick that is the sean oliver I think you've heard the name quite a bit for the day. It's Deshaun Oliver, St. Patrick. Wonderful run there from Oliver. Doing exactly what he knows to do. Pretty good athlete in the making there for St. Patrick. And, and you may just look forward to him maybe going on and representing maybe Grenada later down. There it is. Deshaun Oliver coming home. Seemed to be a bit tired. But has put all that he needed to put to ensure that he crosses this line first. And so there you had it. The boys, 400 meter heat two. Deshaun Oliver, 61.60 seconds. And second, John Calis. Of St. Andrew and Roberts of St. David coming in third. So, definitely later on, it's going to be interesting. We've seen the potential for a few of these athletes to really excel. So, I have with me in the commentary booth Sherry Ann Noel and she has a special guest with her and um, I'm going to give you the name of the special guest um, and he is none other than one of the most important men uh, in terms of what you have seen here today um, track wise and everything and I want to introduce the coordinator of sports from the Ministry of Sports, Mr. Colin Peters. Good afternoon, sir. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you for having me here. Well, it is indeed a pleasure to sit here and to have this particular conversation at this time with the coordinator of sports, uh, Colin Peters. Uh, for most people know that Colin is a, uh, if I can say, I, I'm not sure if I can should say former athlete, but he is a sports <laughs> enthusiast. 
and he knows for himself that in order to have the athletes perform at the optimum, you have to create the right environment, the right conditions. Yeah. And we've heard all the complaints about the condition of the tracks, the state of this, the state of that, although Spikes is always one of the every year it comes like a recurring decimal why are the children running bare feet and so but a significant investment has been made by the government um through the ministry of sports um colon first uh your views on what you're seeing in terms of performance and you know the response that you're getting in terms of the bunks of the track we do know there was a previous uh, sporting activity held here prior to these two days of exciting athletics um here at the kirani james national stadium athletic stadium sorry so just give us your overall, you know, view on the conditions, you know, how you feel about it in terms of the responses and so. Okay, thank you very much. I must say, um, let's start with what I've seen so far with the, uh, yesterday and today with, uh, with the competition and this going this with the, the, the schools at that age, you know, the parish competition, you know, I must say that we see the talent there, that the this, this sport look good. This is the age group. We, if you look at a long-term development plan, you will see that is the, um, the learning to train age group. You know, not even some of them may reach learning to compete. But if you have seen some of the athletes here today in, and yesterday in the 100 meters, in the choose, in the 400 meters, we can see the potential. You know, I watch them and I smile. I say, that's a good batch to start up your program with as a young coach. You know, you run your two-year um, training program with them and we have a good, we have, we have a good, we have a good sets of persons to, 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 to get and to work with for the future of sports. Um, I must congratulate UT on, and the organizer um, for the two days. I think that you in all product you look at growth and expansion and that is, the, that is growth. Yeah? Um, before you know it, it was one day and they tried to do all the events, came previously for the hits. But introducing the athletes at that age where, as I mentioned in the um, learning to train and learning to compete age group, um, how to compete for two days, you know, go home and rest and come back, and how to run from the hits to the final is a is a plus for our sport. It showed that track and field not only at a at a high in Grenada, it showed that the, the developmental program is working. Um, we have seen the outstanding performance from St. Andrew, um, St. Patrick, St. St. George, and I must say that looking at it, it's really really good. It shows that um, one this morning was mentioning them, um, but St. Andrew is going to win everything. And I was wondering why it is chopped out sports within the parish. And I'm an old St. Andrews man, and I must say that from the one, the structure of sports and the competitiveness among the primary schools are very key, which lead up to, to their performing extremely good here. When you go to the St. Andrews branch sports and you watch mm -hmm. a, a paraclete and you watch the batter pass in and exchange, and you watch them come up with the start, you must Colin, listen, if, yeah. if I can in interject you here a bit as, as you speak to the performances from the athletes of um, St. Andrew, mm -hmm. one of the, the suggestions or concerns that normally come up every year when you come to a national prim um, primary school game is we say kudos to Nexa this year, it's mm -hmm. Nexa GUT. Um, you look at the numbers in terms of athletes and in comparison, the number of primary schools in St. Andrew as opposed to St. David, St. Patrick, St. Mark, and St. John. We have Karaku and Piti Martini combined. Um, any thoughts being given to put St. Mark and St. John together as well? And I, I know we say that's parish school, but it's a national primary school games. <laughs> and if you can combine Karaku and Piti Martini, because if my memory serves me right, I think there is only one primary school in St. Mark, so they're, they're coming in already at a disadvantage. Okay, but if you look at it and you look at population and size, you will see that Hurricane win football for many years. And well. if you see that the smallest parish and thing, it shows that you're... Once you're training, there is no secret in training, mm -hmm. you know, and I've heard that. But the numbers. That the numbers is important, but the key day is training and organizing, okay. having a structured, organized program, you know. So once you organize that program properly, um, you, will, you will be successful, yeah. Okay. But Sherry, and it seems I have to leave you now. I will okay. come back because I okay. someone is calling me at the door. All right. Well, viewers, we, we will um, continue this, this conversation with uh, with Colin Peters. He is the coordinator of sports and he undoubtedly has a lot of information as it relates. You see how important he is. He had to run out in the middle of the interview. Um, uh, I think what we're seeing on the track now is preparation for a special, we say special education, special education event. And it's always good to ha include them in whatever you're doing to make them feel a part. These children are special and they're normally very happy 
to showcase their talent and their skill. And I would tell you, keep your eyes glued on the screen because when that race is completed, just look at the reaction at the end. Rondell? Yeah, definitely. Um, it's, uh, it's all about inclusion. And this is something that, um, you know, the world over, you, you, you're going to hear it. You're going to keep hearing it. Um, being able to include persons with different abilities, different needs, you know, into the, the holistic scheme of things. And so definitely, um, these gentlemen... See the smile on the face? <laughs> getting so their time to shine, Sherry. Very much so. And they are off. There we go. There we go. I Look at told him. you to pay attention to the facial expression. Really, really solid runner. I looked at his, his, his turnover there, the leg See turnover. That? It's pretty quick. Okay, so that was the special education um, exhibition race. Um, uh, you've been a teacher, coach, sports enthusiast for, for a number of years. Um, your observation on the performances of the athletes over the past two days. I know even though you are here doing commentary, you are actually picking up certain things that you would have to you know, work on when you get back into the classroom in terms of your sports program and stuff. So, so far... Yeah, so far, I think um, it's really encouraging. I, I must say that you look at some of the students as they, they run, you know, and you, you get a feel as to what they need to do in terms of the, the, the speed of their movement. You look at their coordination. Um, I saw quite a few of them, you know, the hands being across the body, you know, that tends to slow them down than if they get the hands so going technique. back and forth. So you can refine a lot of the techniques to get these kids to, to, to really move faster. Um, it, at this stage, it, it may be a bit difficult, um, but coaches have to remember the patience, especially this is the first level, you know, and you want to make sure that they, you work with them in a patient manner, that they would love to compete, they would love to, you know, want to move to that next level. Um, in a few years' time, definitely we will see some of these athletes moving forward. And so it, it's, it says a lot for athletics in Grenada. Um, trust me, I look at the, the, the competition so far, and I'm really happy. I look at the high jump, which is something that, you know, we have not had our kids at the primary school level exposed so much to it. But this year, especially in St. David's, I can tell you, we, we, we just ran through a quick... We didn't spend much time with them. Okay. But the results that you got from them... You know, you, you can tell that given the right training and the right um, atmosphere to, to blossom, they would blossom into some really good outstanding high jumpers. So would you say that events like these, these national games, are of significant importance for coaches in terms of observing weaknesses and strengths, not only within the athletes, but within the others, because I, I am not sure if, if there is a, a coaches association where you all sit and, and discuss and try to find ways of improving, or even though when the coaches that are attached to the, the Ministry of Sports, when you have your in-house meetings and so that you all can look at, so you know, okay, I've observed the St. Patrick's athletes running this way, they're throwing this way, they're jumping that way, and you think that is not the best practice. Um, is it that this is the right platform to look and pull these sort of information to do postmortems to help and so? Yeah, I think this um, sports meet presents that the ideal opportunity for that type of work to be done. Um, you heard Mr. Um, Peters mention the learn to train, mm -hmm. right? So this is the stage where they are. They, they're not really good at it yet, but they would learn. This is the period where you try to teach them and, and correct some of these things that you're seeing. So it's meets like these that are very okay. important to get okay. that done. Okay. So I'm seeing the reason why Mr. Peters had to leave us. He, he has to do the honors of presenting medals at the time. So I think we're going to go over to the, the guys that is uh, capturing that particular moment so that you can feel proud of yourself. Those of you at home, those of you viewing from the diaspora when you see a family you know, just just being happy overall for the children for the effort because Metal it is presentation not an easy task. For event number twenty nine, the boys cricket ball through under thirteen. Your bronze medalist, a distance of fifty three point eight zero meters, 
representing St. George, Ghana Phillip. Your silver medalist, a distance of 59.26 meters, representing St. Patrick, Zaim Hostin. And your gold medalist, a distance of 62.18 meters, representing St. Patrick, Deshaun Oliver. These are your medalists for event 29, the boys' cricket ball throw under 13. Medal presentation for event number 42, the girls' long jump under 9. Your bronze medalist, a distance of 3.05 meters, representing St. David, Zara Matthew. Your silver medalist, a distance of 3.15 meters, representing St. Andrew, Zarina Noel. And your gold medalist, a distance of 3.29 meters, representing St. Andrew, Sarah Modest. These are your medalists for event number 42, the girls' long jump under nine. Medal presentation for event number 56, the girls' javelin throw under 15. Your bronze medalist, a distance of 19.48 meters, representing St. Patrick, Kendra Flanders. Your silver medalist, a distance of 21.38 meters, representing St. David, Stevona Swan. And your gold medalist, a distance of 27.03 meters, representing St. Andrew, Destiny Harry. These are your medalists for event 56, the girls javelin throw under 15. We say a special thank you to Mr. Colin Peters, coordinator of sport in the Ministry of Sport. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together and congratulate all of our athletes on their performances today. This is the 2024 NEXA GUT National Primary School Championships. Just witness the completion of another round of medals being presented to the winners in a number of events, most of which were field events. And I just would turn back over now to my co-commentator who will give you a rundown as to what's next to come. Okay, so we have one event to be completed before the afternoon session begins. And that is the boys cricket ball throw. I think that this is the event on schedule to be completed. And once we have that, then we'll have uh, the afternoon session, which is scheduled to begin at about 2 p.m. And so the intermission will happen. There will be a short intermission. Okay. And then the afternoon session will begin. Um, the events to come, the boys long jump on the nine. You'll find that in the afternoon session, the girls cricket ball throw on the 11, the boys discus throw on the 15, the girls 800 meter open run, the boys 800 meter open run, the 80 meter dash on the nine, and all of these would be finals. Mm -hmm. And so we look forward to, you know, a number of finals, the, the 100 finals will come up, the high jump, on the 15 girls final, the boys long jump final on the 13. Then you have the 80 meter dash on the seven boys and girls. So again, you, you saw the qualification and we're looking forward to the final who will 
receive the medals. So quite a few events. Don't forget, we still have the, the 4x1 under 15, the 4x1 under 11. And we're going to close the evening with the 4x4 open, both male and female. So a lot in store, a lot of excitement to come. Uh, definitely, you don't want to miss anything. Okay, and what I am observing, right, normally I think the other side is where we call the secondary stand, eh, Colin? And I'm already seeing patrons being allowed to enter the secondary stand. Oftentimes, that side is for athletes. So that is an indication to let you know that so far, um, the attendance has been very good on um, day two. And as you can see on the screens, the little ones, oh, a nice kiss just sent across there. They are enjoying the, the athletics meet. And we are rejoined now by the coordinator of sports, Colin Peters. Colin, prior to your uh, departure to present the medals, we were speaking to the significance and so. And as, as I asked um, my co-host here, who is attached to one of the primary schools in St. David, based on what's happening here today, um, would we say that this is one of the areas where you as the coordinator of sports and other senior officials within the ministry will you know, conduct a post-mortem after because sometimes you, you may see certain techniques and, and, and practices that are not necessarily correct in which, you know, you would be able to share with the other coaches as to some of the observations as to what, what was done wrong, what was done right, and what can be done to improve. Well, basically, when you, when you look at the sports at that age um, group um, and you look at the different parish, you may show where we have maybe a deficiency in maybe the coaching um, personnel uh, in, different pa in, different in, in the parish, yeah? because um, if you, we try to do, because one of the parish mentioned that they need some, we need to do some workshop, and that will, will start um, early, be, by, by June before, before the season, because track of the season, if you really start there, you want to start um, during the, the August vacation, and you want to start okay. during September, so you must look at it. Um, in the choose, but we have seen some area where we need to give support. Um, maybe we, even GA to to club structure to help with, with the Saint Marks, um, the Saint Johns, uh, you know, um, Kariku and Pity Martinic. So we may need to, we track and feel in particular. We're talking about we need to do some more workshop in the areas, maybe with the PE teachers, to to help you know develop some of the the knowledge are required at that age group to, to assist the athlete. But our club structure will take a um, a great role there too. Because you identify some of the athletes here that need to continue, the students that need to continue. So from next week, we will start getting them into a program. You know, we we'll prepare okay. maybe for with centers games or something, a structural program. You know, with basic introduction to what you are seeing here. So you will take note, because I know before, you know, in GBSS we, or even in the other schools, we will, they will come here to select athletes and say, well, I want you to come to SAS or I want you to come to Anakin High. Come and High. scout. You come and scout. You know, for the potential. But as I was saying before, if it shows growth in the sport with the two days, and it shows that our athletes are improving, and the like for track and field is there. If you look at the crowd support yesterday and today, you know, I was worried about how the kids from you know, the other parish when they reach up, how they're recovering for this morning. I too, I too <laughs> had that I'm concerned because I'm looking at, at the little tiny mites and I'm saying, wow, to leave here after eight, get yeah. up to St. Andrews, St. Patrick, St. Mark, St. David, and then be back here again for around eight in the morning. But, yeah, but some of them, them got here before me. And they're running much faster today, <laughs> if you look at it. You know, I look at one of the girls in the under 13 and the under 12. And I know she ran hard yesterday, and you, and you see her today, and she was able to, to perform at that. So it's, sometimes we look at it and the, we forget the, the adaptability of human beings to, to, to certain things. And, you know, we, so the issues go to the sport, um, and it shows that we are doing. We definitely have to uh, assist in the human resource factor. Maybe the coaches that we try to send PE teachers to school. Um, right now, we are, they are going around with the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Sports have a team that we are assessing the whole program to make recommendation. So the objective basically that all schools should have a PE teacher and other coaching support that to help with the athletes in all sports. So that because that is the foundation of it. It could be from cricket, football, netball, that's the introduction stage, that's the learning to learn stage. And we go on from there, yeah. Whose responsibility would you say it is um, in terms of launching a spike program? So that, you know, the children can learn from an early age how to run in spikes. Because one of the youngsters uh, told me downstairs that he has a spikes, yeah, yeah. but he can't run in the spikes. 
it's you see sometimes they get this spice later. Um I could remember once um and you also initiative, you know, you could be the parish, you could be teachers, you could be parents, eh? we could take it up as a national, you know, ask mm -hmm. our persons out in the diaspora. If you have donated spites, you know, to a particular school, we could ask the past people association in your school to donate a spite. Because you must you don't must have a lot, you know. Sometimes you just need ten or five because mm -hmm. the person and resource shows, but then at your home, you, you know, as a parent, you have to make the investment. You know, because if my son or daughter is running, she have to have a spite, you know, and right. then you allow them to train with it. You know, but we could go out and have a program that we could through the ministry, um, to you know, bodies where we ask us to assist us and support for spites. And I know a lot of them will do that. You know, we could, we are trying it in footballs and in cricket and things. So we could, we could definitely for, um, look at that for, for next season. And that wait until the competition season and give them the spites so that they could, you know, when you identify them here and you select them and say, this is, we should be able to make sure that they got a spite available to them to continue to train. Okay, and we, we do have some excellent athletes uh, uh, as well who are a bit challenged. Um, from the Ministry of Sports, any, any, any program in place to actually help these athletes? But what we are ruling enough now, we are ruling the sports policy and the policy of sports and physical activity. And we are preparing to go out now to, do an, to, to prepare for election of, of parish councils. And one of the structures that will be there is to give support to development and grassroots program within the parish. So they will pick up some of right. the, the persons there instead of you know, a holistic thing only, you know. So in the parish, maybe a parish council could assist and say, well, um, with this, this, we have identified this talent and he, he, he chat maybe with school support, right. maybe with um, lunch, you know. So we have a program, so that will come to that structural program. So that is something that will happen. One of most of the schools, that they are assisting them and reaching out to them. But we don't want it to be done only through track and field season. We want it to do to be giving them the support year round, you know, so um, it must be a national effort in that, in that extent. I think this is, it's a, it's a, a brilliant idea. I, I do hope that everything rolls out into fruition. I know that a lot of consultations were held in the yeah. past as it relates to the, the sports policy and so, so we, we wait. And we hope that everything is executed in yeah. time so that, you know, at the end of the day, sports wins. Um, I know we had a, an event on going on the field. I am not sure if it's on still or, I see they are preparing now. Uh, the okay. javelin is on. Um, okay. Don't get it for the end. So the javelin is on. Um, it's, uh, yeah. So viewers, we will endeavor to get you an update on that. But um, Colin, any final thing, words you, you'd like to throw out there? I know we have other disciplines coming up. We know today all kudos is for Nexa and GT, but I know we still have other sporting events yeah, coming along that, that next week, we, we need know? to encourage you know, yeah. our sporting patrons to, to actually be a part of. Come out, come out and support. You know, we are supposed next week again. I think it's Wednesday, um, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, as we prepare to carry off the games, um, we come out and support the athletes. So the athletes getting ready. Um, you know, it's very uh, I'm excited to see and had wanted to see the crowd. And mm -hmm. the parents that come out to support. You know, we're asking it to come out next week for the next few days. Um, and let's give the support. As you have seen, we have a, a new res resurface track. Mm -hmm. um, and by next week, you will see the... the, the um, the company back again to do the, the warm-up area. Um, the assault is done. We got to get a curing period um, as we prepare. And so far, we have been using um, the cricket stadium as the warm-up. So next week, that will happen and be used also. And um, as the if you look at the whole layoff of the of the of the track with the all the different areas, um, I know that the GA using it to to as training for the persons okay. for character. You use the same setup. Uh, for the next two, for next week, um, and we're looking forward to track and field growing, as we're trying to put in not only track and field, and we're trying to work with all we preparing our team, our netball team, for the GNP tournament um, next month. Um, so they are the defending champion. That's the under 16 tournament basketball um, netball, netball tournament. Yeah. Um, so we're giving all the support. We had the volleyball, beach volleyball players back that were successful, and we must congratulate the two ladies. Um, so sports is definitely on a high as we try to structure it to the sports policy. And through the, you know, through the election of members, so we're asking persons of clubs, schools, sports organizations, um, come out and, and give you your, your so support to the parish by making yourself available um, to contribute to the growth of sports within your parish and foundation building. 
Well, we do say thank you so much, viewers. That was our coordinator of sports, Colin Peters, sharing a moment here with us. Um, we, we thank him very much for the information that he has shared. And also, we use this opportunity again to say thank you to Corporate Grenada. Thank you to Nexa and Duty, because we do know this may have been one of the biggest platforms for the athletes from our parishes in terms of display their Grenadians are very patriotic, especially in the diaspora. So I know that they welcome this. And this is only possible through the, uh, the assistance or the investment from Corporate Grenada. So we say thanks to Nexa and GUT. I am going to turn over again to my co-host. And he will be joined momentarily by Jason Skeet and Mr. Bernard Antoine. And as per usual, I will fit myself back down on the field. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Sherry. And uh, you're not missing anything much. We, all, we have that one event to, to be completed, which is the cricket ball throw. And uh, once this is completed, the, the, we will take a break for the afternoon session um, where the kids, you know, you give them a rest period where they can recuperate. Uh, uh, persons may not understand that, you know, it takes a lot for you to come out and run on these um track and and make sure that you you know you perform they have to be rested they have to recover and so it's important and so we're gonna go to a break at this time uh we have some bills we're gonna pay and then we come back see you shortly on the other side kick things up again with a nexa credit union cruise control vehicle loan and begin your journey with your ideal ride go wherever and whenever you like with the extra space to carry everything you need. Arrive refreshed and ready for the day in comfort. Hit the road together on family adventures to make unforgettable memories. Feel the wind at your back. Upgrade your lifestyle easily with a cruise control vehicle loan for new or used vehicles. Join Nexa Credit Union now and get your vehicle loan. Terms and conditions apply. Visit us today. Call 440-1354 or our website at www.nexacreditunion.com or email us at loans at nexacreditunion.com and hit the road with Nexa Credit Union. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. A pair refers to another member or account holder at Nexa Credit Union who is registered on the mobile app. Members can pay their pairs by using Pay a Pair. In order to pay a pair, members must set up a pair first. To pay a pair, you have to do the following. Create your mobile ID and add a pair. Tap on Manage, tap on Add Pair. To set or update the mobile ID, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Settings under Account Settings. Then select Personal Settings. Go to Mobile ID and select edit. For first time setup, only enter your desired mobile ID in the new mobile ID text box. For changes to the existing mobile IDs, enter the current mobile ID in use, then enter the new desired mobile ID in the text boxes. You can either make a one-time peer-to-peer transfer or schedule regular recurring payments. To add a pair, Select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments. Then Manage Pays. Under Pairs, click Add. Enter a nickname of choice for the pair you wish to add. Enter the six-digit account number of the pair you wish to add, followed by dash 10 dash 0. Enter your mobile ID. Enter your pair's mobile ID. Enter a transaction reference of your choice. Click Next and review the details before submitting. To do a peer-to-peer -peer transfer, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments, then Make a Payment or Pay a Pair. Click Select Pay and on the Pairs, choose the pair you wish to transfer money to. Click Select Account and choose which account you wish to transfer from. Enter the amount you wish to transfer. Ensure a transaction reference is entered. You can use the Schedule Payment option by selecting the date of the transfer 
and arrange for recurring payments by assigning a frequency. Click Review and ensure the information is accurate before submitting. For further queries or assistance, contact us via WhatsApp at 473-405-4061 or email eServices at nexacreditunion.com. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. But when you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never leave. Come on, take my hands, we got everything we need. Cause you can look to me, yes, I can. whenever you're in need. Yes, you Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. Kick things up a gear with a Nexa Credit Union Cruise Control Vehicle Loan and begin your journey with your ideal ride. Go wherever and whenever you like with the extra space to carry everything you need. Arrive refreshed and ready for the day in comfort. Hit the road together on family adventures to make unforgettable memories. Feel the wind at your back. Upgrade your lifestyle easily with a Cruise Control Vehicle Loan for new or used vehicles. Join Nexa Credit Union now and get your vehicle loan. Terms and conditions apply. Visit us today. Call 440-1354 or our website at www.nexacreditunion.com or email us at loans at nexacreditunion.com and hit the road with Nexa Credit Union. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. A pair refers to another member or account holder at Nexa Credit Union who is registered on the mobile app. Members can pay their pairs by using Pay a Pair. In order to pay a pair, members must set up a pair first. To pay a pair, you have to do the following. Create your mobile ID and add a pair. Tap on Manage, tap on Add Pair. To set or update the mobile ID, Select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Settings under Account Settings. Then select Personal Settings. Go to Mobile ID and select Edit. For first time setup, only enter your desired mobile ID in the New Mobile ID text box. For changes to the existing mobile IDs, Enter the current mobile ID in use, then enter the new desired mobile ID in the text boxes. You can either make a one-time peer-to-peer transfer or schedule regular recurring payments. To add a pair, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments, then Manage Pays. Under Pairs, click Add. Enter a nickname of choice for the pair you wish to add. Enter the six-digit account number of the pair you wish to add, followed by dash 10, dash 0. Enter your mobile ID. Enter your pair's mobile ID. Enter a transaction reference of your choice. Click Next and review the details before submitting. To do a pair-to-pair -pair transfer, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments then Make a Payment or Pay a Pair. Click Select Pay and on the Pairs, choose the pair you wish to transfer money to. Click Select Account and choose which account you wish to transfer from. 
Enter the amount you wish to transfer. Ensure a transaction reference is entered. You can use the Schedule Payment option by selecting the date of the transfer and arrange for recurring payments by assigning a frequency. Click Review and ensure the information is accurate before submitting. For further queries or assistance, contact us via WhatsApp at 473-405-4061 or email eServices at nexacreditunion.com. Nexa Credit Union. With you wherever your road leads. Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. But when you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never leave. Come on, take my hands, we got everything we need. Because you can look to me, yes, I can. whenever you're in need. Yes, Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. Kick things up a gear with a Nexa Credit Union Cruise Control Vehicle Loan and begin your journey with your ideal ride. Go wherever and whenever you like with the extra space to carry everything you need. Arrive refreshed and ready for the day in comfort. Hit the road together on family adventures to make unforgettable memories. Feel the wind at your back. Upgrade your lifestyle easily with a Cruise Control Vehicle Loan for new or used vehicles. Join Nexa Credit Union now and get your vehicle loan. Terms and conditions apply. Visit us today. Call 440-1354 or our website at www.nexacreditunion.com or email us at loans at nexacreditunion.com and hit the road with Nexa Credit Union. Nexa Credit Union. With you wherever your road leads. A pair refers to another member or account holder at Nexa Credit Union who is registered on the mobile app. Members can pay their pairs by using Pay a Pair. In order to pay a pair, members must set up a pair first. To pay a pair, you have to do the following. Create your mobile ID and add a pair. Tap on Manage, tap on Add Pair. To set or update the mobile ID, Select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Settings under Account Settings. Then select Personal Settings. Go to Mobile ID and select Edit. For first time setup, only enter your desired mobile ID in the New Mobile ID text box. For changes to the existing mobile IDs, Enter the current mobile ID in use, then enter the new desired mobile ID in the text boxes. You can either make a one-time peer-to-peer transfer or schedule regular recurring payments. To add a pair, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments, then Manage Pays. Under Pairs, click Add. Enter a nickname of choice for the pair you wish to add. Enter the six-digit account number of the pair you wish to add, followed by dash 10 dash 0. Enter your mobile ID. Enter your pair's mobile ID. Enter a transaction reference of your choice. Click Next and review the details before submitting. To do a pair-to-pair -pair transfer, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments then make a payment or pay a pair.
click Select Pay and on the pairs, choose the pair you wish to transfer money to. Click Select Account and choose which account you wish to transfer from. Enter the amount you wish to transfer. Ensure a transaction reference is entered. You can use the Schedule Payment option by selecting the date of the transfer and arrange for recurring payments by assigning a frequency. Click Review and ensure the information is accurate before submitting. For further queries or assistance, contact us via WhatsApp at 473-405-4061 or email eServices at nexacreditunion.com. Nexa Credit Union. With you wherever your road leads. Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. For when you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never live. Come on, take my hands, we've got everything we need. Because you can look to me, yes, I can. whenever you're in need. Yes, Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. He's off racing against the time, the clock. We have Jeloni Patterson of St. Patrick coming down the stretch, running steadily as he crosses the line, trying his best to make the time to see if he can make it into that final race. Let's hear it for Jeloni Patterson. A very brave thing to run against the clock. And we want to commend him for his attempt. But a time of 12.43 seconds for the 80 meters. The officials will determine if he can make it into the finals with that time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.
All right. Well, we want to welcome you back here to the Karani James Athletic Stadium for the next GUT primary school games. This is the afternoon session that is about to start. As we see a number of athletes already in the competition areas, you have the high jump under 15 girls. You have a number of other events, including the under nines long jump. So quite a few events to come your way. And all these events, I can tell you, they are final events. So they are vying for the gold, silver, and bronze medals in these events. Uh, definitely a lot to look forward to. Um, keen competition, some exciting preliminaries went for the morning session. And so we're looking forward to the afternoon. And really, a nice, beautiful atmosphere has been set. The crowd is looking really good. Um, we have supporters in the main stand and you can see the secondary stand I, i'm seeing some persons um there so it says that the turnout to these games are really exceptional and so we we're gonna look forward to a keen afternoon yes i couldn't agree with you more the stage is all set set for good clean competition and as you rightfully said the all finals this afternoon going into the evening and into the night at the end of all of this, we are going to get a champion for 2024 Nexa GUT National Primary School Games 2024. Uh, some champion will be crowned, but individually, th there are some bragging rights, uh, uh, in t not just on the national level, but in the parish. There are some bragging rights there, and then some nice rivalry would have already being developed over the first day in the different age categories so we we'll probably see we we'll probably see more of that continue as we go into into the second and final day this really sets the table for what promises to be a very interesting march into april month or the next few weeks of track and field in Grenada, because you go right into the inter-secondary school games, and then shortly thereafter is the Carifta games. Yeah, exactly. Um, a lot of action sport-wise, um, athletics-wise. Um, I know that the, the Grenadian public, they enjoy athletics, and um, they are, again, very patriotic people, so definitely come all the way to the end of... of March for the Carifta Games, I know that patrons would be out in their numbers um, supporting whether it is the school, whether it is um, Team Grenada. You know, um, the Athletics Championship, the Primary Athletics Championship has already set a tone. And I, I know that come next week, you know, the tone is going to get a little bit louder, maybe a lot louder too, because the bragging rights, as you said earlier, is there and it's up and you know, um, you can hear already the, the SAS persons talking, you know, they come in. You, you hear the GBSS mentioning that, hey, we're not going to ease up. You hear the Anglican High School, the St. David's Catholic Secondary. You know, all of them seem to be ready to go. And it will be an explosion of athletic talent come next week. Yes. And listening to Mr. Bartholomew and uh, Mr. Peters, you can get this sense that there is a, a, a consensus among these, these, the, these important people in the society for the week and the next, the next few weeks into all the track and field activities that we have lined up on our 50th anniversary of independence. So you're in for a good thing. You're not missing any action just yet. Uh, what you have on your screen, uh, some practice jumps, if you want to call it that, high jumps. It's, there are some practice jumps that's going on with the, with the girls. And that will get going in earnest sh shortly. But on the track, we, we will open up this afternoon session on the track with 800 meters open for girls. And that will be followed with the 800 meters open for boys. So the... On the track, you can expect the 800 meters shortly. And thereafter, we get into the, 
into the shortest sprints. And I'm saying shorter sprints because even the 800 in certain quarters are considered to be a, a sort of a quasi-sprint nowadays. Uh, guys like Rodisha and so on have really changed the setting what 800 used to be. I remember in the old days they would, they would talk about trotting or whatever that means. The first, the first 400 and then they would start in the running in earnest in the second 400. But all of that has been realigned with these new breed of, of, of athletes that we have on show. So it's the, on the track it will be the 800 meters open for both boys and girls. On the field we have long jump on the nine, girls cricket ball on the 11, and boys discuss throw on the 15, as well as the high jump, what you are seeing on your screen there, and your high jump on the 15 for girls. So lots of, lots of action, lots of action that we have on show. And this the next uh, GUT National Primary School Games 2024. Yeah, I can tell you the excitement is building. Um, I, I'm looking forward to see, you know, the competition this afternoon. Um, right now, as it stands, you, the athletes who may not have gotten a medal, I think they, they will be desperate to ensure that they get, you know, themselves a medal. And so you definitely looking forward to seeing them leaving everything on the track and giving it their all. So you're in for a treat, and let's hope that these students will deliver based on what we've seen so far. Absolutely, because for some of these athletes, like the 11, 11 plus, um, this may just be their final chance uh, in, at the primary school level. And from there, they will go on to the secondary schools. So there is a, a lot to play for. Let's, let, let's, let's use that term. There's a lot to play for. Uh, and, and so we should see some really keen competition in all of these finals that just about to start. And we also have the, the boys discuss. We're seeing them um, at the discuss area, right, which is right next to the high jump. So definitely we're going to give you some updates. Um, I know sherri is always on the ground um, looking to bring us updates and so on. So uh, definitely as things go on, we will get them. So. You're not missing any live action, just yet, except the practice jump, high jump. The young ladies on screen, they're having their warm-up drums. And that's the girls under 15 high jump. Well, let me just quickly give you a brief point standing. That is true to event 74. I think we had a number of events happening after that. Um, but most of what you've seen would have been preliminaries. And so I'm giving you a points update, the latest points update that I have here. Uh, it reads like this. In seventh position, St. Mark, 87 points. Sixth position, St. John, 100 points. Fifth position, Kariku and Piti Martinique, 114 points. In fourth position, St. David, 188.50 points. St. George, third position, 224. St. Patrick, second position, 229. And St. Andrew, out front on 382 and a half points. So that's the point standing out true to event 74. And I know that there will be some changes to that shortly. And the number of events to come. They're all final, so that point standing is going to change. It's going to change fast and furious as we move later into the afternoon. So there you have it. That's changed. This is, the, this is what we started with this morning. And now there is a change to that, what you're seeing on your screen. And so St. Andrews, we can tell you, is still out front. 
but the others are playing catch up uh, quite a long way behind. And the changes that we spoke to earlier had to do with the three finals that we had this, the four finals that we had this morning. The boys shot put on the 13, the girls discuss on the 15, girls long jump on the 9, and the other finals, the girls long jump on the 13, boys high jump on the 15, and the girls javelin throw on the 15. So these were all finals this morning, so no doubt the overnight scores would have been changed as a result of those finals but the preliminary scores that we have here right at the top of the top of the tree that has not changed st andrews is still out front at, with 382.5 points as we have it right now so the action on the track is about to commence or recommence let's put it that way we're gonna see the 800 meter open girls that would be our first event on track for the afternoon session. And again, this is a final event. So the points will change at the end of this event. And it's a beautiful race, um, 800 meters. And we saw the likes in the last Olympic of, uh, for Tunisia acting more. Uh, dominate that day, day on the Olympic scene. It, it, Teenager, she was and still in, still in college. Yeah, really outstanding from her. She definitely, you know, worked hard to make sure that as a, a teenager to to come and rank among the professionals. You know, it's it's really hard work that it is credited, you know, to her, and 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 that says a lot about her ethics. Yes. So the race is two full laps around the track, a 400 meter track. So you have two full laps. And as we said earlier, the strategy in this race have really changed over the years. So we can ex expect some keen competition in these two races, 800 meter open girls and 800 meter open boys. So we're gonna momentarily see them re-enter the track. Gonna have the it's a lot of strategy that would go into 400, 800, 1500 meter, and certainly longer distances. It's a lot about strategy. Yeah, it, it is a game of strategy when it comes to the 800 meter. You want to ensure that you piece yourself well enough that you can. You know, um, manage the two rounds. Uh, you have to know when to really make that move. That would be critical, the, the, the move for home. You don't want to leave it too late. You do not want to go too early. So it's really technical, you know, in terms of how you run, what pace you run at. And what I've noticed about a lot of the athletes at the, the elite level is that the, the training is surrounded not really about placing it's about timing you know understanding okay this is where i'm at um this is what the record is this is what i need to do to get there you know and so on so it's a lot of strategizing and i mean at this level we we can tell the kids but um the ability to execute will take a lot of training it will take a lot of patience yes it is an introduction to strategizing where the shorter sprints, it's a, it's a matter. It's a brutal speed from start to finish with all the short sprints. But it takes on a different tenor as you go into the longer distances. So you're getting a view of the discus for under 15 boys. They're just, they seem to be having their warm up throws. Discuss is a pretty rhythmic event. Have to get that rhythm right, the body moving, you know, in sync with the arms and being able to really get the power out of the arms. It's it's pretty
technical. The angle of release, the uh, you know the the angle of rotation is also very important. So quite a lot to think about when you think about the discus event. Against discus throwers, like the other speciality events, the small, tight group of athletes that back each other, really they do. And the high jump seems to have started in earnest right now. And we're going to see the 800 meter also. The girls seem to be coming back onto the track. And so we're about to get going. Remember, it's a finals, so it's 800 meters and it's open. So that. There's no age discrimination in this one. So the start list for the 800 meter. I think we're going to get that. So all the parishes are represented. And so we're about to see the start. Can the other parishes catch up to St. Andrew. Is there enough time? Is there enough? Or is there a strategy to really catch St. Andrews? So we have uh, 12 athletes who are facing this status now, but it's 800 meters open. All the branches, as I said earlier, represented here. numbered so it makes it a lot easier now to identify the athletes a lot easier now because they are numbered So there are 12 athletes there, which, which means that each parish, each branch, sorry, is represented by two athletes. Had it, the 
line up for the 800 meter open girls. And they're off. 800 meter open girls. It's two laps around the, the, the field. It's a race of strategy. It's a race of endurance. And who has the fortitude to run consistent at a steady pace that can give them a gold medal? St. Andrew, sorry, St. Patrick out front setting the pace as they come around the 200 meter mark. Followed by St. Andrew and St. George. Nothing really to write home about as yet. Still trying to set up this race is St. Patrick. Has a decent lead there. St. Andrews making a move. So it's St. Patrick, St. Andrew, St. Andrew, St. David, St. George. Still early days as the bell is sounded. St. David making a, a move to position herself between the St. Andrews athlete by St. Patrick. St. Patrick. St. Andrew moving. St. Andrew's moving. St. David's is also moving. St. Patrick is there still. Here comes St. George, but it's St. Andrew. St. Andrew, St. Patrick, St. David. St. David just getting on the heels of the St. Patrick athlete there. They're just approaching 230. And there you have it. St. Andrew closely followed by St. Patrick. As they approach the 150 mark. St. Andrew looking to really steamroll herself into the, the, the gold medal position. St. David's is steady. Here comes St. George. It's going to be a cracker. Can St. David's really push St. Andrew? St. Andrew seems to have that stamina. She seems to have uh, a bit of power there. She's small. Not as powerful as in um, St. David, but she has the strategy. She has what it takes. And there she goes. St. Andrew. It is St. Andrew, St. David, and St. David, possibly St. George. We, we have to wait on, on that position. But good job there from the, the athlete there from St. Andrew. Ran a really steady race. Uh, again, we said timing. We said knowing when to make your move. She did just what she had to do. It's a race of strategy there. For the first 80 meters or so, it was all St. Patrick. And thereafter, it was St. Andrew right to the end. And interesting contest for position number three.
Yeah, very interesting. St. George getting the bronze medal there. Right at the end. Right at the end. Good, good run by Tiffany Abraham. Uh, Tiffany has been doing very well in, these, um, in this meet. And she has notched up another win. Uh, 2 minutes 43.05 seconds for Tiffany Abraham. Bringing it home there for St. Andrew. Uh, followed by Kenisa Kalist at uh, St. David. And then a very closely contested one for position number three, Brianna Coutine and Shaquanda Paul. Yeah, good way to start the afternoon session. And St. Andrews looking to extend their lead. Meantime, the girls' high jump is on. As we get ready for the boys. Quite a few field events happening for this evening. It's the evening session. And I can tell you, I want to remind everyone, it is finals. All finals. Clarence there in the high jump on the 15 for St. For Patrick. On the 15 Mark, high jump for Clarence. 87 points. St. John, 100. Karaku and Petit Martinique, 114. St. David, 188. St. George, 224. St. Patrick, 229. And St. Andrew, 382. At the point standing, uh, we talked to just now, we had given, we had given uh, these points standing a short time ago, St. Andrew had the lead at 382.5 points. St. Patrick at 229, St. George at 224, St. David at 188.5, Kerikou and Petey Matnik 114, St. John 100 points, and St. Mark 87. lot to look forward to this afternoon. We have seen the first final event of the day, of the afternoon session rather, going to St. Andrew. So the 800 open girls, St. Andrew capturing the gold medal there. Means that they Extend their lead. And you look at you look at what is in store, and you look at the point standing, and if. There is not a conceded effort by the other parishes to really displace St. Andrews. They definitely may just run away to their 28th title win. Discuss Stroh is also on. Discuss Stroh on the 15 boys. Congratulations to all the winners of the branch sports meet 
and we thank the Nexa Credit Union for being our sponsor. Up next, event number 63, the boys' 800 meter run open. Record holder in that event is Kristen Alexander, 2017, 2 minutes 18.47 seconds. In the mix, we have St. John, Tyreek Charles, Carrie Quinn, Peter Martin, Cameron Welch, St. George, Michael Moses, from St. Mark, Levi Redshare, from St. Patrick, Joshua Thomas, St. David, Stephen Maureen. We also have from St. Mark, Giovanni Tavernier, St. David, Kaim Simon, St. George, Keishon Andrews, St. Patrick, Tristan Wellington, St. John, Gabriel Passy, St. Andrew, Christian George, St. Andrew, Sean Wellington, and from Karieku and Peter Martinik, we have Nick Juan Roberts. Boys Open 800 meters finals. officials get everything sorted out we want to remind you that you're viewing the nexa gut national primary school games 2024 it's a collaboration of the gut and the nexa credit union as they as they seek to ensure that they do their part in nation building and this might be school away from the classroom because these kids are still in a learning mode. They have to learn how to run the 800 meters. It's a big stage for them to learn, but learning has to happen nonetheless. Complimented for your participation here this afternoon. You must be complimented for coming out to support the Meantime, young Meantime, the girls' high jump exactly is taking need. place. And of course, we're giving you this work. The skin competition is not over until the last race is run. Also have on, on, on in the field the cricket ball true. That event is the under eleven cricket ball true for girls.
Okay, it seems we are just about ready to start this 800 open for boys. So wherever you're viewing us from, we take this opportunity to say a pleasant good afternoon to you. And we hope that you have enjoyed the proceedings thus far. It's day number two of the Nexa GOT Primary School Sports or Primary School Championship 2024. A precursor to the few coming weeks of athletic competition with the Intercall Games and the Karifta Games, which will all be held right here at the Karani James Athletic Stadium. In the meantime, the high jump, the girls, 1 to 15 continues. Okay, so we have Sherry and Dong at the finish line, and I think she has with her one of the winners of the first event on track. And so, Sherry Ann, if you're hearing us, you can go right ahead. We wait for the start of the 800 meter open boys. Crowd looking all anxious as we look at the various colors in attendance. See a number of our coaches there looking on at the, the athletes. As we said it's a talent identification time. You get to see these athletes you see what they can do and you get a good assessment of you know what you need to do as the coach to really help that athlete and so So the white flag is up and they're ready to begin. And 
they're off. 800 meter, open boys, two laps. Strategy, endurance. And as we look at it, it seems to be St. John with the early movement. Karik who is there. As they make the break, it's Kariku, St. David, St. Andrew, followed by St. John, St. George. Still early days. Still early days. Kariku is gone. Followed by St. George, St. Andrew, St. David. They're coming around the bend heading for the first street. And they're going to go into the bell lap. Means that one more lap to go. Skariku, St. Andrew, St. George. They seem to have separated themselves from the rest of the pack. Kariku looking strong. St. Andrew right on his heels. Two athletes from St. St. George there. And St. Andrew. And St. George chasing. Pace seem to be picking up slightly. As they seek to ex establish a, a lead, a gap from the rest of the field. St. Andrew 1, St. George 2, St. George 3. St. George making a move now. 150 meters to go. It's St. George taking the lead. Uh, we have that athlete falling there. But it's still St. Andrew, St. George. St. Andrew, St. George. St. Andrew looking to, to move away. He's putting on his speed. Picking up the pace is St. Andrew. St. George is there. It is St. Andrew. It's going to be interesting. Second and third. It is St. George. It is St. Patrick in third. St. George in fourth. Really big effort there by the athlete from St. George. Fell but had the presence of mind to get up and, and to challenge for the third position. But really good job there by the athlete from St. Andrew. Seemed to have faded but he had enough in the tank to make sure that he completes this 800 meter winning the gold for his team. Yes, a good measured run there from St. Andrew. And for the first lap, almost for the entire first lap, first lap, Carrico was leading and abruptly stopped. So we're going to go down to Sherry Ann who have, has with her the winner of the 800. Sherry Ann. We're going to get to Sherry Ann in a bit. But that was a, a really um, good run there by the athlete from St. Andrew. I think he paced it well. He understood when to make the move. He got ahead and he ensured that he stayed ahead. He, he, there was some challenge from St. George, but he was powerful. He was strong. And I think that is responsible for getting him home. I think his race was well calculated. Uh, 
when he took over the lead from the athlete from Karakou, he maintained a steady pace and only really accelerated um, about 50 or so meters to the end. So he, he was running his race. A measured, good measured run by the, by the young man. So that was the second final event for the evening. And we're reminding you that all the events on track will be final events. So we go over, over now to the short sprints. And the first of the, first of the short sprints is the under nine girls, 80 meters. 80 meters girls, under nine. And they are at the status point. St. George. Lane two. Prescott McDonald St. David. Lane three. Nadira Filbert St. Mark. Lane four. Zarina Noel St. Andrew. Lane five. Janelle Charles St. George. St. Patrick. Lane six. Abrel Fortune, Lane 7, from St. Andrew, Catalina Alexander, Lane 8, from St. Patrick, Cadella Frederick. Well, quite a few names there to look forward to. We saw the prelims and uh, definitely you can appreciate the, the, the athletes all have an opportunity i think um it was frederick in lane eight that was really impressive she was really really impressive in her heat Gotta keep your eyes on Zarina Noel. She is from St. Andrew. You wanna keep your eyes on Abriel Fortune. Another one who qualified with a really good time. They're off. There you go. It seemed to be St. George. It seemed to be St. George. St. George, St. Andrew. Here comes St. Patrick. It is, seems to be St. Andrew, St. Patrick, St. George. Really impressive run there by these young athletes. I think they, they understood the task and definitely lived up to this final event. Uh, you see the athlete there in Noel from St. Andrew doing what she had to do really stepping on the gas coming down to that final few meters to ensure that she gets herself across the line the uh, athlete from St. George in lane 2 lane 1 got a fantastic start but she was caught she was caught about, she was caught at about 20 25 meters ago and the athlete from St. Andrew accelerated towards the end that's Noel and pick up the pick up the win there in 12.76 seconds pretty good running from Noel there in fact it was Fortune who, who, in his, who ended up in the silver medal position so pretty good comeback from both Noel and Fortune to overtake Frank who had a masterful start yeah really great run in there from Zarina Noel and um, Abriel Fortune to come back 
and to, to really snatch this victory because Had Hadassah Frank was going great guns. She had, a, as you said, a really good start and, and she seemed all poised to win this. But Noel and Fortune, they did all that they could. And as I said, they left it all on the track. Really good outstanding run from these under nine girls. Yes, until the last 20 meters. So Noel would have led them for 60 meters or so. Not Noel. Frank would have led for about 60 meters. And then Noel and Fortune took over. Boys, 80 meter dash under nine. Record holder, Christoph Callist, 2017, 11.78 seconds. So there appears to be uh, an adjustment in the lineup of our events. Our next event up on the track will be a 100 meter dash. So Following this, we will have a medal presentation. But for now, we head back to the track for the 100 meter dash. So the finals are coming to you quick and fast. We go to the under 13 girls 100 final. So 100 meters girls under 13. We got some big names in this one. You, you, you got to look for Haley Terrell from St. Andrew. And uh, Quinna Francis from Carico and Pity Matning. These, these two young ladies were outstanding athletes in the preliminaries coming into this finals here. So look out for Carico, look out for St. Andrew. Haley Terrell from St. Andrew and uh, Quina Francis from Caracu. Mm, will be an interesting one because um, Francis from Caracu uh, in the preliminary round had the faster time between the two. And so you, you anticipate a really good run. Somebody will push somebody towards the gold medal. That's your lineup for the girls on the 13, 100 meters. Two athletes there from St. Patrick, one from St. John, one from St. George, one from Caracu, two from St. Andrew, and one from St. David. So we're going to keep your eye on the middle of the track the fastest on the 13 girl in the country this is what would be determined in the next few seconds officials are sorting out the lanes for the young ladies
as they get ready. Again, it's a learning process, as we said. It's not just about skills and talent, but you're here to learn. Yeah, lead from St. Patrick. Needing some reassurance as to a lane configuration. That is lane one. All seems to be right now. And they're off. In the middle of the pack. Here comes Terrell. Uh, Terrell is, is just powering home. There goes Terrell. It's interesting. We wouldn't want to see the time that she ran. Carrick who seemed to have the second position. But there was heaps of daylight between Terrell and the rest of the pack. She was out to, to really make a statement here. That she is the fastest under 13 girl in Grenada. There she goes. Good start. Good start. Point from the beginning. She set herself off. Here comes Kariku. Kariku is challenging, but the determination of Terrell, there goes that determination. She's not letting up. Look at her go. Look at the arms pump. She means business. And she has won herself the gold medal. The fastest under 13 girl in Grenada is Terrell. Yes, she is. Whilst at the athlete from St. John is having some real issues with the athlete from St. Patrick and Lane 1 and 2. There was much confusion there. When Haley, Tyrell Haley, you just won the on the 13 final for the 100 meter girls. Um, speak to us about that race as to when you realize that you need to push and push a little faster. Well, I, I saw that the girl was in front of me, so I pushed harder to win, to win that gold medal. And how well did you do at the parish sports to gain a spot here for the for the um, to represent your parish at the branch sports? Sorry, I did good. What are some of the events you participated in? Four, one, two, really. What are the other events that you, you have to run this uh, this afternoon? I don't know. How happy are you with your performance over the past two days? Good. That was the winner of the 100 meter on the 13 girls, Haley Tyrell from the parish of St. Andrew. Back to you, Jason. Haley Terrell has secured the gold medal. Yet again, another 11 points for St. Andrew. And they seem, they seem to be poised to just run away with this. But I'm looking, I'm really interested in seeing the time that Terrell ran this event in. And uh, to me, this is really, really something that i'm looking forward to i'm looking forward to that time um being posted and we wanted to thank the here 13.43 seconds Haley terrell Haley Terrell, 13.43 seconds. Really, really outstanding run there by Terrell. Yeah, she stepped it up to, at the finals, and this is what you want to do. It's right around. You want to put everything on the line at the finals, and that's, that's what she did. The boys are up next, and this is going to be an interesting one. Deshaun Oliver from St. Patrick, and... Akel breaks from St. George. Established her personal best. 
there's going to be an interesting rivalry between these two young men. On the track as we get ready for the boys, 100 meters dash on the 13. Lane one, Cameron Bonaparte, St. George. Lane two, Levi Richard, St. Mark. Lane three, Lionel Charles, St. David. Lane four, Dishon Oliver, St. Patrick. Lane five, Ackle Briggs, St. George. Lane six, John Callis, St. Andrew. Lane seven, Aqua Cumberbatch, St. John. And lane eight, Zaim Hosten, St. Patrick. And of course, the fastest time is from St. Patrick, Dishon Oliver, 12.79 seconds. Can he beat this in the final? So it's lane four, five, and six. So on paper, that's where the real competition will be coming. Lanes four, five, and six. St. Patrick, St. Andrews, St. George. focused, they're determined. Waiting for the gun. They're asked to stand again. These boys are ready. You look at their posture and it says that, hey, we're ready. This is a big stage and we're ready to show what we can do. It's a final. It's 100 meters. And they're off. And right away, it is Oliver. But he has to work hard. He has to work hard. There goes Oliver. He's leaving the pack right now. And St. George is in second, but definitely... A very impressive run there from Oliver. He delivered as expected. And so definitely, he can feel good about his day's work. He is the fastest on that 13 boy. In all the, the, the parishes of Grenada, there is no one faster than him. This is true to form on paper. And they're taking a gold medal there. It's Dishon Oliver. And in second position, it would be Briggs from St. George. Impressive run there also by the athlete there from St. David. He think he needs to really focus on his race and not on the athlete. Uh, he just might have got, gone a bit faster, but you can see his head was just focused on Briggs and trying to ensure that he outrun Briggs. Uh, definitely, as I said earlier, a lot that can be worked on. You, you want to teach that child to just keep forward. Look at the line. The line is what you're really running against and not the, com the competition. We're going to go down to Sherian. Oliver Deshaun, congratulations. You are undoubtedly the fastest on the 13 boy we have here at the National Primary School Games. You broke the record in the 200 meter on day one. I know you came and you won the 100 meter in a time of 12.73 um, seconds. Um, speak to us about your preparations coming into day one and day two in terms of how hard you trained and so well every day we train in in four and then i'll train do a little thing for myself in the road and then you say you just do a little thing for yourself in in the road when did you realize that you had the ability that you started doing your little thing in the road since i was in preschool i run in and then every time i win I'll just jump up and just be excited. So how happy are you today? Very happy. Because last year, the boy didn't beat me up. He said not the year. So you come back to take revenge on the track? Yeah. All right, well, congratulations, viewers. That's the under 13 winner in the 100 meter. You did it in a time of 12.73 seconds. Congratulations to you again, and congratulations to the parish of St. Patrick. Back to you, Jason. Wow, you just have to be impressed by this young fella. If you looked at him at a starting block, there was a calm assurance, and he gave it up right there. Last year, they beat him up, and he come back for them this year. <laughs> really, really outstanding, and this is what 
the next uh, GUT primary school games is all about. Uh, you move up a category, the fellas, they deal with you, but you have another chance in that same category, and you're going to deal with them. Well done, Deshaun Oliver from St. Patrick's. For event number 47, the boys, cricket ball through under 11. Your bronze medalist, a distance of 43.43 meters, representing St. Patrick, Zayden Hostin. Your silver medalist, a distance of 44.62 meters, representing St. David, Terence, Felix. And your gold medalist, a distance of 47.20 meters, representing St. Andrew, Brantley Roberts. These are your medalists for event 47, the boys cricket ball through on the 11. Medal presentation for event number 48, the girls long jump on the 13. Your bronze medalist, a distance of 4.12 meters from St. Andrew, Jadel Aldridge. Your silver medalist, a distance of 4.16 meters from St. Andrew, Tamaya Peters. And your gold medalist, a distance of 4.20 meters, representing St. David, Kasia Klein. These are your medalists for event 48, the girls long jump on the 13. Medal presentation for our exhibition events. Our athletes from the Grenada School for Special Education, Victoria. Second position, Shavin Johnson. And ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist, Tishandi Bain. These are your medalists for the boys' 80 meter dash exhibition run. We say a special thank you to Mr. Maras for assisting us with these medal presentations. To assist us with the next set of medal presentations, please put your hands together and welcome Mr. Shane McQuilkin, Director of the NEXA Board of Directors. Medal presentation for the girls' 80 meter dash exhibition. Your silver medalist, Sheldonna Wallace. And your gold medalist. Put your hands together for Crystal Ross. These are your medalists for the girls' 80 meter dash exhibition run. Medal presentation for event number 62, the girls' 800 meter run open. Your bronze medalist, a time of two minutes, 47.29 meters from St. David, Shaquanda Paul. Your silver medalist, a time of two minutes, 45.14 seconds, from St. David, Kenisa Kalist. Kenisa. 
and your gold medalist. A time of 2 minutes, 43.05 seconds. From St. Andrew, Tiffany Abraham. These are your medalists for event 62, the girls 800 meter run open. Medal presentation for event 63, the boys 800 meter run open. Your bronze medalist in a time of two minutes, 30.58 seconds from St. Patrick, Tristan Wellington. Your silver medalist, a time of two minutes, 29.26 seconds from St. George, Cashon Andrews. And your gold medalist, a time of 2 minutes, 26.62 seconds, representing St. Andrew, Sean Wellington. These are your medalists for event 63, the boys 800 meter run open. Medal presentation for event number 43, the girls 80 meter dash under nine. Your bronze medalist in a time of 12.95 seconds, representing St. George, Hadassah Frank. Your silver medalist in a time of 12.88 seconds, representing St. Patrick, Abriel Fortune. And your gold medalist, a time of 12.76 seconds, representing St. Andrew, Zarina Noel. These are your medalists for event number 43, the girls, 80 meter dash under nine. We say a special thank you to Mr. Shane McWilkin for his assistance with the distribution of these medals. Ladies and gentlemen, let's put our hands together for all of our athletes as they make their way off the field. This is the 2024 edition of the NEXA GUT National Primary School Championships. But when you need someone to help you to your feet I'll be that beacon to your highest peak Ooh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never live Come on, take my hands, we got everything we need Cause you can look to me yes, I can. Whenever you're in need yes, you can. Just call on me and I'll be on my way Nexa Credit Union, with you, wherever your road leads. Kick things up a gear with a Nexa Credit Union Cruise Control Vehicle Loan and begin your journey with your ideal ride. Go wherever and whenever you like, with the extra space to carry everything you need. Arrive refreshed and ready for the day in comfort. Hit the road together on family adventures to make unforgettable memories. Feel the wind at your back. Upgrade your lifestyle easily with a cruise control vehicle loan for new or used vehicles. Join Nexa Credit Union now and get your vehicle loan. Terms and conditions apply. Visit us today. Call 440-1354 or our website at www.nexacreditunion.com or email us at loans at nexacreditunion.com and hit the road with Nexa Credit Union. Nexa Credit Union. With you wherever your road leads. All right, well, this is where we're at now, with just a few minutes remaining, or just, well, a few minutes, maybe two hours remaining. We're coming down to what will be one of the 
greater finishes that we've seen at the Primary School Athletic Championship. Hi everybody, my name is Jason Skeet and Clyde Rondell John, along with Bernard and Twine. And we're going to be taking you through the paces of the rest of the afternoon on the track immediately. Let's get back to the business. We've got the girls 80 meter under seven, the finals. The girls 80 meter under seven, the finals. And it will feature all the seven divisions. So this one's gonna be exciting. We've got the lane assignments that will come from the house announcer. We're gonna take that and then we're gonna get you to the finish line on this one. The girls 80 meters on the seven. Let's go to the lane assignments. Record holder, Janaya Welch, 13.52 seconds. In the preliminaries, Janaya Mark of St. Patrick had the fastest time of 13.78 seconds. Your lane assignments. Lane one. Carrie Koo and Peter Martinique, Molaika Caesar. Lane three. Lane four. Janaya Mark St. Patrick. Lane five. Azura Charles St. Patrick. In lane six. St. George Kelly Abraham. Lane seven, St. John, Zaria Marshall. Lane eight, St. Andrew, Kalanda Charles. Well, the record in this one is 13.52. That was set by Janaya Welch. Who has come closest to that is Janaya Mark of St. Patrick. In the preliminary, she clocked 13.78. Not too far off the record, but and the, the good thing about that time is that she didn't receive any major challenge is that record under threat here this afternoon i think it just might be if you look at her composure more than anything else she behaves as a winner well that's janaya mark she's running out of lane four she's wearing green and she's got the beads to the left hanging down obviously having a conversation she's in superstar mode already <laughs> uh, janaya mark and uh, she's uh, in lane four Lanes two and three, uh, MT did not start. That's George from St. George and Cape from St. Andrew. So, oh, well, here they are. We've got to go find them. So, Akizaya, George, St. George. She is running out of lane two. Just came along with Avery Cape in lane three. So the entire field is locked in and everybody is ready to go. Zaria Marshall just sorting out some last minute business with the officials. She's not taking anything for granted. She clocked 14.68 coming into this one. So. She's just getting things sorted out. These under the seven, they have provided much thrill and excitement over the last two days, particularly in the boys' division. But the girls are fiery as well, getting ready for the start of the 800 meter dash. Caesar, George, Cape, Mark, Charles, Abraham. Marshall and Charles. Yeah, so you look for Abraham as, as well as Mark in this one. K 
Kaylee Abraham. Uh, Janiah Mark of uh, St. Patrick. She clocked 13.78, the fastest time coming in. Kaylee Abraham was a bit off, 14.40. But this is the short sprint. They're off, up, away, and gone. And it does look like Janiah Mark. It looks like Mark. Mark is under some pressure. However, here comes the athlete from St. Andrew. That's Cape. Avery Cape just lunging ahead. This is too tight to call. St. George is coming through. This looks like Abraham. That is as close as it can possibly get. It will come down to the replay. I will take no chances as to predict. It has to go to the replay. Our technical team will bring us back. was even everybody got a good start this was still anybody's race it looked like Cape started to come forward and then right after that Abraham said no but look in the middle St. Patrick's look at Charles she came forward for a little bit but started to lag behind and it looked as if Kaylee Abraham just nipped everybody and Charles I think it was in lane four Azuria Charles coming in second it was a close one and uh, Janiah Mark well, let's see the result says Kaylee Abraham 14.13 Janiah Mark of St. Patrick 14.34 and uh, Avery Cape of St. Andrew 14.36 wow interesting interesting really interesting uh, Mark coming in as the fastest seeded athlete, but you saw the composure of, of, of that young lady in lane six. She was just having her time dancing away. You saw some confidence, and I mean, look at that run. That was awesome. Yes, they, they both won their respective heats, and the difference really was that Abraham had little or no competition in her heat. So you knew she had a lot, of, lot in the tank George, remaining. Noah Charles. Lane two. St. David. Tyler Bain. Lane three. Mikhail Sears. St. Andrew. Lane four. St. Patrick. Kenroy John. Lane five. St. Andrew. Damari Paul. Lane six. St. George. Adam Jones. Lane 7, St. David, Alfonso Douglas. Lane 8, Kariku and Peter Martinik. Kedon Yuck. Oh, let's see. You know where my, my money lies on this one. 13.47. Look for Mikhail Sayers in lane 3. He's been a live wire yesterday and all day today. Kenroy John ran a good 13.89 coming into this one as well. 13.46 by Edimari Paul. 13.69 by Abraham Jones. Four of them clocking on the 14 in this one to come into this one. Bernard? And my money's on Demari Paul. I, I, I hate to disappoint you because I, I know where you're at. You're going to lose your money. <laughs> <laughs> Where's your money, Clyde Rondell John? 13.99. Your is on 13.99. That's Alfonso, Alfonso Douglas. Douglas of St. David. So Clyde Rondell John is going to stay loyal. Uh, not loyal, but I, I think I saw something there that he could really challenge and put some pressure on these, these youngsters. All right. Well, it will only be. A matter of time before we get down to the finish line. And we will have the details. Uh, the Facebook the Facebook Live is on Sears. It's not a betting event, but the Facebook Live is on Sears. However, um, Kenroy John from St. Patrick had the fastest qualifying time coming in, did he? Yes. No, it no. was um, it Demari was 
It was Paul. Paul, yes. The Marie Paul. The Marie Paul. Yeah, and I, and I think the Saint fastest Ma time, 13.46. Yeah, St. Andrew should go one to win this. So, the Marie Paul of St. Andrew. And uh, Mikhail says Bernard has just. He's, uh, he moved. He was on Jones. Were you on Jones a no, while ago? No, no, no. Paul from the you start. Paul, all right. Well. I am going based on what I saw a while ago. I, I hear you. We didn't have St. George as the top contender, but she ended that race as the number one. So I'm still keeping an open mind, an open feel. It's about execution. Well, the enthusiasm these young folks would have provided surpasses all expectations. Yes. Yeah. All expectations. We are live. Uh, compliments GUT, the Grenada Union of Teachers, their mission to unite, represent, and empower members of the teaching profession of the nation. We're also powered by Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. This is uh, Primary School, National Primary School Athletic Championships 2024, GUT Nexa. On your screen, the Boys, 80 meters on the seven. A lot of back and forth. Quite sure most of the times the things that they're trying to sort out are neither here nor there with these young ones. At age six and five. Yeah, they just want to run. They just need to run. Yes, just want to run. But don't count on lane four, eh? St. Patrick. Okay, so these are... That's the difference on the monitor. There was... Uh, something totally different as to what was on the field so the lane assignments has been sorted out they've been sorting out the lane assignments so Kieran York from Karaku and Pity Martinique is in lane one Alfonso Douglas of St. David is in two Kenroy John of St. Patrick is supposed to be in three but that looks like an athlete from St. George that's in lane three it looks like Adam Jones so I don't know what they're going to do there because what's been displayed on a Jumbo monitor is something totally different to what we're seeing on the track. So maybe something has got to change. Either he has got to change or the information on the screen has to change. All right, they've done that. Running out of lane one, Kariku and Peter Martinik. Kedon York, St. David in lane two, Alfonso Douglas in lane three, St. Patrick Kenroy John in lane four, St. Andrew Damari Paul, lane five, St. George Adam Jones, lane six, Mikhail Sears, St. Andrew, and in lane seven, St. David Tyler Bain, lane eight, St. George Noah Charles. like to say uh, hello to a good work by our camera crew. The next shot that you would see is from Cook Oliver. That's him right there in the blue sleeves. You're going to get a close-up on him as soon as the official moves out. Quite sure. It's a good shot we're going to get right here. That's it. And the false start. They're calling them. Oh. If you've seen anything more suspect than what you just saw I would bet not that looks almost hilarious here we go again take a look at this yes well, that's almost hilarious 
It's not as, as bad, as, it's not as dangerous as it came across, but uh, it looks almost insane. Well, again, it's the under seven boys, and they always seem to have a bit of drama whenever they're on track for a final event. And drama comes from the official in this one. Have you seen the replay? <laughs> Well, I think the, the youngster in lane five recognized that he fall started. So again, they're, they're a bit more away than they were yesterday. That move was to prevent Sears from getting to the finish line. He has had a history of going straight to the finish line, fall start or not. So they're on the starter's orders again. Off, away, gone. Here we go. This looks like Sears. That's an awesome shot from our drone. Sears is ahead just marginally. He's extending his lead now. This is Sears. Mikhail Sears. He's going to be caught. Is he? No, he's not going to be caught. Mikhail Sears wins. Adam Jones comes in second. That was a fantastic run from Mikhail Sears. The birthday boy is celebrating and he's celebrating with zest. Yeah, really awesome. Awesome. He lived true to form. Uh, he got out quickly and he never looked back. There he goes, Mikhail says. Just look at him go. Really outstanding run from Sears. Right there, he knew he had it. He was huffing, he was puffing, but he was there ensuring that he crossed the finish line. I'm quite sure that was Mommy. He got some uh, congratulations from Mommy. More ice cream and cake probably would be negotiated. It's a birthday. Yeah. The, these young men, they are going to remember these races for the rest of their lives. This was a, this was a pretty competitive race after Sears. Uh, Sears was away. There was Sears and then there was everybody else. Sears, St. George, and then... Alfonso Douglas coming in third in this one. But we're not going to take away the joy from Mikael Sears. He ran 13.34. So 13.34. Now that's a lot faster than what he did to qualify. 13.34. What's the record on this one? I'd love to know. I'm not seeing it in front of me here, but I would love to know what's the record. Clyde Rondell, John, can you pull that up for us quickly? Uh, let me get it for you quickly, Jason. Thirteen point four six. Adam Jones coming in second, and the third was well Alfonso Douglas. He came in third. Alfonso Douglas of Saint David. Thirteen point seven six. Record here, is Jason. Thirteen point one zero. Oh, that's that's pretty quick. Thirteen point one zero. Camelo Charles. Oh, Camelo was a rocket back in his day. Yeah, awesome, awesome run. <laughs> Mikael if, if, Sears. If you notice, Sears slipped a little bit on his start. He didn't get the clean start as everyone else. He slipped just a little bit on the start. And uh, he still made up the ground quickly. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. He established himself. And he was out on your monitor. We are looking at the short put. That's the girl's... On the 13 short put finals, mm -hmm. Sherry Ann is down on the field. I'm quite sure she's going to chat with Sears if she can get a hold of him. But more importantly, she's going to give us an update on the girls' short put on the 13 finals. But these on the nines, they've thrilled us. They've warmed our hearts. Congratulations to all of them. They've been nothing short of fantastic. As we keep saying, it is the first stage of a career in athletics. And if they start so well, it means that 
once they continue to be disciplined, take the training serious, as you heard from um, the youngster from St. Patrick's, it means that in the next few years, you can really look out for these names. Mikhail Sears picking up gold in the boys on the 7, 80 meters. He picked up a, a medal in the 60, 60 meters. Did that on the tape yesterday. We've got the 200 uh, meter event coming up here now. This is the 200 meter girls under 11. We will get the lane assignments from the house announcer in just a little bit. The girls 200 meter under 11. in the Lime St. George and a big shout out to our principal Mrs. Patricia Williams Prince and a dedicated teacher Mr. Shard Noel as we get set for our next event so the unofficial scouts are talking on social media Unofficial scouts, they're scouting for talent for their alma maters. Already the schools in the north are seem to having a fight over Mikhail Sears, who Your wants him to go to McDonald College or SAS or Karia Ku and Peter Martinik, Kalia Lindor, Lane 2, St. John, Alia Francis, Lane 3, St. Andrew. Viva Panchu. Lane four, St. Patrick, Latoya Williams. Lane five, St. Patrick, Jeno Kanai. Lane six, St. George, Kaden Langheim. Lane seven, St. John, Tiana Franklin. Lane eight, St. Andrew, Renaya Ranger. Well, that's the field for the girls, 200 meter under 11. The fastest qualifier in this one, Janelle Kanai of St. Patrick, 29.70, followed by Panchu. Panchu, who clocks 29.79. She's running out of lane three. Yes, I think the races with Panchu, Kanai, and... Uh, Williams, Latoya Williams. Well, that's the start. We're going to find out in less than 30 seconds who has what. Let's see. This looks like coming out of lane five in St. Patrick. That looks like Kanai. That's Kanai. Kanai is in lane five. Kanai is ahead. She comes ahead of everyone, but then she's taken. They're still going torso to torso. It looks like Kefa Panchu has just lunged ahead, but here comes Kanai. It's Kanai Panchu. Kanju Panai. It looks like Panchu just made it across the line. Kanai will hold on for a close second. And that was a great, fantastic, awesome. Any other adjective can you find to describe that race? Uh, that young lady is a beautiful, beautiful form runner. Just, just look at the form. Which one? Panchu. 
beautiful form right now. Look at that. Look at the legs. Uh, she made it across. It was a good run by the both of them. And uh, Panchu, St. Andrew, 30.10, a lot slower than what she qualified with, but it was enough to get her the gold medal. Janelle Kanai of St. Patrick, 30.18. And Williams of St. Patrick, Latoya Williams, 30.94. That's your gold, silver, and bronze in the girls' 200 meter under 11. Two to four. Next up, we will have the boys. Pancho did run a really good race. Let's go to the lane assignments for the boys on the 11. St. John, lane 7, Mikael Rutchard, in lane 8, St. John, Dillon Alexander. Mm -hmm. All right, well, sherri you've got uh, the winner of the previous event there. You've got 30 seconds with her. So, Viva Pancho, congratulations to you. Um, you told me that you won divisional champs for Brian Sports in St. Andrew. How happy are you with, with your performance over the past two days? I'm very happy with my performance. Even though it had been hard to get first place. Well, sherri we've got to cut you here All now. Right, they're gone. The they're off. They're running. They're gone. This is the start of the boys. 200 meter under 11. Coming out of lane two with a serious mentality is Kai Kador of St. Mark. Kai Kador of St. Mark. He came around the bend. Surely he's ahead of everybody on this one. He will come off the bend now. Kai Kador. He's slowing up a little bit. But look at the athlete in lane four. This looks like Ronan Lessi. Ronan Lessi. Lessi is lunging. Lessi is going. Lessi is going to be beaten on the tape. Is he going to be beaten? on the tape just in the nick of time that looks like McIntosh McIntosh caught Lessie just on the nick of the tape McIntosh is the guy who provided the upset Ronan Lessie he looked a little too cool and McIntosh dealt with it Clyde really good run there by McIntosh I think he pushed Lessie all the way Lessie recognizing that he had the competition and had to respond but the momentum was already there with McIntosh. And so he had the strength just to power through the line and uh, causing a serious upset. Because I think coming halfway, you expected Lessie to really get into o o overdrive. And he didn't do that. He maintained form. But the momentum was with McIntosh. And so he has completed what I would say is a serious upset. 29.09, that's Akadon McIntosh. Akadon McIntosh winning the boys under 11-200. sherri talk to us, you there. So I have with me Akadon. Akadon, you fought and you fought hard for that win. Speak to us ab ab about that run. You were closely um, edged there by uh, the athlete from um, St. David. Huh? Tell me about your race. You ran, you came first, but you had good competition from St. David. So while he gathers his, his thoughts, we are, we are going to speak with, uh, with Leslie. Leslie came in second. Speak to us about the race. How, how do you feel? I feel great. How hard did you train for today? 90%. Na 90%? What happened to the other 10%? I don't know, I don't know. When I was coming around the bend, I don't know what happened to me. Something just happened. Okay. So you lost today to your colleague from um, St. Patrick. But how, how do you feel overall about your performances yesterday and today? Good. Good? All right. Well, congratulations to you. You want to tell us now how, how you feel about your win? Great. How hard did you train? 100%. Would you say that that win was a difficult one? Yes. Why so? Because he was right behind me. 
and I know how to bow. So you bow. All right, congrats. Um, you also ran a good race too. Tell us, how, how do you feel? Good. How hard did you train? 90%. You train 90%? And how happy are you with your results? 80 so, so you're happy for your effort? Yes. Uh, thank you so much. That was the athlete from the 200 meter on the 11. We now return to our commentary team. Yeah, well, they've uh, been very short on words, naturally. And uh, you would understand why. If they just want to get out and run. Here's what we've got now. We've got the 200 meter on the 15. We're starting with the boys. Let's go for the lane assignments. Lane 2, St. George. Job Hines. Lane 3, St. Andrew. Nathaniel Richardson. Lane four, St. George, Jamario Ahmed, Amadi. St. George, lane four, Omario Amadi. St. Andrew, lane five, Rondell Williams. Lane six, St. Patrick, Davis Jeremiah. Lane seven, St. Patrick, Tristan Wellington. Lane eight, Kariku and Peter Martinik, Nick one, Roberts. Well, those are your lane assignments. I've never heard it like that before. I've, it uh, Welch in one, Hines in two, Richardson in three, Amede in four, Williams in five, Jeremiah in six, Wellington in seven, and Roberts in eight. The boys 200 meter under 15, the fastest qualifying time coming into this one. 26.77 by Rondell Williams of St. Andrew. Bernard? Yeah, you sh we should expect uh, St. Andrew 1-2 in this one. Williams, uh, Richardson, they are the favorites coming into this one. Uh, Richardson did 27.21. Yeah, Williams, Richardson, Job, uh, Job Hines. Start, up, called back. And these are the big boys. Hello and greetings to all our friends on social media. And those of you viewing from all parts of the globe. Let's see who we credit for this one. Maybe lane six, just maybe, still too close to call. We may have to slow down a little bit more, but it looks like six. It looks like Jeremiah. It doesn't matter now, really. The entire field is caution. No one is going to be thrown out. It was six. There were two or three of them that did it. Six, seven, and eight. But six was the initiator. <laughs> That's uh, Jeremiah. So Jeremiah brings a caution to the field. Greetings to Dr. Paul Roberts, fellow broadcaster, journalist, veteran, principal of the school of broadcasting, I call him. Up, out, away, they're gone. The boys 200 meter under 15. Immediately, just as you call it, look at lane six. That looks like Rondell Williams. Williams out of lane six. St. Andrew 1 and 2. It's Williams and Richardson. Richardson and Williams. Richards and Williams whipped. Ah, oh, well, it's too close to call. But Richardson is starting to lunge forward just a little bit. Richardson will take it. Williams will come second. And it looks like uh, Wellington of St. Patrick may just come in third. 
but St. Andrew one and two, Richardson, Nathaniel Richardson one, and uh, Rondell Williams two. Both athletes from St. Andrew, the one, the two, the double. Talk to us, guys. True to form. Uh, uh, this was expected in this one. Williams just a uh, superior athlete. Uh, with, a, with a little bit of tweaking here and there, he's going to be a good one. Good form. Good form. Strong. Strong. I think the upset in this year really is the, is the athlete from St. Patrick to come in third. Yeah, he was nowhere in the radar. Richardson doing really well. I think um, Williams had a, a really decent day. He he was really exceptional in the in the prelims, you know. But for Richardson to come in here and to, to take this victory, it, it's really, in my view, still an upset because my money would have been on Williams seeing the form that he came in, you know. Um, and definitely you expected him to deliver. But here comes Richardson who, again, ran pretty well through his prelims, but um, Williams was the, the, the favorite. All right, let's take you over to the lane assignments because they we're getting ready for the girls' 200 meters. We've got the lane assignments for the girls' 200 meters. Silver medalist, St. Andrew, Rhonda Williams, 27.48 seconds. And walking and going home, running home with the gold. St. Andrew, 27.18 seconds. The Vandal Richardson. So they're just sorting out lane assignments. It was some tweeting so between one and two and three and four. They're sorting that out. While they do that, I'm quite sure we might be able to accommodate a quick chat from Sherry Ann. She's got uh, Richardson with her. Sherry Ann, are you there? You've got. All right, well, we're going to take the lane assignments because uh, we've got to get to this one. They're ready for the lane assignments so in the 200-meter girls so on the 15. For next 200 meter. Running out of lane two, Karieku, Desiree Matthew. Lane three, Sananju, Destiny Harry. Lane four, St. David, Angelica Street. Lane five, St. George, Shadow Jones. Lane six, St. Andrew, Michaela Williams. St. Patrick, lane seven, Zina Alexis. Lane eight, Kariku and Peter Martinik, Deanna Mark. Well, this one is going to be loaded. And I have absolute, I'm not making any predictions in this one because all these ladies in the middle of this pack have shown since yesterday that they are far more capable than they've been letting on. They come in, they do stuff in the preliminaries, and then when we get to the finals, we see something almost spectacular from them. Hey. I'm not going to make any predictions on this one. Harry is in three. Street is in four, Jones is in five, Williams is in six, and on the outside with Alexis and Mark, Ledlow and Matthew, the upset could still come. This is going to be nail biting. Yes, I agree. Uh, the Street, Harry, even Jones is in a, is in a mix here. Well, let's look at the times quickly because uh, Jones came in with 29.50. But uh, the fastest time on this one was Street, 28.79. So 28.79, that's Street. She's running out of lane four representing St. David. That's her right there in the middle of your screen. She's running out of lane four. That's Angelica Street. And uh, Destiny Harry, she's been on show for the last two days. She's been doing very well in the long jump and the high jump, a couple of field events, and she's represented well in the sprints as well. She's representing St. Andrew, Destiny Harry. So Harry has been good as well. And Michaela Williams. Never leave out Michaela Williams from St. Andrew, 29.09. She, qua she qualified with 29.09. It's not a bad time at all. She's a dark horse in this race, actually. 
they're on the starter's orders. You can almost feel the tension. Looking at it on your screen, it is real. Look at the intense look between three, four, five, and six. David. It's a clean start. It's a clean start immediately. She started to make up the stagger. That's Angelica Street. She's made up the stagger already. She's a powerful athlete, but she's got a whole lot of work to do because look who's coming around the bend very first. Who's coming around the bend very first is Shondell Jones. Jones, but this is the time that Destiny Harry starts to lunge forward. And there goes Harry. There goes Harry. Harry is gone. She, they're not going to catch her. There goes Harry. Harry wins. Destiny Harry wins. And there's a toss-up between two and three between Angelica Street and Michaela Williams. You call Michaela Williams the dark horse. Well, there's a toss-up there for second place between Street and Williams. But there was no doubt that Destiny Harry went straight to the finish line without any contest. Again, we see you, 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 when you have the competition like this, you just can't predict. There is Street coming in with the fastest time in the prelims, but look at Harry. Look at Harry go. Um, Jones there in, in, in lane five, looking decent, looking as if she's, she's putting in the work, but Harry just has what it takes. She's the stronger of the two, and you, if you look sharp, it just may be St. Andrews 1-2. I think it's St. Andrews one too. Harry slowed down a little bit. Maybe she wasn't even contemplating the record. Uh, she did this in 29.38. 29.38. Now that's a little bit faster than what she clocked to start. 29.38. Look who came in second. Michaela Williams, St. Andrew, 29.55. Just the torso separating Williams and Jones because even though they clocked the same time, just the torso separating the both of them. And that was the difference between silver and bronze. So St. Andrew picking up gold and silver in Harry and Williams and the Shadow Jones, St. George, clocked in third. Yeah, good run there by Destiny Harry. We called it. Now, Sherry Ann, you've got Destiny. Tell me. Destiny 29.38 is, is your winning time. Um, speak to us about that, that particular race in, ter in terms of how you, you strategize for it. I feel very good because as I was right there, I was very tired. So I have got to give up, but I must make it too. So at what point, you said when you reached maybe around the 80 meter um, distance, you realized that you, you had to push a bit more? Yeah. And how hard did you actually train? Very hard. Congratulations to you. And we, we will try to get the um, second position very quickly before the medal presentation. Um, how do you feel about your performance? Good. How hard did, did you train? So, I trained a lot. I did not expect I come in second. But I'm glad I come in second. So you, you see what hard work does? Yes. All right. You'll continue to train hard. Miss St. George, you fought to the very end. You got the bronze medal. Speak to us. No, uh, not bad. I just happy I give points to my to my parish. I just happy for giving up points. Okay. And how hard did you actually train? Hard. Very hard. Congratulations to you. And it's back to Jason and the team in the commentary booth. Okay, so we're gonna go straight to the medal presentation. Thank you very much, Sherry. The level of competition is really heartwarming. And the young ladies, you can see at the end of a race, um, it seems to be so still, ladies so and relaxed. And we have another medal, medal presentation. This is a good, this is and good competition. And to assist us with the distribution of these medals, we have Mrs. Reticia Smith Boyd, the general manager of Nexa Credit Union, and Mr. Tommy Duncan, second vice president of the Grenada Union of Teachers.
Dash under 13. In third position, Teresa Fraser of St. Andrew. Silver medalist, Ikona Francis of Caracou and Petite Martinique. And our gold medalist, ladies and gentlemen, Haley Terrell of St. Andrew. Congratulations, ladies. Medal presentation for event number 46, the boys 100 meter dash under 13. Bronze medalist, Lionel Charles of St. David with a time of 13.23 seconds. Silver medalist, Akel Briggs of St. George, 13.12 seconds. And our gold medalist, Deshaun Oliver of St. Patrick, 12.73 seconds. Event number 50, the girls, 800 meter dash under seven. Bronze medalist, Avery Cape of St. Andrew, with a time of 14.36 seconds. Silver medalist, Janiah Mark of St. Patrick, 14.34 seconds. And our gold medalist for this event, ladies and gentlemen, Kaylee Abraham of St. George. 14.13 seconds. We'd like to thank Mrs. Boyk for her assistance with the medal presentation. Medal presentation for event number 51. The boys 80 meter dash under seven. Bronze medalist, Alfonso Douglas of St. David, with a time of 13.76 seconds. Silver medalist, Adam Jones of St. George, with a time of 13.46 seconds. And our gold medalist, Mikhail Sears of St. Andrew, 13.34 seconds. Medal presentation for event number 60, the girls under 11. Or Bronze medalist, Kayla Lendor of Caracou and Petit Martinique. A distance of 29.67 meters. In second position, silver medalist, Carleen George of St. Andrew. 32.15 meters. And our gold medalist, Jamie Smith of St. David. Of St. George's, 39.52 meters. Event number 52, the girls 200 meter dash under 11. A bronze medalist, Latoya Williams of St. Patrick. A time of 30.94 seconds. 
Silver medalist, Janelle, Janelle Kanai of St. Patrick, 30.18 seconds. And our gold medalist, Viva Pantru of St. Andrew, 30.10 seconds. And ladies and gentlemen, this concludes this segment of the medal presentations. And again, we would like to thank Mrs. Retisha Smith-Boyd, the general manager of the Nexa Credit Union, and Mr. Tommy Duncan, second vice president of the Grenada Union of Teachers for assisting with the medal presentations. A pair refers to another member or account holder at Nexa Credit Union who is registered on the mobile app. Members can pay their pairs by using Pay a Pair. In order to pay a pair, members must set up a pair first. To pay a pair, you have to do the following. Create your mobile ID and add a pair. Tap on Manage, tap on Add Pair. To set or update the mobile ID, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Settings under Account Settings. Then select Personal Settings. Go to Mobile ID and select Edit. For first time setup, only enter your desired mobile ID in the new mobile ID text box. For changes to the existing mobile IDs, enter the current mobile ID in use, then enter the new desired mobile ID in the text boxes. You can either make a one-time peer-to-peer transfer or schedule regular recurring payments. To add a pair, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments. Then, Manage Pays. Under Pairs, click Add. Enter a nickname of choice for the pair you wish to add. Enter the six-digit account number of the pair you wish to add, followed by dash 10, dash 0. Enter your mobile ID. Enter your pair's mobile ID. Enter a transaction reference of your choice. Click Next and review the details before submitting. To do a peer-to-peer -peer transfer, select the menu bar located at the left side of the app and go to Payments, then Make a Payment or Pay a Pair. Click Select Pay and on the pairs, choose the pair you wish to transfer money to. Click Select Account and choose which account you wish to transfer from. Enter the amount you wish to transfer. Ensure a transaction reference is entered. You can use the Schedule Payment option by selecting the date of the transfer and arrange for recurring payments by assigning a frequency. Click Review and ensure the information is accurate before submitting. For further queries or assistance, contact us via WhatsApp at 473-405-4061 or email eServices at nexacreditunion.com. Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. St. John. Lane 4, St. John. Jemiah John. Lane 5, St. Andrew. Teresa Fraser. Out of Lane 6, St. David. Shaquana Paul, Lane 7, St. George, Micaiah George, out of Lane 8, St. Patrick, Michaela Sylvan, Lane 1, Darcel Barry, St. Patrick. So that was his line up there for the 400 meter on the 13 girls. This one has the potential to do some damage. Look for Teresa Fraser of St. Andrew. She ran 63.33 to qualify. The fastest time, she's running out of lane 5. And 66.26 uh, .26 in uh, uh, Kalina Modest of St. Andrew, also running out of lane 3. Arena Hosford of St. David is in two. 
and uh, Makaya George of St. George is in lane 7. So, the girls, 400 meter on the 13, uh, that's uh, from St. George, Michaela George. Yeah, look for Shaquan Nepal as a dark horse in this one from St. David. She completed her in 66.19 going to have to do a lot better than that but here we go it's 400 meters it's not a long distance it's not a short one either the combination of speed stamina and strategy will come into play here in 400 meters still too early to call let's see who is going to make the first move Still very much at jog in the park. Heading up the back straight. It starts to show a little bit more purpose now. A little bit more purpose. That's Modest coming out of lane three. In the meantime, the pack out in front. It looks like a Makaya George from St. George. George starting to pull away from the pack. That's George from St. George. Starting to pull away from the pack, but Modest is right there. So too is Fraser. Modest, Fraser, and George. Modest, Fraser, and George. But Shaquanda Paul is uh, trying to challenge, but uh, it's uh, Modest and Fraser. Modest and Fraser. Fraser starts to lunge forward. Fraser is locking down. She just makes it. And uh, the close call between George and Modest for second, but uh, it was. Teresa Fraser of St. Andrew, who picked up the goal in the girls' 400 meter under 13. I'm making this one to be about 64 and some. Yeah, for Fraser came in with the leading time by some. So she ran to form. It was still pretty tight, even coming down here. And this is where she started to accelerate put her foot on the gas a little bit she had just a little bit more in the in the tank just a little bit more she used it she started to shut down and then realized that hey i've got company on my right shoulder this is george coming and just in the nick of time she made it across the finish line yeah good run there by freezer again True to form, she did all that was necessary. Again, the pacing of her race was really good. Um, she knew exactly where she wanted to turn it on, you know, and uh, I think the, the rest of the, the pack allowed her to run her type of race. And uh, hence, she comes in with the gold medal at the end. 65.14 is a pretty decent run for her. 65.36 second is George and the third is uh, Kalina Modest of St. Andrew 65.71 so St. Andrew picking up one and a three and they've sandwiched George from St. George now the girls 400 meter on the 13 is in the books and call it close for primary school sports 2024 coming up we've got the boys 400 meter under 13 after that we've got the 4 by 100 meter relay under 15 we'll also have the 4 by 1 the 15 girls and boys that's the 4 by 1 on the 15 girls and boys and the 4 by 1 on the 11 girls and boys 4 by 4 open girls and 4 by 4 open boys so we're coming down to the final few events this is the last
this one here is the last of the individual events after this one we've got the relays with the boys 400 meter under 13 decent crowd has pulled in here today as compared to yesterday and um, they have uh, come out to support this stand is totally filled and then of course they started to accommodate um, patrons to the southern side of the stadium generally the southern side would feature more athletes they've uh, opened that up to accommodate more patrons top and bottom is filled on this one and then of course over on the other side oh, look at that that's uh, just below us yeah that's really good to see the support for these youngsters and they've opened up the athlete stand so down in the bottom you've got uh, patrons over there some athletes who are not participating anymore up to the top left hand corner of your screen but the majority of those seats are occupied by paying patrons yeah, it's it's a good sight to behold I think come next week tuesday wednesday thursday you will be looking forward to much more persons in attendance well that's certainly on on thursday there will be that's the vip area and the outside of the ip so they're outside the vvip that's just a few doors down from where we're at so a lot of the sponsors and uh, members of uh, ministers of government and uh, officials special invited guests members of the Grenada Union of Teachers and the Nexa Credit Union some on the outside some in the air-conditioned comfort of the VIP or VVIP they here they don't care about being in VIP because they just want to be jumping and shouting and screaming for their children their school parish so these games are powered by the Grenada Union of Teachers to unite represent and empower members of the teaching profession and the nation and of course nexa credit union with you wherever, wherever your road leads what we will do is that we will conduct some commerce pay some bills make sure that we remain in the loop to keep you on the air and in the loop with us so we'll take a quick commercial break and then when we come back we go track side for the boys 400 under 13. Kick things up a gear with a Nexa Credit Union Cruise Control Vehicle Loan and begin your journey with your ideal ride. Go wherever and whenever you like with the extra space to carry everything you need. Arrive refreshed and ready for the day in comfort. Hit the road together on family adventures to make unforgettable memories. Feel the wind at your back. Upgrade your lifestyle easily with a Cruise Control Vehicle Loan for new or used vehicles. Join Nexa Credit Union now and get your vehicle loan. Terms and conditions apply. Visit us today. Call 440-1354 or our website at www.nexacreditunion.com or email us at loans at nexacreditunion.com and hit the road with Nexa Credit Union. Nexa Credit Union. With you wherever your road leads. But when you need someone to help you to your feet, I'll be that beacon to your highest peak. Oh, I'll be right next to you, no, I will never live. Come on, take my hands, we got everything we need. Cause you can look to me, yes, I can. whenever you're in need. Yes, you can. Just call on me and I'll be on my way. Hey, hey, hey. I'll be by your side, by your side. never could divide. Wherever you are, 
Nexa Credit Union, with you wherever your road leads. Deshaun Oliver, St. Patrick, and lane eight, Giovanni Travenier, St. Mark. Well, this one has some fireworks attached to it. Jaquan Knight of St. John is in one. Aaron Roberts of St. David is in two. Omari Brown of St. Andrew in three. John Calise of St. Andrew in four. Deshaun Oliver of Pat St. Patrick in five. Giovanni Trevini of St. Mark in six. In eight, sorry. So there's no lane five and no lane seven. So what we have is one, two, three, four. Deshaun Oliver is in six and uh, Giovanni is in eight. Lane five is empty and lane seven is also vacant. Your pick on this one. Anybody has anything to add on this one? I'm looking at Oliver. 61.60 was his qualifying time. He was the fastest qualifier. What says you? I am in agreement with you. It, it would be Oliver has been the, the star, really, on under 13 boys in this, in this meet. So it will be Oliver Briggs. Um, I, I will go with the favorite Oliver, but I'm still keeping my eye on lane four in Caliste. John Caliste out of St. Patrick in lane four. Yeah, that's a good bet. So the favorite there, in my view, is, but that young man on screen, I think he has something that he wants to deposit before he leaves the national stadium. That's he wants John. to show that he can really come up trumps. That's John Caliste. He's from St. Andrew. He qualified with a 63.26. So he wasn't the fastest qualifier, but he is in... Lane four he came in third in the qualifiers. Yes, um, Noel was just ahead of him, 62.98. Noel, who is in lane five, has just inserted him in five. So there is a lane five. He just came back in. That's a Giovanni Noel. He clocked 62.98 to qualify. Giovanni Noel of St. Patrick, lane six. Deshaun Oliver of St. Patrick, lane eight. Giovanni Travenier of St. Mark. So lane five has been added. Giovanni Noel has been added in lane five. He was queued as a DNS, but now he's here. So only lane Seven is vacant. No Akel Cumberbatch. Just settling himself. That's John Caliste. Deshaun Oliver from St. Patrick is in six. 61.60 he comes in as the favorite oh, speed stamina strategy and now, nerves has to be added to this one. For a third time, they're down. And for this time, they're off and away. Keep your eyes on lane two because Aaron Roberts from St. David has gone out very hard. He's already picked up Omari Brown of St. Andrew. He's gone out very hard. Will it be costly? Uh, time will tell. 
Still early days to call it. We're just coming around now, completing 200 meters. This is where you're going to start separating the milk from the coffee. This is where we start separating oil and water. As impossible as it may seem there, but practically it is, but metaphorically, it's not. Here we come around, St. Patrick out in front. The two athletes from St. Patrick. This is Noel and Oliver. Noel and Oliver. Oliver is lunging ahead. He's leaving Noel. Oliver is coming forward in the lane six. That's Oliver. He just crosses the finish line. Noel is right behind him. Giovanni Noel and the St. Patrick will pick up one and two in the boys 400 meters under 13. That was a great run from uh, Deshaun Oliver. Yeah, again, Oliver staying true to form. Um, you can't bet against him, you know. Um, but what I like to see is that the field of athletes, full, second, and third, um, well, we all knew Oliver came through. But you look at that other athlete from St. Patrick, you look at St. David having that stamina. These boys, I can tell you, they must be tired because they would have competed throughout the day and yesterday at, and yesterday at the under 15 level mm -hmm. and to come and run a 400 meter like this uh oliver you're an outstanding athlete well saint david would pick up third that's aaron roberts and uh, look at what the time says 63.35 for the gold medal and 64.08 for the silver that's oliver and noel one and two and Aaron Robert, St. David, 65.62, picking up bronze. Now, gentlemen, we are down to the techniques and speed. Time for the relays. So Deshaun Oliver. Yes, this young man has really distinguished himself over the two days. It's not just on the track. He was pretty good on the field, so... So he did it. He did it all for over these two days. Yeah, really, really outstanding from him. I must say kudos to Roberts um, coming there for the third position. I think he he really tried well. Um, he was not really anyway, you know, looked at, but he had the stamina. He got out. He tried to pace himself. He stood just behind um, St. Patrick and ensured that he came in with, for the, the bronze medal. So it, it, it says a lot about the resilience of these young boys. And, I mean, they could only grow better from here. Yes. Yeah, so Robert, in fact, um, timed his run very well. He kept up with the lead runners. And he had something at the end. That's what took him, that's what took him into third position. So there's a lot to work with here with these with these young men uh, uh, and in this in the short sprint the shorter sprints and at the 400 meters there are quite a lot to work with here and uh, not just that Deshaun Oliver but as you said that other young man from St Patrick that is Giovanni Noel he ran an extremely good race extremely good race. In fact, at one time, he, with, with about 20, 25 meters ago, seems as though he was going to put, put up some sort of a fight to Oliver. Faded in the end, but it started that way. Yeah, really exceptional run by these youngsters. And, you know, you have to feel good about what you've seen so far. This, on the screen, you're seeing... This is an 80-meter race. Yeah, that's the 80-meter under nine boys. Under nine. 
80 meters on the line. This was earlier scheduled, but uh, I think they were doing the long jump, and so we had to reschedule this one. So this would be the final, before we get into the relays, the final individual event, individual, event, mm -hmm. individual final before the relay. As you can see on your screen, we have two athletes from St. Patrick, two from St. Andrew, one from St. George, one from Carrico, and the other one, two from Carrico, sorry, and one from St. David. So we're going to take in the lane assignment. St. George, lane four, Kyle John, St. Andrew. Lane five, Javante McIntosh, Caracou and Petit Martinique. Lane six, Don Rick Edwards, St. Andrew. Lane seven, Jelani Patterson, St. Patrick. And lane eight, Kazim Stafford, Caracou and Petit Martinique. So that's your lineup for the under nine boys. This here determines the fastest on the nine boy in Grenada, Karaku and P.T. Martini. So they're on the status orders. It's the under nine boys, they're gonna go again. And they're off. On the nine, 80 meter. Who will it be? It seems like Roger Thomas, but here comes the athlete from St. Andrew. He's pushing forward. Uh, St. Patrick's is there. St. Andrew seems to be St. Andrew. So we look. So we look at them as they, they, they move off the track. Uh, really. Good run, good run. Everybody out really nicely. They're all bunched, and you can't tell from here who's in the lead. But St. Patrick looking good. But here comes St. Andrew. St. George just looking around a bit. St. Andrew really looking forward now, trying to make sure that he asserts himself. And there he goes, crossing that line. Gold medal to him. That's Kyle John of St. Andrew picking up the gold medal in the under nine 80 meter dash. Congratulations to Kyle John on an excellent run. 12.16. Jelani Patterson, 12.31. And Donrick Edwards, 12.37. Interesting to note. Jel uh, Jelani Patterson had a time trial on his own to make sh to yes. make it into this the finals of the 80 meter um, on the nine dash. That's the de determination. That's that's this determination there, and it's also very 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 uh, heartening to to see character who had two athletes in this final. Some of the smaller branches, so when you see them make, get it into the finals, you really have to say hats off to them. 
You do have to. Simply put, St. Andrew was far superior team on display over these last two days. The competition now really is for second and third position, which will be decided with the relays. And you're quite right. The relays are going to really determine a lot in terms of second, third, and fourth. fourth. Because you look at um, St. David's 290.5, um, St. George on 321 and St. Patrick's on 364, uh, a lot can change um, during the next few relays, um, relay events. Well, the magic that has to happen, you mentioned St. David, but the magic that has to happen for St. David to be even a threat to St. George in third position, it means that St. George must not place in any of the relays and St. David must win at least three of the five relays. I see lightning striking in the same place three times before I see that. And I wear glasses. Uh, well, again, remember the relay points are 18 for a win. I did the math before I made the comment. You do it now and you tell me. So uh, it's, it's not impossible. It's still on the cards, but at the same time, uh, I think it, it, it comes down to who's able to execute better. Relays are really something you cannot predict. Well, One slip up of the baton and, and, and your team falls behind. That is so absolutely true. We, we have seen that time and time again. It's not the team with the fastest runners. It's the team that executes best that always wins and that's the idea the baton has to go around as we take in the next credit union staff relay so we go to the first handover and look at that gentleman go he seemed to have some athletic days that he put aside when he started to work. And they're really open up, opening up a, a big lead. Just waiting on his partner there to cross the line. <laughs> yeah, I think he did well to time his win. <laughs> all in the fun. It's all in the fun. These bo these boys and girls reliving their, their school days. Oh, I have, I have seen that. I have seen these fun races go south very, very quickly. But those that are really not fit. But you're quite right. This is all part of this is all part of it. Uh, it is next at GUT National Primary School Sports. So you will you will get a bit of the fun in there. Not well, just the athletes. The, the workers will do some. Will do some too. I think we may we may just need to um, have the teachers go up against the, the, the credit union members next next sports meet. <laughs> Well, you know, the, the teachers should have the advantage because there are some physical education teachers where the, these bankers, the quasi-bankers, they just sit there for most of the day. 
Well, I want to suggest that they begin this year to start training themselves and be prepared for that. <laughs> I, I think I'm hearing a challenge. Yeah. Well, I, I, I really hope to. I hope that uh, maybe it's something that they, they, they will take into consideration. Just to add a little bit of um, variety and spice to the games. Yes, so as the, the two days uh, wind down, I think there are a lot to be proud of. The, the, the organization was pretty good. And hats off to the organizers, Nexa. Hats off to GUT. Well executed sports as we wind down. And some young budding stars have emerged. Yeah, most definitely there, there are some burning stars that you know you, you anticipate the future for them once they continue to, to execute the way they are. The, the, the fact that you heard a, a few of them mention that they take their training seriously, this type of dedication is what is needed because um, this athletics could be a very tough thing to do, you know, to keep that body producing and producing um, outstanding times and really, you know, winning events and so on. It, it takes a lot. anything at the moment we're just getting set up for the 4x100 on the 15 relays the girls will go first they would be followed by the under 15 boys So we had a really wonderful two days with you. We hope that you enjoyed our broadcast. You can always count on TNR to give you quality. of the, the relay to be ready. Lane one, Go down to St. George. Lane two, St. Andrew. Lane three, St. David. Lane six, St. Patrick. Lane seven, Karyaku and Petit Martinique. So all seems to be ready for the start of the four by 100 meter under 15 girls really team that we can get the baton around the fastest will emerge winners
under Slato's orders. And they're off. Four by one. Let's see who makes up this tag early. Let's see the first handover as they approach. First handover. Seems to be Kariku, St. Patrick, St. Andrew, St. David, St. George. There they go. St. Andrew making up ground on St. Patrick, but it's Kariku on the outside. They look as they're going to make the handover. It's St. Andrew's making the first handover. Ah, uh, Kariku is there. St. Patrick, St. David is there. But it is St. Andrew. St. Andrew, third handover. There they are. St. Andrew. Coming out, it is St. David. It's St. George. St. David, St. George. St. Andrews is gone. There's no catching St. Andrew. She is gone. But the, it's St. George and St. David. Good, wonderful run there by St. Andrew. I think they did all the necessaries right. Got into the zone and showed that they passed the baton well. They did that. And you saw the, on the final handover, there was lots of acreage between them and the second position. And so there was nothing too hard for the, the anchor leg to do in bringing home victory to St. Andrew. Yes, you got it right. In the end, it was quite easy for St. Andrew. But what was quite pleasing in the exchange zones, all teams seem to have had very decent, commendable passes. So there is some technical work that would have gone, would have gone through to get, to get that effected so well. And it's something really that the coaches and, and, and so forth should be proud of. Four by 100 meters. Girls, that's in the back. Yes, and we're getting closer. Getting closer. It's a male version of under 15. Boys, 4 by 100 meters. That's up next. So there you have it on your screen. 55.78. St. Andrew. St. George, 58.26. And St. David's, the bronze medal. That's the girls, 4 by 100, under 15. As we look at it again. In St. David's, in St. Andrews is gone at that time. Now she comes around as we look at that exchange under the anchor leg. In, up, receive, and she's gone. Really good execution. Lane seven, St. Patrick. Yes, St. Andrew had a very smooth battle passing. So we're going down to the boys. The under 15 boys, four by 100. As soon as the house announcer is ready, we're gonna. Well, they're on the status orders. They're off. Four by one, under 15 boys. Let's see who will make the first handover. There goes St. George, making up the saga already. St. George, St. George is in. St. Andrews, uh, it's St. George, first handover. Kariku is there. St. Andrews, St. David. But it is St. George. As they approach the second handover. St. George ahead, Kariku following. St. Patrick's is there. A uh, nice clean handover from Kariku. St. George is also there. St. George is gone, but here comes St. Andrew. St. George, St. Andrew. 
St. George, St. Andrew, who will make the final? And it is uh, St. George making the handover. St. Andrews is there, but they're way ahead. Here comes St. George, but it's St. Andrew. St. Andrew running away. St. George trying to make ground, but we can tell you there's no catching St. Andrew, followed by St. Patrick Karaku. Again, really good execution. The battle passing from these boys were really smooth. And as you said earlier, the efficiency of the battle passing uh, determines who comes out trumps. Yeah, there may have been. I didn't see the white flag go up for the third exchange. But it seems as though the baton passing for St. Andrew was out of the zone. No, I think he was still in the zone. The he zone. Was still in the zone. Yeah. Okay. Looking at the zone, I think he was still in. Um, it's just that he ran a little bit faster than anticipated. But when you look at at, at the execution there, it was a little dicey, but they had a, that comfortable lead that he, it didn't matter much. Yes, in, in the end, for St. Andrew, it was quite easy. So, we are with the times of St. Andrew 53.12, St. George second position 54.77. St. Patrick, 55.76, the gold medal position. And it was good to see St. John finishing in this one, as was Kerko and Pity Magni. Next up on the track is the 4x100 meters under 11 girls. And then that will be followed by the 4 by 100 meters under 11 boys. Well, if the results of the 100 sprints for the under 11 tells us anything, it tells us that St. Andrew should have a pretty decent team um so to st patrick um you look at the spread of the athletes especially in the finals of these events and you 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 can tell that you know that you have that sort of quartet that could put um pressure on each other Again, we must commend you know the Grenadian public for their support of the primary school games. It's the next at GUT primary school games. I think they really supported well. The It's heartening to see the turnout and everyone seems to be enjoying themselves, cheering their, their students, cheering their, their, their sons, their daughters. I mean, it's, it's really exciting days for these youngsters, um, which can only, you know, get better. So we say thank you to Nexa, thank you for, to GUT for the hard work, the dedication, the effort. Um, thank you also must go to the meet director mr kwame hippolyte i know he himself and his team they worked really hard to make sure that the events of today run as smooth as smooth as they did um kudos goes to the, the coaches the managers you know who worked along because he himself alone can't do everything uh he needs the cooperation of all the teams and i think the teams 
really worked well. So we need to really give them, you know, some commendation. Absolutely. And the, the team managers, the teachers, the physical education teachers, all of those persons who would have supported their branch, you have done, you have done very, very well. Because the, what we have had over these last two days as we come to a close, as we wind down to a close, is a well-executed primary school national championship 2024. So while we await the start of the 4x1 on the 11, just take time out to say kudos to Mr. Clint Alexander and his team from Carico and PT Martinique. Mr. James and his team from St. Andrews, uh, Carmichael and these boys up there in St. Andrew. Uh, St. David's, Mr. Shamir Thomas and his team, I think they did outstandingly well. St. John, Keith St. Paul and his team, they, they must get a mention. Uh, St. George, Mr. Nimron Moses and his team that worked along with him. I think they, they, all the parishes made a, a really good effort. They, you know, as we would say in local parlance, they gave a good account of themselves. And so they can feel proud of what they've done. Um, just as the kids who have, you know, really listened and took to the, the efforts of the coaches and managers um, to make sure that they, they do what they do here today. So the entire team from St. Mark, smaller, smaller branches, uh, you would have done extremely well to, to get your athletes ready and for this meet also, as was St. John. So we're getting fo ready for the 4x1 on the 11 girls. It's been a fantastic time so far. Two days of serious competition. Great athletics. And again, we extend appreciation to the Nexa Credit Union for partnering with the Grenadier Union of Teachers to bring to you the GUT, the Nexa GUT National Primary School Games 2024. And I can see it's the beginning of a wonderful relationship in this regard between the Nexa Credit Union and the GUT. Of course, we want to Event number 70, the girls' 4x100 meter relay under 11. I think the youngsters should be really proud of how they would have acquitted themselves over these past two days. Yes, I, I think they, they, they must feel really proud. The parents on a whole will feel proud also. And one or two things stand out to me, <laughs> and it was one in particular, that statement of the young man that he got beat last year, he's coming back for them this year. <laughs> well... Let me give you a point standing, right? I want to give you the, the point standing as we had it before we went into the release. 
just to let you know St. Andrew, they were out front on 621.5 points. They were followed by St. Patrick on 364 points. St. George, 321 points. St. David, 290.5 points. Kairiku and Pity Martinique, 142 points. St. John, 127 points. And St. Mark, 101 points. So that was the point standing heading into the relay events. As you said earlier, for a number of these athletes who are in grade six or above, this is the last this is the last lap really for them. It's on to the secondary schools from twenty twenty five for a significant number of these athletes. So they have asked them to, to, to come back, come back, regroup, and they will, they will try it again. It seems that we are going to have the 4x100 meters on the 11 boys first rather than the girls who were out there initially. As we get ready for the start of this 4x100 meters on the 11 boys, getting themselves ready for a start. Let's go with the track side for lane two, the lanes. St. John. Lane three, St. George. Lane four, St. Andrew. Lane five, St. Patrick. Lane six, Kariaku and Petit Martinique. Lane seven, St. David. And there you have it. So all is set. And they're off. Four by one hundred meter. On the 11 boys out front, St. David, Kariku, St. Patrick, St. Andrew, St. George is there, but it is St. Andrew coming out first. St. Patrick is there, St. St. David is there. They're bunched tightly together. Kariku, St. David, St. Andrew. As we look at the handover, it's going to be St. Patrick coming out there. St. Patrick is gone. St. Patrick is gone. Here comes Kariaku, St. Andrew, St. George. But so far it is St. Patrick as they approach the, the anchor leg. St. Patrick in, out, and they're gone. Here goes St. Patrick, St. Patrick. Kariaku is there. St. Andrew is following St. Patrick. It is St. Patrick followed by St. Andrew. St. George and Kariaku really tied there for the third position but St. Patrick really excellent job done by these youngsters again remember this is under 11 the batter passing 
you, you, you really have to give the hats out to the coaches and so forth, the technical people who are working with these, with these youngsters. It was quite good. It was something to really see. Definitely something spectacular for them. It's really, really good to see the effort that they put in. You look at St. Patrick, determination, saying to him, hey, I'm giving it my all. This is my final race. There is nothing to hold me back. Coming across the line, celebrating his victory. St. Patrick, under 11 boys, 4x1 champions. Yeah, there was a close one this, between St. George and Carrick, who was uh, we haven't seen the official the official results just yet. St. Andrew with the silver and St. George got the bronze. So they would have just nipped Caracol for the bronze. We look at them there. There they go, all neatly bunched. And I think this is where the, the, the difference came. St. Patrick got that baton around really quickly. You look at him, he got the baton before everybody else, and he was gone. St. Caracol was there. Caracol did really well on that leg also. But right there is where the difference was made as he got in partner left out and he collected his baton and he is gone. And that, that's the good execution right there. He didn't stay in the crowd. He got himself away from everyone else so there's nothing to hamburg him from receiving his baton and he just went for home. Here's a good version of what would have just transpired. So we take the lean assignments. Lane five, St. George. Lane six, St. Patrick. Lane seven, St. Andrew. These young folks continue to thrill us as we go by the, the minute here at the National Stadium. And if this is the warm-up for what's to come next week, well, next week we've got to make sure all fire extinguishers are well-organized, well-serviced. quite agree with you Jason we just may need to have the Royal Grenada Police Force Fire Department on standby because these tracks will be blazing the girls 4 by 100 meter under 11 St. Mark is uh, in this one it's Traker they've got uh, Williams, Straker, James, and James, Zaya James and Zazel James. They're listed as the athletes on three and four. Can't tell because they're not wearing any numbers, so we can't identify them. St. George, they've got Jack Langine, Jadine Langine, Tavia Modest, and uh, Marie Dominique. And St. George is running out of lane five. That's them right there in the red. But uh, a good challenge will come from St. David, obviously. And uh, St. Andrew is out in lane seven. Somebody might say lane seven in this one is not really a threat. Bernard, what are your thoughts on it? With relays is a lot different. It really is. Uh, so lane seven and a relay. They're really no disadvantage. Certainly not in recent times. 
onto your mark. Just a little bit of jittering there. And so the starter decides to do a restart. The set position is supposed to be a very still position. Any sign of jitter could result in a false start. And generally the starters don't like crediting people with false starts. So they would use every opportunity to get the athletes up and uh, settle them back into the blocks. No blocks here. Many of these young folks are running E without any footwear. It's amazing with what a footwear and a good form on this surface can do. Because I've seen some good form from these youths. Imagine if they're well decked off and uh, know how to run in this in, in spikes. Only if. Well, there's uh, much talk going around by all the folks who came into our commentary booth about uh, spike drive and whatnot. So let's see where that's going to go. Wish for it to happen. This is it's too long. Anxious moments for everyone. Even some of the spectators are now standing. It's too much for them to sit. We know that St. Andrew is already gone. They've got points on reserve for 2025 already. So they way ahead. In excess of 300 points ahead. No miracle could catch them now. God does any and everything he's capable but he's not going to go against his word yeah, I think there it's a foregone conclusion Jason that they are the victors but the you have to take your hats off you really do reap what you sow This is a well, well oiled machinery, St. Andrew. I quite agree. For the third time. Didn't keep them long at all. Didn't keep them long at all. Still pretty much even. Can't call it here. Still pretty much even. St. George is lacking. They're lagging behind. They're going to be caught. Yes, they've been caught by St. John. Still too early to call. Still too early. St. John picking up some good stagger on St. George. St. George pulling it back nicely. There's a lane infringement right there. It just happened. Whether or not that's going to be penalized, we're going to tell. St. George is making a run for it. St. John is outside there. But look at St. Patrick running out of lane six. The athletes from St. Patrick's running out of lane six. St. Patrick is gone all the way up to the top, the Northern Parish. St. George is coming back. But the distance between St. George and St. John, well... That's the distance between St. George's and St. and Sotez. The distance between the two of them is the distance between the city and Sotez. There's no catching her. She's gone. So the girls, 4 by 100 meter, under 11, is uh, that title is resting in Crown City, St. Patrick. You just have to wonder... I am really, really excited to see these athletes in the future. I, these are your under 11 athletes, and the level of execution from them is just spot on. I, I couldn't agree with you more. Let's look at this here now. The final handover. It wasn't the final handover, it was the first. This was the infringement. Was this the infringement? Yes, it was. 
This is the coming down the home stretch. She started to stretch her lead. And she placed everyone on notice from the minute time she collected the baton. Everyone was placed on alert. She's gone. So St. Patrick winning in 59.53 in the 4 by one Event number 70. St. Andrew coming in second in 60.12. And St. George in third in 60.80. That's gold, silver, and bronze in the girls under 11 4 by one yeah, really good run there by Team St. Patrick. St. Andrew had a really good start, but St. Patrick, their, their battle passing efficiency, I think is what got them through this one. Um, from the time... Now, if you go back here, just come back a little bit, you'd realize on the first handover in lane, between lane four and five, that was some confusion there because St. George made an infringement and uh, hindered St. John. So just maybe... Here we go again. Just maybe they would be disqualified for this one. It is uh, something that they can be penalized for, especially if she would have hindered the flow of the athletes, the other athletes. So they may very well just lose the bronze medal and the Karaku came in fourth. St. John. St. John. Uh, would be credited with the bronze on this one. We'll wait to see what the officials have in store. In the meantime, we've got more relays on the track, so we've got to go down to the house announcer to bring us the details. We've got more ladies on the track. Surely this has to be the under 13. Or is it the open? Four by four. Yes, it's an open. So it's the girls. Girls four by four. The girls four by four. doesn't realize that lane four is his problem. The confusion he's trying to sort out is in lane four. Thank you. And now he would move the marker to lane four. And then all will be well. So Adrian Francis, he's been around this for a very long time, so in front of us there. Maybe if the drone would come a little closer, you'll get a view of us through these windows. That's us right there. It's powered by GUT and Nexa.
I wish someone would try to explain to us what they're trying to achieve here. So we're getting ready for the it's not rocket science, but starting to feel like it. Lane assignments are as follows. In lane one, St. Patrick. Lane two, St. John. Lane three, St. Andrew. Lane four, Caracol and P.T. Martinique. Lane five, St. David. In lane six, St. Mark. And lane seven, St. George. set for the start of this event if you look down the back street you'll see two orange cones the athletes will stay in their lanes all the way to those two orange cones at the back upon crossing they'll be able to move into lane number one to continue the 400 meter run Mic check for number four, sound room. Mic check, mic check. On your mark. So it's a clean start for event 72. The girls, four by 400 meter relay open. So once more, they stay within their lanes all the way to the 300 meter mark. Then we'll see them start moving into lane number one. It's St. Mark moving up well down the back straight. St. George following. St. Mark still leading the field. This is the first. 400 meter run, we're inside 200 meters and it's still anyone's game. Less than 150 meters to go. St. Mark with a dominant lead. St. David is coming. St. Andrew is on their heels. St. George in the mix, but it's still out front. St. Mark, 100 meters to go, Nivion. Let's see where we're heading with this one now. Of the four by 400 meters in the open girl. He should have gone into the, to the first lane to lane. Caracol and PT Martinek, St. George and St. John. That is the order. And they get ready for the first handover. St. Mark still is holding on to that lead there. But St. David also in the mix. St. Andrew is also there. Let's see what's going to happen. St. Mark gets that batter. St. David gets that batter. St. Andrew now has it. Here comes St. George. Caracol and PT Martinek and St. John. As they get ready to head down the back straight, we can see a shift in positions right now with St. David, St. David, St. Mark, St. Andrew on the inside, Gary Kupini, Martin, St. George, all of the athletes there, all of the branches adequately represented as they head down the back straight. It's still St. David, St. Mark, So St. David's putting up a here good show here in this one. And the girls, Gary four by four, open. St. David has already crossed into tomorrow in terms of her lead. She could be pulled back because St. Andrew is right on her heel. St. David is out front. St. David is out in front. Why is she gone all the way over there? Not sure should be staying close to the inner lane as possible. It's just about a 10 meters lead. It's just about that. It's trying to extend on that lead. It's still pretty tight. 
St. Davis has maintained its lead. For how long, I wouldn't say. Because St. Andrew is making a run for it. Yeah, she's going to catch her now on the bend with just about 120 meters to go. St. Andrew is looking to pick up gold in this one. This is the final handover. That's, that's a sizable lead. St. Andrew need these 18 points, not really. This is just going to be a walk in the park for them. Whether they get these 18 points or not, it's not going to interfere with their position at the top of the food chain. They're at the top of the food chain, St. Andrew. But a good run by these St. Andrew athletes. They've shown good strength, good stamina, good form more than anything else. She's got something left in the tank now. She's slipped into overdrive just like that. Maybe they're chasing the record here. Just maybe they've got the records in their sight. Just maybe the record is in sight. Let's wait and see. Do we know what the record for this one is? Clyde Rondell John. Just maybe is going for it. And uh, St. Andrew will pick up gold. Bernard, they've shown good form and a good temperament all the way through in this 4x4. And, and that young lady... That young lady is, she will be, her name will become a household name. Mark my word there. What's her name? Uh, T. Terrell. T. Rose? I think it's Terrell. It's an interesting spelling, I know. It's a very interesting spelling. I'll get it for you. I'll get it for you here shortly. So the record for the 4x4 open really girls is 4 minutes 34.69 seconds and that was set in 2018 by St. John. 4 minutes. Well, let me correct myself. Sorry Jason. St. George last 2023 broke that record. So it now stands at 4 minutes 33.49 seconds. Uh, 4.33.49 I don't think that that's under threat. Guess what? It's 425.87. That means the record has been smashed by... S the record has been smashed. They've credited St. Patrick with the win, but that's not correct on the scoreboard. Surely they're going to change that. Surely they're going to change that. Let's wait until it's all sorted out before we give you any more times because... Don't want to be confusing our viewers now. It was a really good run, Bernard. She showed good form, good good uh, temperament. Yes, she had a good run. Interesting spelling of her name. It's a T dash Teresa. It's Teresa Fraser. Teresa Fraser. That young lady. Teresa Fraser. Teresa. Yes, T dash Risa. Yeah. It's pronounced T Risa. The, the T H. We are going to remember this. It's pronounced Theresa, but this is T Risa. T Risa Fraser. Fra Fraser. So, a good run. We're still waiting for them to sort out the official scoreboard while that is happening. We're going to go down and deal with the lane assignments for the boys. Four by four. So now they have uh, sorted it out and St. Andrew, four minutes, 25.87 seconds. 
4 minutes 25.87 seconds. So if what Rondell is saying holds true to form, that means St. Andrew has just broken the record. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and they've smashed it. They have smashed that record. 433.49 and they ran 425.87. I mean... They've smashed it. They've taken off in excess of 8 seconds of, of the record. That's not breaking the record. That's breaking the record and the turntable you got that impression they were so far ahead and yet still they were pushing obviously they were going after the record oh, wanting to see who's going to break this i get the feeling this one's going to stand for a long time 425 and some um peeling off eight seconds it's not even shaving it off peeling off eight seconds of the record uh, just before we you take the lane assignments, of course, we've got to be mindful that, very mindful that we've got some of the best in the field working and bringing you the quality and the class that you're getting at TNR Communications. Let's take the lane assignments. Lane one, St. Mark. Lane two, St. Andrew. Lane three. St. David. Lane 4, Karaku and Peter Martini. Lane 5, St. John. Lane 6, St. Mark. Lane 7, St. Patrick. So St. Patrick is out in lane 7. And the boys, 4 by 4, open. The team to watch in this one from everything that we have seen in the 400 and the 200 very well be St. Andrew again but uh, this TNR comms team is led by Captain Richie Oliver and based on the shots that you've been seeing and the direction leading what you've been hearing from behind the scenes our directors are Corey Williams and Blondell George. To our viewers, those of you enjoying the stream online and the crisp, clear audio that you hear, all credit goes to Nazim Benjamin. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're asking for silence. Roger Joseph, the fancy graphics, and to let you know that especially when you see that fancy Nexa logo comes up and the replay comes up. That's Roger Joseph. And uh, the replay man, the man behind the replay is Karim McDonald. Cullen Dragon, Reggie Joseph, John Henry, and Kirk Oliver. Those are the guys with their hands on the button and the lens. Cameramen, we've got some potent cameraman the shot you see now is compliments Kirk Oliver that's one of our cameramen now we get started with this one the boys four by 400 meter relay open uh, that's uh, that's Reggie Joseph's shot right there Reggie Joseph a cameraman that's a great shot from him and that's Curlin Dragon up there now Curlin and Reggie doing twisting between the both of them in the meantime here's what we've got for you we've got st patrick out in front st patrick out in front and the st john is right there in lane five making a spirited run the athlete from st george is, is out in the distance keep your eyes on the inside on lane two that's st andrew it's still early days in this one but it could very well be setting the tone st andrew has started to lunge forward in this one there's a battle here between St. Andrew and St. Patrick. Here comes the first handover. Surely St. Patrick makes the first handover. St. Andrew has gotten it first and this time he went back to assist his partner. So he stayed within the handover zone but went as far back as possible. Realized his compatriot was fading. And as such that has brought St. Andrew way out in front now. St. Andrew is out in front. Now they're closing in on the inner lane and he is starting to accelerate. Look at this. 
clearly he's got something in his tank he's operating on nitrous he's pressed a button this surely could be fast and furious 11. does he have some more to kick because saint patrick is coming does he have some more saint patrick is coming he is maintaining his lead he's not going to relinquish that lead not by a long shot he's extending it even more yes he had a little bit more hand over number two this run is a little bit more measured from saint andrew a clear 60 meter lead or thereabout strong stride comfortable stride a glide more than anything else Clyde yeah a glide a glide <laughs> all right but he's on for the ride really smooth nice and smooth rhythmic uh, looking to pick up the speed I think Jason that was the key here he measured his run really well he's kicked now with just about a hundred meters to go he's coming around the final bend looking to make a kick now let's see is he going to go into another gear yes he's come out of the compression he's gone into a higher gear now this is the final handover what are we going to see on the last leg are we looking at another possible record breaking performance from st andrew he's gone out like a rocket he's gone out like a rocket he's into next week already everyone else is somewhere in february This is a strong run. He comes across the Nexa branding. Surely they're fighting for second place. St. Andrew, he's starting to fade, but he's got such a huge lead. He's got such a huge lead. I don't think anything other than a fall now will help anybody else. And he's a strong young man. He doesn't look like fall at all. Does he have anything more in the tank? Is the record under threat? Is he looking for the record? He's got a whole lot of space between one and two. A whole lot of space between one and two. And St. Andrew will win the boys 4x4 four four open. What's left to see now is the record. There is at least a six or seven second differential between one and two is that going to be the record what are your thoughts bernard good run good spirited run the third handover was really something to behold st andrew third handover was really really something to behold and again you you have to put your hats off to coaching these are young men it's not easy to put together a team like this and St. Andrew would have done extremely well at this, at this, at this sport meet. And so the coaches, uh, hats off to you, every single one of you. And they, they, all the schools in the different, in the different, the different schools in this branch, St. Andrew branch, your hats off. Well, the record is safe. The record in this one was four minutes, one second, point nine three, four point one. 0.93 and he need they needed to do a whole lot better than that they've gotten to four minutes 8.90 seconds for the gold medal but it was a walk in the park after the first leg after the first handover everything else was elementary for st andrew yeah definitely uh, a really good run there by team st andrew uh establishing a, a, a lead from the onset and they just maintained and not just maintain but look to to widen the gap as much as, as some maybe 80 odd meters they were ahead at some point in this race and uh, you 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 one thought that they were looking at the record but unfortunately they didn't get anywhere close to it all so right, the record well, is intact. Very good. Sherry Ann Noel, she's down on the field, and she's got Team St. Andrew, the 4x4. Four four. Yes.
yes, Jason, we have Team St. And I have Team St. Andrew with me. Prior to the race, they termed themselves the Bad Squad. We do know that Bad Squad name resonates with St. Patrick, but they said that they are the Bad Squad. Um, tell us about the strategy going in for that 4x4 and that massive win. Yes, good. By pushing hard and thing. By pushing hard to be the batter only. Which would you say was the most challenging leg for you all? You had first, second, third, and the, and the last leg. Which, which one? Last. Why you say the last leg? Well, all in all, come good. All in all, St. Andrews has won the sport again. This is the 28th time. How do you all feel to be part of the winning St. Andrew team? Good. Good and happy. What do you say to all the rest of athletes, your fans, your teachers, your coaches? Thanks for training us to help us run. And you? To uh, help us to um, run hard and team. All right, these were the members of the winning St. Andrew 4x4 team. We say congratulations to you on your win and also congratulations to your parish on winning the sport for the 28th time. Back to you, Jason. Well, that's the St. Andrew Quartet, that winning quartet. And St. Andrew has already taken to these tracks. They will celebrate in good reason as well. And uh, a good drone shot will tell us, the, uh, tell us a story. But already folks are starting to celebrate with them. We've got a medal presentation coming up. Uh, Rinell Park is on our drone. And you see these lovely overhead shots. Rinell Park is operating a drone. It's uh, just a, a good team coming together. And... Uh, that's the beauty about teamwork. When everybody plays their role, then that's when you start to see the value and the benefit of the TEAM. We've got a medal presentation. So we will go down to the podium for the medal presentation. And then when we come back, it will be basically to put a wrap on primary school games 2024, powered by GUT and Nexa. So we get set for medal presentation. Please welcome Mr. Kevin Andal, Member Experience Manager at Nexa Credit Union. Medal presentation for event number 41. The girls discuss through under 15. Your bronze medalist, a distance of 15.55 meters from St. David, Stevana Swan. Your silver medalist, a distance of 15.79 meters from St. Mark, Nadira. Felbert and your gold medalist a distance of 16.81 meters from St. Andrew Destiny Harry These are your medalists for event 41. The girls discuss through under 15. Medal presentation for event 44. The boys 80 meter dash under nine. 
your bronze medalist. A time of 12.37 seconds. Representing St. Andrew, Donrick Edwards. Your silver medalist. A time of 12.31 seconds. Representing St. Patrick, Jelani Patterson. And your gold medalist. A time of 12.16 seconds. Representing St. Andrew, Kyle John. Your medalist for the boys, 80 meter dash, under nine. Medal presentation for event number 53. The boys, 200 meter dash, under 11. Your bronze medalist. A time of 29.97 seconds. Representing St. David, Keaton Lallian. Your silver medalist. A time of 29.14 seconds. Representing St. David, Ronan Lessie. And your gold medalist, in a time of 29.09 seconds, representing St. Patrick, Akedon McIntosh. <laughs> Event number 54, the girls 200 meter dash under 15. Your bronze medalist, a time of 29.55 seconds, Representing St. Andrew, Michaela Williams. A slight correction. There is a tie for silver medal. So Michaela Williams receives the silver medal in a time of 29.55 seconds. And she is joined by Shadel Jones of St. George, 29.55 seconds. And ladies and gentlemen, your gold medalist in a time of 29.38 seconds, representing St. Andrew, Destiny Harry. We say thank you to Mr. Kevin Andal, Member Experience Manager at Nexa Credit Union for assisting with these medals. We now invite Mr. Brent Thomas, Finance Manager at Nexa Credit Union to assist us with the next few medals. Event number 55, the boys 200 meter dash under 15. Your bronze medalist in a time of 27.70 seconds from St. Patrick, Davis Jeremiah. Your silver medalist in a time of 27.48 seconds from St. Andrew, Rondell Williams. And your gold medalist in a time of 27.18 seconds from St. Andrew, Nathaniel Richardson. Medal presentation for event 57, the girls 400 meter run under 13. Your bronze medalist in a time of one minute, 5.71 seconds. From St. Andrew, Kalina Modest. Your silver medalist in a time of one minute, 5.36 seconds. From St. George, Micaiah George. And your gold medalist in a time of one minute, 5.14 seconds. From St. Andrew, Teresa Fraser. These are your medalists for the girls. 400 meter run under 13. Event 58. 
the boys 400 meter run under 13 your bronze medalist in a time of one minute 5.62 seconds from St. David Aaron Roberts your silver medalist in a time of one minute 4.08 seconds from St. Patrick Jewani Noel and your gold medalist in a time of one minute 3.35 seconds from St. Patrick Dishon Oliver these are your medalists for event 58 the boys 400 meter run under 13 event 61 the boys discus throw under 15. Your bronze medalist, a distance of 18.36 meters from St. John, Raimi Joseph. Your silver medalist, a distance of 18.28 meters from St. George, Timon Thomas. And your gold medalist, a time, a distance, sorry, of 21.09 meters from St. Andrew, Keon Charles. These are your medalists for event 61. The boys discuss through under 15. Event 66, the girls shot put under 13. Your bronze medalist, a distance of 6.94 meters from St. Patrick, Tasia Thomas. Your silver medalist, 7.40 meters from St. David, Michaela Joseph and your gold medalist 7.44 meters from St. Patrick Sabrina McFarlane Event 59 the boys long jump under 9 your bronze medalist 3.24 meters from St. John, Nikon, Belfon. Your silver medalist, 3.42 meters from St. George, Shaquan Stevens. And your gold medalist, 3.57 meters. From St. Andrew, Donrick Edwards. <laughs> Event 64, the girls high jump under 15. Your bronze medalist, a distance, a height of 1.2 meters from St. Patrick, Kendra Flanders. Your silver medalist, a height of 1.25 meters from St. Patrick, Xenia Alexis. And your gold medalist, 1.25 meters from St. David, Hannah Bartholomew. Event 65, the boys long jump under 13. Your bronze medalist, 4.49 meters 
from St. David, Amos Charles. Your silver medalist, 4.87 meters, from St. Patrick, Deshaun Oliver. And your gold medalist, 5.02 meters, from St. Patrick, Zaim Hostin. Ladies and gentlemen, we're asking the following athletes to report to the medal presentation area in preparation for Divisional Championship Awards. Kalanda Charles, Janaya Mark, Mikael Says, Zarina Noel, Kyle John, Viva Pantru, Rohan Lessi, Haley Terrell, Deshaun Oliver, Destiny Harry, Rondell Williams, Tiffany Abraham, and Sean Wellington. Please report to the medal presentation area in preparation for Divi Divisional Champs Award. We say a special thank you to Mr. Brent Thomas, Finance Manager at Nexa Credit Union, for his assistance with these awards. We now move to medal presentation for the relays. To assist us with these awards, please welcome Mr. Kevin Andal, Member Experience Manager at Nexa Credit Union. Event 68, the girls four by 100 meter relay under 15. Your bronze medalist in a time of 58.57 seconds, Team St. David. Your silver medalist in a time of 58.26 seconds, Team St. George. And your gold medalist in a time of 55.78 seconds, Team St. Andrew. Medal presentation for event 69, the boys. Four by 100 meter relay under 15. Your bronze medalist, 55.76 seconds, Team St. Patrick. Your silver medalist, 54.77 seconds, Team St. George. And your gold medalist, a time of 53.12 seconds, Team St. Andrew. Event number 70, the girls four by 100 meter relay under 11. Your bronze medalist, in a time of 60.80 seconds, Team St. George. Your silver medalist, in a time of 60.12 seconds, Team St. Andrew. And your gold medalist, in a time of 59.53 seconds, Team St. Patrick.
Event 71, the boys four by 100 meter relay under 11. Your bronze medalist in a time of 58.53 seconds, Team St. George. Your silver medalist in a time of 58.19 seconds, Team St. Andrew. And your gold medalist in a time of 57. Point one five seconds, Team St. Patrick. We say a special thank you to Mr. Andal for assisting us with the distribution of these medals. Our final two medal presentations and assisting us with these medals, please welcome Miss Melissa St. Rose, our General Secretary of the Grenada Union of Teachers. Medal presentation for Event 72 the girls four by 400 meter relay open. Bronze medalist in a time of four minutes, 41.40 seconds, Team St. George. Silver medalist in a time of four minutes, 37.38 seconds, Team St. David. And your gold medalist in a time of four minutes, 25.87 seconds, Team St. Andrew. And our final medal presentation, the four by 400 meter relay open boys. Your bronze medalist, in a time of four minutes, 26.48 seconds, Team St. David. Your silver medalist, in a time of four minutes, 18.28 seconds, Team St. Patrick. And your gold medalist, in a time of four minutes, 8.90 seconds, Team St. Andrew. We say a special thank you to Miss Melissa St. Rose. We prepare for the distribution of our divisional champions. But just before, we'd like to ask Miss St. Rose to assist us one more time with the distribution of medals for event number 67, the boys javelin throw under 15. Your bronze medalist, a distance of 27.75 meters from Kariku and Piti Martinique, Kamal Dick. Your silver medalist, 32.54 meters from St. Patrick, Jacob Alexander. And your gold medalist, 36.68 meters 
from St. Andrew, Keon Charles. Medal presentation for event 40, the boys shot put on the 13. Your bronze medalist, a distance of seven meters from St. George, Akel Briggs. Your silver medalist, a distance of 7.95 meters from St. George, Ghana Phillip. And your gold medalist, a distance of 8.32 meters from St. Patrick, Deshaun Oliver. We say a very special thank you to Miss Melissa St. Rose for her assistance with these awards. Ladies and gentlemen, we get set for the distribution of our divisional champions. To assist us with the presentation of divisional champions for the under seven category, please welcome Mr. Tommy Duncan. He is the second vice president of the Grenada Union of Teachers. Your under seven divisional champion, amassing a total of 12 points in the female category from St. Patrick, Miss Janaya One moment, there seems to be a, a correction. There seems to be a correction. While this is done, we'll move to the male category. We want to say special thanks to the Nexa Credit Union for sponsoring these games. Let's give a round of applause to Nexa Credit Union for their continued support of these primary school games, Nexa Credit Union and the Grenada Union of Teachers. We also want to say special thanks to the athletes from Karaku and PT Martinique for coming down to mainland. St. Mark's Branch, anybody from St. Mark's in the house? St. John's was well represented in these games as well. St. Patrick's, make some noise. St. David's, make some noise. St. David Branch, St. David's Branch. Who am I missing? St. George's Branch, make some noise. I'm missing St. Andrew's branch. Make some noise. So ladies and gentlemen, we resume presentation for the under seven divisional champ, amassing a total of 12 points. And there is a tie for divisional champion in the under seven category from St. Patrick, 
Janaya Mark, 12 points. And she is joined by Kalanda Charles from St. Andrew. Ladies and gentlemen, the male divisional champ under seven, scoring 19.5 points from St. Andrew's branch, Mikael says. We say a special thank you to Mr. Tommy Duncan, second vice president of the Grenada Union of Teachers for his assistance. And we now welcome Ms. Jacqueline Smith, chairwoman of the GUT Sports Committee. She will assist us in the distribution of the under nine divisional trophies. Your divisional champion in the under nine category, female, amassing a total of 18 points from St. Andrew, Zarina Noel. Ladies and gentlemen, divisional champ under nine category, male, scoring 22 points from St. Andrew's branch, Kyle John. We say a special thank you to Ms. Jacqueline Smith chairwoman of the GUT Sports Committee for assistance with these awards. And we now invite permanent secretary in the Ministry of Youth and Sports, Ms. Desiree Stephen. She will assist us with the distribution of the divisional championships for the under 11 category. And your female under 11 divisional champion, amassing a total of 22 points from St. Andrew, Viva Panchu. Ladies and gentlemen, your male under 11 divisional champ scoring 24 points, Rohan Lessie from the St. David's branch. We say a special thank you to PS Desiree Stephen for assisting us with these awards, and we now invite Honorable Gaten Lecret, Minister with Responsibility for Sport in the Ministry of Youth and Sport. He will assist with the distribution of the under 13 divisional champions trophies. And your divisional champion. Amassing a total of 22 points in the female category from St. Andrew, Haley Terrell. Ladies and gentlemen, your divisional champ male 
in the under 11 category, in the under 13 category, scoring 73 points from St. Patrick's, Deshaun Oliver. Thank you very much, Honorable Minister Lecret, for assisting us with these awards. And we now invite Mr. Randy Frank. He is the Deputy General Manager at Nexa Credit Union. Mr. Frank will assist us with the distribution of the Divisional Championship trophies for the under 15 category. Your under 15 Divisional Champion female Scoring a total of 63 points from St. Andrew, Destiny Harry. Ladies and gentlemen, your male under 13 divisional champ under 15, sorry, divisional champ, scoring 29 points from the St. Andrews branch. Make some noise for Rondell Williams. We say a special thank you to Mr. Randy Frank, the Deputy General Manager at Nexo Credit Union for his assistance with these awards. We now invite Mr. Frankson Marshall, first Vice President of the Grenada Union of Teachers to assist us with the distribution of the Victor and Victrix Lodurum. The Victor Lodorum goes to the male who amassed the most points over the days of competition, and the Victrix Lodorum goes to his female counterpart. Ladies and gentlemen, your Victor Lodorum amassing a total of 73 points from St. Patrick, Deshaun Oliver. And your female scoring 63 points from St. Andrews, Destiny Harry. We say a special thank you to Mr. Marshall. First Vice President of the Grenada Union of Teachers for his assistance with these awards. And we now welcome Mr. Lewis Williams, President of the Nexa Credit Union Board of Directors. Mr. Williams will deliver the third place champion trophy to the branch Amassing a total of 413 points. Put your hands together for St. George. So your third place champions, 413 points. St. George. Thank you very much, Mr. Williams, for assisting us with our third place trophy. Assisting us with the distribution of the second place championship trophy.
please welcome Mr. Jude Bartholomew, President General of the Grenada Union of Teachers. And our second place trophy, amassing a total of 495 points, St. Patrick. We say a th special thank you to Mr. Jude Bartholomew, President General of the Grenada Union of Teachers. And we now invite Mrs. Reticha Smith Boyd, General Manager of Nexa Credit Union, to confer. The first place trophy upon the 2024 champions. Ladies and gentlemen, amassing a total of 759.5 points, St. Andrew. We would like to invite Minister for Youth and Sports to join in the manager to present the winning trophy and to take a photograph with the winners, St. Andrew's Branch, make some noise. And of course, the entire branch, you're welcome to take this picture. Your winning trophy goes to St. Andrew's branch. And we want to say special thanks to the minister, Minister for Youth and Sports, Senator the Honorable Jonathan Lacret, and the Nexa Credit Union team for sponsoring these GUT Nexa games. Congratulations to St. Andrew's. Ladies and gentlemen, the winners of the 2024 GUT Nexa Primary School Games, St. Andrew's Branch. All right, well, uh, we have uh, well, we have come to the climax of this 2024 branch, this uh, 2024 athletic games, and um, St. Andrew with 759 and a half points, and uh, Sherry is down there with the coach of uh, St. Andrew. That was huge, a massive um, margin, Sherry. In uh, second position was St. Patrick with 495 points and St. George coming in third on 413 points. All in all, it was uh, two good days for these young superstars. Clyde? Yeah, really good two days um, of keen competition. St. Andrew, uh, dominant. Really, they are a force to reckon with. Um, but what we have seen more importantly is the the unearthing of a lot of youngsters who have the potential to go on to become really prominent athletes for Grenada. And, you know, um, it, it stands to see that Nexa, the new sponsors, the new format, everything went really well. And so kudos to, to the organizing committee, kudos to everyone involved. I think this was a really successful venture. They've made it 28 years on the trot. And not consecutively, but 28 years of winning this title. Surely that's dominance. The, the next school or the next parish uh, with uh, the second highest wins was 17, I think it was, from St. George. But uh, St. Andrew has uh, showed off their 
superiority with 28 wins in this championship. That's a good way to bring it down as we say thank you to our entire broadcast team. We listed the folks behind the cameras, the folks behind the scenes, all the images and the good work that you've been seeing and our fellow commentators, Sherry and Noel, who has been on the ground for most of the day today. And um, she's been there yesterday as well. She does have the coach of uh, St. Andrew with her. We are going to take that right now. And then when we come back, just to wrap it in like uh, 15 seconds and say kudos to everyone until next year. Sherry Ann, talk to us quickly. First of all, I've had a big congratulations to St. Par to St. Andrew for winning the national games. Um, you had a massive total of seven over 700 points. Your athletes were able to capture divisional champs in each of the categories. Um, how does that make you feel as the coach and, and the, the, the entire camp on this year 28th win at the National Primary School Games? Well, it is a proud moment for us as a branch. I um, want to say congratulations to all the students who have worked hard. I also want to take this opportunity to thank every school in our branch. The, the reason for the success over the last two days is because of a collective effort from our secondary school and our primary school. So I just want to say thank you to all the teachers, the principals, and the coaching staff of St. Andrews branch. Interesting that you mentioned secondary school. Is it that the secondary school athletes helped with the training of the primary school athletes? No. Um, in preparation of our athletes who are coming down to these games, some of it, we, we asked for the assistance of some of the coaches from our secondary schools. So we got coaching assistance from our secondary schools. Also, the secondary schools assist us in providing some of the implements and in um, providing things like coolers and other resources. So it was a collective effort. I mentioned earlier that you were able to capture in all the various categories for the individual champs. Um, off your head, um, how many of these athletes will move on? And is, is it that you all have the crop of athletes to, to fill the various categories come next year, knowing that you have a number of primary schools with, within the parish? Well, we know that the under 13s and the under 15s will be going to secondary school, hopefully. However, the others, they belong to the school. And um, I must say that the coaches in the different schools, they are, they, this is a testimony of their hard work because as a branch, we only had about a week to work with them to get them to work, to gel. But over the years, it is the second, is the, sorry, it is the primary school coaches that are working with them to bring them to participate in the brand sports. Thank you very much. Once again, congratulations to the St. Andrew Parish on winning the next so GUT National Primary School Games 2024. Jason, that's it from our end. We now hand back over to our commentary team. All right. Well, thank you very much, Sherry Ann. And Sherry Ann, thank you for your efforts down there for the day. The sun has been pretty hot when it was hot today. And it has cooled down a lot. Obviously, we're nearing just five minutes after seven o'clock. And of course, a special thanks to Bernard and Twine. He was here for most of the day. He had to run off. But Clyde Rondell, John, you pulled a marathon. And um, thank you so much. And thanks, of course, to our entire uh, commentary team. You've got uh, a few seconds to put a wrap, Clyde. Well, I must say thank you also, Jason, for the opportunity. Um, uh, Debu at the, the primary school games and um, I think the feedback given has been pretty good and so I just want to say thank you to everyone um, to the production team you know um, for trusting you know us to really deliver a product for them and I, I believe that it was a good product and you know um, we can only strengthen from here um, here is the platform for all of us not just the, the athletes down there but TNR communications in terms of lifting the bar um, when it comes to, to, to telecommunication, when it comes to broadcast and, and this type of thing. So um, kudos, well done. I mean, it has been good. All right, let's run through the top three positions quickly. 413 points, St. George. 495 points, St. Patrick. And your winner out in front by some distance, huge into a next uh, millennium. 759 and a half points, St. Andrew showing sheer dominance 
in this year's games once again. Thanks a lot, everybody, for joining us on behalf of the entire production team that we've listed at TNR Communications from the top to the bottom for the folks who've worked diligently behind the scenes to the Grenada Union of Teachers with a mission to unite, represent, and empower members of the teaching profession of the nation and uh, next to Credit Union with you wherever your road leads. My name is Jason Skeet, and uh, the next time we meet via this medium, will be on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday of next week when we meet for Intercall 2024. I'll see you then. Kick things up a gear with a Nexa Credit Union Cruise Control Vehicle Loan and begin your journey with your ideal ride. Go wherever and whenever you like with the extra space to carry everything you need. Arrive refreshed and ready for the day in comfort. Hit the road together on family adventures to make unforgettable memories. Feel the wind at your back. Upgrade your lifestyle easily with a Cruise Control Vehicle Loan for new or used vehicles. Join Nexa Credit Union now and get your vehicle loan. Terms and conditions apply. Visit us today. Call 440-1354 or our website at www.nexacreditunion.com or email us at loans at nexacreditunion.com and hit the road with Nexa Credit Union. Nexa Credit Union. With you wherever your road leads.